All right, Painkiller Already, episode 305. We're live with Drifter, one of the smart hey. guys on YouTube. Been We've a got long a few spots. time since I've been on Painkiller Already. Good to be back. Glad you Good invited me. Back. Anytime. Kyle? We got a few sponsors tonight, Squarespace, Me Undies, and Jack Threads. Uh, I don't know if we've talked about Jack Threads uh, yet on the show. They're very cool. Um, you can check the links to, to all those out in the description down below. We're going to talk more about them later on in the show, but yeah, let's get right into it. And real quick, a double check. We are recording. Yes. yes, we are. Yes, we are. All right. You know, I don't mind you we asking. Yeah, I don't so, mind that one bit. Drifter, yeah, I'm not supposed to be recording up, uh, anything, am I? No. no. Hey, no that was told just to anything. join. Like, if I need to, to get recording, I get OBS and all this no, stuff going on. No, to kind of catch you up on why I had to ask that, Drifter, last week we did our, I guess, semi-annually, semi-annual drinking episode or whatever every other year is, <laughs> and... We got pretty drunk in the first hour and a half on Kyle's best homemade apple pie moonshine that he sent to us all legally. And then like an hour and a half into the show, Woody types in the chat, oh, I've got a horrible problem. I forgot to record. And so we had just been drunk talking to each other for almost for an hour and a half. To no one. And that's almost embarrassing when you sit back and think about it. Like all these stupid stories and jokes I was telling to, to no one, for no there one is, to hear. There is a legit <laughs> honest disagreement, but not anger, but like, like about whether those 90 minutes were good. I, oh, in good. my heart of hearts, feel like they sucked. I'll, I'll... Oh, you were drunk? You don't know. <laughs> you were fucking drunk. <laughs> You're on to something. You're not wrong on that. But but here's the thing. And it it started off with like unwrapping the, the Kyle's best. You saw me take a knife out and remove the label. We talked about the breathalyzers. We use these breathalyzers to, ma to measure how drunk we were all show, which didn't work and uh there's one yeah i've got mine around here too what's your what's your percent alcohol or is it just like i don't know just a lot i'm gonna circle back to that uh it, it, <laughs> okay. so you called us like unwrapping things and then we took our first couple drinks so for 90 of those minutes like 40 of them weren't even drunk you know because we were just I, starting I, uh, disagree. I felt like i was getting intox and and then we had this whole discussion like do you absorb alcohol sublingually as you're drinking, as you're imbibing the, the beverage? You know, or am, am I getting a little in my bloodstream just from putting it in my mouth and swallowing it? Or does it have to go into my stomach and be metabolized, metabolized and then slowly sponge into my system? Is that how it works? I don't know. But as soon as I took, took a sip, I was like, I feel a slight buzz. I'm instantly a little intoxicated. I definitely am. And so I felt like we were... We were definitely getting into being drunk, but I don't know. I like those 90 minutes. We covered some good topics. I, I, uh, I thought the highlight was actually my story of how I'm retarded, and <laughs> I think I've told it I before, guess. and I'll definitely oh, tell that. it again. <laughs> I was crying so hard when you explained to the audience that in elementary school, your teacher thought you were mentally retarded <laughs> and wanted to put you in, into like a short bus class for real. Oh, no. And it cracked me up so much. Uh, you know, <laughs> and I already drank like half this thing. I was crying. Like my whole face turned red. I, w I had my shirt pulled up like yeah. wiping. i glad you didn't. Uh, funny story. In my elementary, uh, my elementary school, they did think that I was mentally delayed mm -hmm. and they did move me into the short bus special classes for a couple of months it was it was interesting there was there was lots of characters there that really needed to be there for a variety of reasons it was a little but bit I sad bet you were you the had, sharpest knife in that drawer um, by a lot right yeah you but the great. least least cooperative i was a really bad kid i thought reading was lame and i refused to learn to read and they just put me in the special class but you had kids there that were uh, mentally handicapped you had some with language difficulties because their parents were immigrants and then you had some with like really bad behavioral problems like violent outbursts kind of problems and for some reason it's just like all the problem kids go in this one class mm -hmm. it's this funny. kid didn't he learn has much. problems with prepositions Get in there with and then edgar over there he starts small fires keep an eye on him <laughs> oh, <and> like, yeah. <laughs> just throw all of them in I one feel class like i'm right there with you drifter so i wasn't dumb according to me right but i was a bad kid and i thought bad handwriting was cool like the, there was another kid in my class. I remember his name was Billy, and I admired how tiny his handwriting was. So my handwriting regressed. Like I had, I was just there with all the other kids, and then I saw his ridiculously small handwriting. And was like, I want to be like that. And they're all telling me no, but I thought that I was more clever <laughs> than everybody else, and and it just shrunk and shrunk until I I had this awful tiny little handwriting, and uh, yeah, the, the story it, it got maybe I told it too long, but. You have report cards, right? So four times a year you get a report card. And then in between report cards, we would get what was called deficiency reports. And they were kind of just a letter to your parents to let you know if your kid was headed towards a bad report card, right? So most people didn't get 
eight times a year, you know, but I, I did. I was talking to my mom in, like, in high school or something, and she's like, we've never gone even an eighth of a school year without bad news from you. And I countered and said, what about second grade? Mrs. Fields loved me. And she said, Mrs. Fields thought you were retarded. <laughs> and and no. my mom had to fight putting me into the, the short bus class. Yeah, yeah. That now, was let me the story. imagine your mom being like Forrest Gump's mom, like making sure that my baby gets in the in the right class. You know, <laughs> this yeah. is like Xbox. No, she Suddenly, my mom. Me. Everyone me slept with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> she always held my hand when I went to the bathroom. Miss Fields yeah. loved me. <laughs> no one else got to go to the bathroom with the teacher. She came no with one. me every time. Yeah. Yeah. I was the only one whose ass she wiped. She really cared about me. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me that's not favoritism. <laughs> she went the extra mile for Matt Woodworth. I'll tell you that right now uh, wiped my mouth at lunch it was a whole procedure all right so you mentioned the handwriting did you sometime in the recently take a do something about your handwriting am i am i is that wrong no you, that's howard stern that's are howard you still stern. are you okay. still writing super tiny i mean is it like little dots and lines like morse code i only said that because like howard stern uh, apparently always had really bad handwriting that embarrassed mm -hmm. him and he like a few years ago took like a class and now apparently he has some beautiful uh, uh, handwriting really? and signature because he signs stuff oca occasionally, I guess. And like, then there would be a picture of like, oh, look at my one of a kind Howard Stern uh, signature, and it looked like a fucking child did it, I guess. <laughs> he just so. retroactively make all those signed items useless <laughs> now that he has a really nice, wonderful signature. Yeah, you yeah. know, it'll be it'll be the classic, the pre two thousand whatever Howard Stern, the old school signature. You can guarantee that it's from a certain age and a event or whatever but i feel him on that i've got i've got scribbles as well so i'll see like a picture from pax like look at all the youtubers that signed my xbox and somebody will like take a screenshot of mine and be like one of these is not like the others because it's chicken <laughs> scratch <laughs> let me ask you so you asked if my handwriting is still too small and i feel like it's normal sized but i'm really bad at writing big like if there's ever an occasion where like maybe i'm signing a t-shirt or something like I, I, i'll do the first two letters and they just shrink on down and then just go no. in. Like, now is that because you're running out of space i've done that a lot like i, I wish. start big and i'm like oh it's God, because he space. can't visualize the images that are to come he can't picture the whole woody's gamer tag on the shirt and and make all those letters this the, the size that he pictures in his mind's eye he's just like W. Oh shit! I fucked up. No. That, like, well, and now it's know, like a, discovered. He puts the W on. It looks like retarded. a Wonder Woman logo <laughs> right in the middle. He gets I, woo out there before he knows he has to tape another piece of paper onto the that's other end. That's not it at all. It's it's, 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 it's on your spine. It's not that I lack the executive planning, which is what you guys are talking about. It's that I just have this like temptation to to get back to my comfort zone, which is so normal your size habit letters. is so bad that you literally <laughs> can't write your own name. You can't say, you see this and you're like, okay, this is my time. I can write big letters now. I have to write, I don't know, like 10, 10 15 characters, right? I can do this. And after two characters, you're like, no, back to the same old thing. Really? Am I alone in this? Am I the only one that drifts towards smaller letters, like, like in a situation that calls for big ones? I can see my pep rally yeah, signs. I, I, Be like, guys, go team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I have you start off strong. Then, uh, All I've done is off. Shift. Don't get too excited. You know? <laughs> I've done yeah, my handwriting is terrible. Kyle has I, great handwriting. I, you were talking about like how you came up with the letters. You mimicked that retarded child in school. That That's one way of doing it. What I did um, was on top of the blackboard, it, it was a marker board. On top of the marker board was like the alphabet, you know, uppercase, lowercase. And I just kind of copied exactly how it looked, you know. So, of course, it was cursive and flowing and pretty. So now I, you know, I have handwriting like a... Like a girl, which I which I like a lot. I was going to uh, say that I wasn't sure how sensitive you were about your feminine handwriting. Sensitive about it at all? It's it, it is feminine handwriting. I, I like it a lot. Um, if I write a nice little note to a lady, she always appreciates it. You know, if there's some, it looks like fucking Don Juan himself, like uh, <laughs> fucking fucking wrote this shit with some scrim. Or they think or they have a new, you know, mysterious female suitor. Mm, yeah, maybe yeah. so. Maybe they're into that too. I, 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 I legit want maybe to the man see, has a calligraphy habit. I want to see. Man. Who knows? I, I really want to see Kyle write something because I want to verify his handwriting in person. There's still a part of me that thinks this whole feminine handwriting <laughs> thing is a ruse so that he can get like one of the women in his life. I don't know, kitty, girlfriend, sister, who knows, uh, to write things on his behalf. Like, oh yeah, weird thing about me, I've got handwriting like some other person. Yeah. Well, see, I sign all that shit at, like, events and stuff, so you can see, you know, there's many examples of me, you know, very prettily writing. 
whatever they thought. What you need is a contest. Like you just, so a fan will come up to both of you, right? And you get Woody to sign one part, Kyle to sign the other. And there'll be room if for there's any we'll room just, We'll just left, do a comparison. Kyle. You know, we'll just do. You just put it on Twitter. Make sure that you tag both of these guys so they can retweet it, and we can see how one signature looks and then how the it's other. A lot one of looks. effort. I, I want to have like Kyle sign my AK or something. <laughs> no and, and see how like how flowy and pretty it is. It'll be very flowy and pretty. I'm really good if it's something that that allows me to do like the size that I prefer. Of mm. course, you know, like writing writing tiny letters isn't the same as writing gigantic letters. You're absolutely right. It's a it's a different arm movement. If I if I'm using my fingers and a little wrist, I could be very precise with something. But if I suddenly have to make this motion with my entire arm, and now there's like how many axes are going right now? Right, my shoulder, my elbow, my wrist each finger like there's all kind of crazy shit going on now it's hard to be as precise you know what so, i'm pretty yeah. good at so i write control the engagement and then dash woody right like it, when i sign t-shirts and signing t-shirts probably everyone here has done a bunch of t-shirt signings but like the it moves underneath your hand it's not like paper so like you have to almost plan out your letters like sometimes it's like all right this is going to go this way and i got to come around and meet the other and i couldn't tell you how i do every letter but when i get when it's time to do it I know every like I know exactly so how to write trick. that neatly. What you do is you take your left hand, your forefinger and your thumb mm -hmm. and the back of your palm and you put it on the shirt and, and stretch you're it. casing yeah, yeah you're yeah. casing yep. around each letter and you stretch in the direction that you're going to draw. Uh, you know, if if it's an I, then I'm going top to bottom and I'll start out with that so so it can't move. You know, if I'm if I'm drawing left to right for like an S or something, then I'll, you know, I'm going to stretch it that way. Cuz <laughs> And I, I've, I've done, but I've signed thousands of shirts. So mm -hmm. like, there's times where like, I'm like, I don't want to ruin this guy's fucking shirt. Right. And I, I'll, I'll second ask people. I'll be, I'll be like, or, or second guess people. Like, are you sure? A hundred and ten percent sure? Because that thing you're, you know, I'll sign their paintball gun sometimes, and it'll be like a eighteen hundred dollar paintball gun, or I'll sign their AR fifteen, and it's a three thousand dollar AR. And I'm like, you really want that on there? Because they're putting nail polish over it right after. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, here we go. I'll be real careful. Yeah. Like I don't want to look like Has a. Has anybody I, ever I, like taken I know you up on trick. that and been like, just... "Oh my God, you're right. I almost just let you sign this five thousand dollar gun. What the fuck was I thinking? This, <laughs> this is a, a blunderbuss from the a 16th century pirate ship. He almost ruined it. But you, my God, thanks for the little injection of reality. It's the fucking opposite, honestly, because sometimes I'll crack a joke about how, like, hey, I don't want to do anything crazy here. I don't want to embarrass you. He's like, you can do whatever you want. You want to write on my head? You want to write on? And his, his buddy would be like, yeah, bro, sign his fucking head. And I'd be like, all right. You ever we feel go. weird about touching <laughs> people, like signing the t shirts or the head or whatever? And it's like somebody's never had their shirt. So it's like, all right, like, come, come sign my shirt. And I got to do the stretchy thing. And I'm like, where? And they'll be like, right yeah. here. Here. And I'm like, well, hold up. I've got to put my hand on you and squeeze pretty tight and sign. And it's really, it always feels especially strange when you're touching a really warm person and you can like feel their their warmth coming in and like, I, I don't know, it's sticky yeah. and it just. I'm a pretty just touchy like that guy. little bit of humidity in their shirt. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. The right, the humidity. You just you're you're letting it all out when you stretch the shirt out. I'm a touchy person. <laughs> like like I don't know. Like yeah, I, I see way too touchy. <laughs> it really it depends Rump on the up. other guy, you know. But uh, so it doesn't bother me much. But I will say the front in particular. Like if I sign here or something, it it's just like oh look at this. We're um we're nose to nose now, aren't we? And I'm touching your chest. Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Woody's years of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, hey, he, he's got a bare, he, his comfort level with other men and being in close proximity is just, just on another level. He, he's just fine with it. I, I'll be, when I'm doing that stuff, I just try to put that on my mind and try to be, like, very polite. Like, in a normal situation, I just would never touch this human being. But, shit, he came out here and paid $150 or whatever, and he bought my T-shirt. Of course I'm going to grab his man boob, as sweaty as it is. And, uh, and out of respect. And it might be the really only a minority of people. We're making fun of fans, but to be fair, that like the the really people that you don't want to touch tends to be a minority. Yeah, I, I was gonna. They, Kyle says it's my years of jujitsu that make oh, me wait, happy touching people. I disagree. I, I think this ties back to my five languages of love thing, which is a book I bought. I didn't invent this, but there are five ways in which people show and receive love. Are you ready? Uh, I hope they can do this. One is physical touch. We talked about that. Another is gifts. Right? It doesn't have to be big things, but just a little token that you were thinking of me when you weren't mm -hmm. nearby. Uh, another is words of affirmation. Another is acts of service, and the last one is quality time. Right? So I'll go through those again. Physical touch. Gifts, acts of service, quality time, uh, oral sex, physical touch. I skip one. Anyway, those are them. So you might think like, oh, 
how do I like to love people? Like what comes easily for you? You might be a guy who saying like kind words or words of affirmation, you know, you look pretty, is really hard. Like that might be a huge struggle for you. Or maybe acts of service. That one for me is the toughest. Like really? Oh my God. Could there be a bigger pain in the ass? You, you know what I service? think about those love languages hmm. is that that is all a ruse written by someone whose love language is they just want a lot of presence. But you can't just walk <laughs> out into the world and say, the way that I experience love is for all of you to spend lots and lots of money on me regularly. That's my love language. It's regularly. not about money. No, you can't the, let it. You can't let this. This. Uh, you know, foster over here. I need constant. You're making gifts. a joke, but and, this but is important. And, 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 so and people who like gifts bunch of other love don't language. like expensive gifts. It's not about how awesome the shit is, right? You know, it, it could be like, hey, I won this in a bubblegum machine, and I thought, you know, like I saw this, and it took me three quarters until I finally got the. What about ring. how personal the gift is? I think if I'm doing language of love, that's probably I, I'm more of the gifty person, not the touching. Hmm. Uh, I think the more personal the gift, the better. The the more you think about the person, like I said, not spending like a ton of money, but just getting one random little doodad or widget right. or something that they actually need shows that you put in the time to think about them and their life and what they've got going on. And that can be a very good. Or language. actually one, right? To someone like a whatever. Uh, what the hell? I'm not getting this interference. So I hope other people don't hear. It. Yeah, we do. I'm hearing it. I do. Who's it coming? I think from? it's uh, Kyle. Oh, I think oh it's, it's Kyle. Are you no, getting text you. messages on your phone that you're no, I, was, I, I certainly wasn't. I was looking for a picture of me and Woody with a fan at the last paintball event because he's a very fat guy and he's wearing a bikini and I'm honking his big sweaty titty. Hmm. And, uh, and and I just thought that went to show that can, I... Can you that put I your just, phone away from your wires? It's, That's, oh, that, you think being near the wires is it? Because it yeah, no, really, it can cause interference with microphones and stuff. Like when the text message signal comes in, you know, a little bit da, 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 that we're hearing, yeah. that's how the message is coded. I think that yeah, and you're too popular to have it anywhere near that mic. <laughs> so let's get that way over Stop. to the side. The only time so, anyone's asked me to sign fucking anything ever wanna... is the first trip I went to with you guys. And even then, it was just like pity asks where they'd be like, oh, I have this paintball thing. It's got Woody's control the engagement. And then it has FPS Russia. <laughs> Do you want to sign it? And I would just be like, Do you want me to sign it? Like, <laughs> you don't know who the fuck I am. You just know you're like that guy's friends with these two. Maybe grab his signature. I don't fucking know. I'll Google. I'll YouTube him and be disappointed that I ruined this item later this time. <laughs> so that that whole love languages thing was a setup for this point I'm trying to get out, which is for me. The physical touch thing is the easiest love to give, right? And, and whether that means wrestling with the sun or like I, I did. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, like, like I go up to, to Jackie and grab her like I'm Donald Trump or something, right? Like, just, you know, like... She like, lets you do it because you're rich. <laughs> it's because I'm a star. star. Is that, is that Donald Trump in your background back there? Is that a is, cardboard Trump in your background, Taylor? Yeah, it I is. couldn't afford the real one. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, um... Anyway, so so yeah, I, like the, the way that I love to to give and receive is, is touchy stuff. That that's how I'm wired. Yeah, I think so, that's the easiest yeah. one too. Like like you really don't have to pull your wallet out for that one. You just can, you can just honk away a little groping. <laughs> here there. I think you're really looking at this with a broad like man spectrum when you look at the languages of love. You're like. Shh, I grope her every day. She knows a lover. <laughs> She's like, that means like cuddling with me and spending your time. Like, like no, no, that's quality time. That's a different language. She, yeah. would, she would prefer acts of service. <laughs> if she came downstairs and saw the dishes were done, that's that's what she likes. Uh, sadly, that I find that's the hardest one to do. Like, oh, that really? is. I'm, I'm, I'd that? say I'm bilingual with uh -huh. the love. Mm. It's I like intimacy, so physical. I guess that's mm -hmm. one that every single man out there. That's going to be their number one thing of love is getting head or doing something physical fucking whatever you want that's going to be number one for most men i think but also um the words of affirmation i like that hmm. like i like people being like hey you did a, like if i finish something and a boss or supervisor or someone is like hey you did a good job on that it's like it doesn't have to be a lot it's just kind of like okay my effort's been recognized like i can move on to the next thing it kind of puts like a, a an end mark on that activity if that makes sense whereas if you don't get like what you perceive as a good enough thanks it's like well fuck i don't i don't even want to put enough effort into this next thing i do because i don't feel like anybody's noticing that's interesting because that uh gives me almost no value like you know, oh woody good job oh taylor talk is cheap you know, yeah. like, <laughs> like no, well, I you've turned me a bra for a solution. And, and if they gush solution. longer, like, hey, I really want you to know how much this meant to me, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, is this un as uncomfortable for you as it is for me? Because I like, 
It, really? it's, was it always that way or just after you did the YouTube? Because the, the mass messages that you get can make some people numb, uh, not just to hate, but also to compliments. You can get numb to good things. I, I'm definitely numb to good things, and I'm working on my numbness to hate. It's always a, every year I get a little better. Um, Wait, are you trying to get more numb or less numb to the hate? More numb. <laughs> yeah, more so you numb. Want to get, want to get, you're making yourself more notion, emotionally numb in some areas, but less in others. I'm not sure it's well, going to work goal. quite <laughs> like that. Just I, tamp I them all it. down. That's what I say. Really. Just tamp <laughs> them all down deep. Deep like Rick and Morty, below. right? Take that, push it way deep, way deep. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna want to put it way up inside your asshole, Morty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when is that show coming back? It, it seems like it was supposed to be this uh, spring, I thought, right? It, like, like it, there was a little leak. Be, it that... should be pretty soon. It, it like, should. Be soon, there was a false bit... rumor that it was coming out at like the end of July or something, right? Like, do you guys remember that? And that's yeah. all. And then, but they said 18 months, so that would imply around Christmas ish. Really? Not it was positive. like their most popular show, so maybe they, they moved it to like the fall season where it competes with the big boys or whatever. But it's Adult Swim, so the show. It's the creators of the show dragging their feet and just taking a really long time to get it done. And maybe that's because the product is going to be better for for it. But uh, you know, everybody wants to see the show because it's been over 365 days. I remember when that period passed not too long ago, and they were like, "It's been over one year since the last uh, you know episode aired." And it's like, "Shit, mm. time to air." It's really been also that long? like it's kind of like it's a South Park scenario, time. isn't He's it? Locked up Dude, in there. Rick and Morty is not oh. for kids, right? Not at all. Yeah. But we were watching it, and Colin entered the room, and somehow I had the dumb notion, like, "Well, it's a cartoon, so like, you know, Colin can <laughs> see it, like, it, you know, it is a cartoon." And now he won't stop talking about it. He's like, "Dad, do you remember when Rick and Morty were naked?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I remember." Because there's an episode where. Like, they're being spied on by a culture that's very, very, like, sensitive to, or, like, shy or embarrassed about seeing genitalia. So they spend the whole episode naked. And, like, we're going to Wendy's. He's like, should we get naked? I'm like, no. No. He's not serious. He's just pushing my buttons. And, uh, yeah. Huge mistake. Don't do If you that. want to see more, did you see the guy on Reddit that leaked the, uh, the season, I believe it was three or four, episode one twist? Uh, I see. I see you smiling. Mm. There's some guy. So you know, it ends with uh, Rick all uh, chained up and in prison and stuff, right? Yeah. And like, well, well, and the Earth is overrun by aliens. And you're like, well, where do we go from this? Supposedly, this guy on Reddit went back and looked at all the episodes from I think it's one to ten or twelve in the season, and there were all these little clues that uh, explain what's going to happen in season one of the next episode. I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but it's actually like built up. And it was a big enough post where I think the creators asked for it to be removed or it got kind of ridiculous. So, Wow, asking for it to be removed just lends credence to what would otherwise be just a Stride fan theory. Right? It, it was yeah. something that really blew up. I purposefully chose not to watch it because I really enjoy the show. So I wanted to be surprised. But I was sitting there I was like, I want to click it. I want to, I want to see what happens next because it'll be kind of like an episode, but not really. Hmm. I thought you were, I, I, when you were saying, I thought you were going to be fooled because I temporarily was. You know, there was that court case where the guy, like, talked back to the judge in a really crude way. I was like, <laughs> yeah, in my head, I was like reverse engineering how this was all possible. I thought it was a leaked thing from an upcoming season. And I'm like, I do remember he ended season two, like, on trial. So I guess this is the trial. And I'm like, but he, I, I don't remember him being accused of what was it? A yeah. pedophile? Not Why a lot of character Morty consistency? Judge. Why is Morty the judge? And, <laughs> and what did he do? Sucking people's dicks? Offering to suck <laughs> no. Morty's dick to get off the charge? What? No, man, they went off the rails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, real thing I'm, from I'm gonna Alabama. Be for that glorious show. Alabama. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, I and like it didn't make any sense to me, but I was trying to make it fit because I that I thought it was supposed to be real. So that was hilarious. That was Georgia, by the way. That was uh, that that was that was here in Georgia. Well, uh, fun. Uh, I thought that was fucking hilarious. If you haven't seen it, look it up. It's like Rick and Morty court. Search that on YouTube. You'll I'll find, find it. it. They also uh, they made a full animation of it that they released. So it's not just like the little kind of poster board sketches back and forth. They well, also showed it to me. It's like a full animation of their little tiff in the courtroom it's really funny because he's in court right arguing with the judge telling the judge to suck his dick and he's like uh you're the one in here for assault and he's like shut up bitch i'll kill you i'll kill your whole fucking family and he's <laughs> like oh yeah you will you're not doing shit from jail he's like i'm gonna fuck you in jail and just 
that's exactly what you need to do in court. I, I can imagine his lawyer or public defender just sweating bullets or maybe just throwing up papers and just saying, I, I quit to hell with well, He was there complaining yeah, about that. the public defender. He was like, this public defender is trying to fuck me. <laughs> yes, and yes. He said he's not going to defend me unless, unless I suck his dick. And, and, and I, I'm here to defend myself right now, and I need this piece of paperwork and that piece of paperwork. And he, he's like, you've been given all the paperwork. He's like, well, I haven't been given this. You've been, you've been given all the paperwork there is, though. And it's, I started thinking, like, this really is a shitty situation. Like, I know the guy blew up and, like, told the judge he was going to kill his children with a hammer. But it was just because he couldn't take the, the frustration. and It made him so angry that the system had, was fucking him so badly. He was asking for a public defender who would get an autopsy report. Because it was a murder case. His defense didn't have the autopsy report for the murder case in which he's being accused. And he's like, look, this guy doesn't even have the autopsy report. I want to defend myself if you can't get me somebody better. And please get me the autopsy report, your honor. That's what he meant to say when he said, and I'm going to smash your baby's head with a hammer. And I'm going to come in its eyes. He threatened multiple times to kill the judge's family as this, I can only imagine, this poor public defender is rethinking all of his life decisions, being like, I'm $70,000 in debt. This is nothing like Ally McBeal or what she did in her show. Like, now I'm an attorney. I should have listened to everybody who said this. I'm not writing the justices in the world. I had a coworker who was insanely into Ally McBeal to the point that he also claimed to, like, uh, and almost... A lot of our listeners probably don't know who Ally McBeal is. Ally Good. McBeal was a quirky TV show from, like, the late 90s, early 2000s. Calista Flockhart. She's a and, lawyer. Uh, Lucy Liu. And they, they were, it, it took place in a law firm. And uh, anyway, Ally McBeal, the quirky sort of main character... Claim, I think she orgasmed or could claim she could orgasm or something by touching the back of her knees. Like, that was her, like, special sensitive spot. It's been Four. 15 years, but it, something like that. So I had a coworker <laughs> okay. who also claimed that that was his thing and that he could, to semi-quote our friend, make a woman nut by, uh, by just, you know, working the back of her knees properly. He claimed he could do that. Yes, that this was a was skill. This, uh, what was this gentleman's name? No, no, no! Don't, uh, don't, don't actually say that. That's do you shitty. want the first name? Um, <laughs> no, I didn't mean it like that. I meant is he no, one? Was he one of your Indian coworkers? Uh, he had American name. Okay. Yes, he was a he was a short, very much heavy guy. Uh, and I, well, he's and, closer to their knees, so he's. Gonna <laughs> <work out. laughs> yes, that's what every woman wants: is a short, heavy, hairy guy just fondling their <laughs> knees and legs. I mean, that, I mean, you, you heard Trump. You just put your hand on your leg and go straight up. It works great. Women love yep. it because he's a star. Uh, yep. More women have come out. There's like ten now, and uh, one of them oh, has like nine. all these. The, one came out today. Uh, yeah, today, and, I don't count her. <laughs> and and she has. Uh, I don't stop a, a at bunch ten. Of, I'm assuming a hundred. She was you know? a yoga instructor, <laughs> and she was like quoting Trump. He's like, "Hey, check out the legs on this one." And she had like a couple friends around, and and I I don't know. Of course, I wasn't there. You don't know know anything. But her story sounded so reasonable. She's like, "I was embarrassed. I thought it was my own fault because she had a short dress on." And uh, uh, but she was a yoga instructor, and I'm like, "Oh, is Trump gonna also claim like I would never look at her?" And uh, I don't know. Another one came out today, and this one apparently told people around her way back in the day and they agreed that he complimented her legs or uh, that no, he, he did something he else. fondled her too and like it was like his opening move apparently like he said he just goes right in i would have to ask back of the knee. she was reading it to me and uh um and she told a bunch of friends at the time but they all kind of agreed like he's so rich and powerful that there's nothing she could do and it just sort of dropped there until this resurfaced and it sounds like oh my god it's a big conspiracy against him but he says that about everything, and that's how these things happen. You know, like one guy breaks the dam, and then everyone else who has experience with this comes forward. Like, it happens like well, this a million imagine times. Imagine if you had been sexually assaulted, and we'll just, for now, we'll just pretend it was true by Donald Trump. He felt you up on an airplane. Mm hmm. Well, back in the day, and you see the man's running for president. Would that not scare you? Would that not bother you that your former assailant is now going to be head of the free world potentially and it would make you want to come out e even regardless of consequence or risk or shame and stuff like that to me you know maybe we should keep america it's not great not great again <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should not have america america rapey again 
<laughs> I, well, I've been American frustrated drink. by his defense, right? His defense is this big, like, dude, it's just, they change it from locker room talk to boy talk. It's just boy talk. When the guys get alone, we all get a little bit rapey, right? Like, we just sit there and talk about how we sexually assault people. Like, it. trust me, tr it's just boy stuff. You'll get it. You know, like, uh, you're girls. You don't understand. Guys, are, we're all rapey. And I'm like, no, it no. Well, no. Doesn't he say in that quote, he's he's like, I came at her like a bitch in heat or something like that. Like, like <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> so, oh, oh, man. He said, uh, I turned him down and he said it was because I came at her like a bitch or something like that. Uh, moved, yeah, I moved if you watch uh, the clip, bit. moved on there's her this, like a bitch. Uh, there's that's this lady that's getting ready to interview them or something. <laughs> and she's walking around the outside of the bus and they're sitting <laughs> in the bus <laughs> talking about her like this dress and those legs and like that ass and stuff. And then, you know, she comes up and this like, all smiles and nice, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. It's, Adam. This is the big bus interview, right? The ladies in a purple yeah. dress. Yeah, yeah. This and is not what we need for leader of the free world. And like, obviously, guys talk all kind of crazy nonsense together. Look, look where we are and what we're doing. <laughs> but I've never, I've heard a lot of. I usually hear guys talk about this in more of a sexual conquest. Like, man, I had sex with a different woman each night, or this girl was so beautiful, or I hit her up with this line and she just melted and was all over me. I've heard a lot of bullshit talk. I have never heard a guy come in and just say, yeah, just grab her right by the pussy. You just go in for the touch. like, Or, um, or I've never heard a guy say, you just start kissing her and they'll just go for it because there's no, was it, they'll just go for it because there's nothing they can do. No, because he's something. a star. They, they want it because yeah. he's a star. Some, I've, I've heard of crap like that. You know, I'm, I'm athletes, typically, is where I would hear that from. Um, but not, it. The forcefulness is not something that I typically hear. That's that's a little bit out of control. I'm glad you said that because I've got a similar experience, right? Like like I've been I've been in a lot of locker rooms, right? Between swimming, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and ice hockey, I have like 20, 25 years in locker rooms, and uh, um, I've heard lots of sexual conquest talk. Uh, I, I remember one guy in particular is in my head right now. Who, uh, who had slept with this first redhead, and that was a really big deal to her. Like, I slept with this redhead, got some fire crotch, and, and uh, like that was a big thing. But I've never heard anyone get, like, rapey with it, you know? Like, in, um, as a lifeguard, uh, we had, they called it muster, right? Everyone kind of met before we went to our individual beaches. And uh, in those mornings when they would take roll call and, and the attendance and whatever, they would uh, they would sometimes talk about girls they met at a party and how hot they were and three ways and whatever and um, um, but it was never like rapey like that Trump is rapey Trump is like dude I can get away with sexual assault because I'm a star and now that some of these women are coming forward and they're like I let him get away with it because he's rich and powerful I felt like like it was a bully type thing like what can I do to like take down Donald Trump like I'm out of luck. That's how these women actually feel. And yeah. And it Doesn't it sound very reasonable though? Like imagine you know a guy, like everybody knows a douchebag or a super rich guy or something like that. Imagine somebody 10 times more than that, Donald Trump born into a billionaire family, billionaire his whole life, heir to a huge fortune, businessman, in control. Like as soon as he was out of college, like CEO or like managing the hotels, boss top down, uh, very affluent powerful out and about does it really surprise anybody that he's sexually aggressive this is the kind of guy that typically doesn't take no for an answer you see on the debate stage this is the kind of guy who for better or worse women throw themselves at him for his wealth wish that wasn't the case but it happens um is it really that shocking that somebody that's been in a position of ridiculous power for his entire life and been able to act on it is sexually aggressive or that these kinds of stories come out yeah, it still is. It still is because there's lots of people with power and in positions of particular power that, that allow them to be grabby. Um, you know, there's there's lots of guys that are in management and in those positions where they can do it. We we keep talking about locker rooms, but but like, and I haven't been in a lot of locker rooms, but I, I've talked to a lot of dudes late, and and I've definitely heard like rapey assault talk from like multiple guys before that always made me feel very uncomfortable. Not Americans it's not, usually. It's not my bag, baby. It's not. It's not what I'm into or anything. I, I, it's. It's always really a, a really dark conversation where I'm just like, ah, wish we weren't stuck in this car together, Sergey. So I didn't have to hear these about these war crimes. <laughs> really, eighteen Bosnians, huh? Fuck. You know, sometimes you hear some shit you don't want to hear. Um, but I don't know what this thing is with Trump. It, it's. It's. I'm surprised for one thing that it didn't come out earlier. Um, 
you know, with it, but but with so many coming out, you gotta say there's definitely some credence to it. I'm glad that no one has said that. Like, this isn't like a Bill Cosby situation, right? It's not like he he drugged me, he raped me, he humiliated me afterwards. He told me not to talk. It. No one has said anything like that. You notice, no one was like he told me that if I told anyone that he grabbed my pussy, I would never work in the modeling business again. It's not like that. It seems like a very inappropriate, misogynistic, grabby old man out of his time, um, who's Nailed probably it. who's probably not a nice guy all at the same time, um, and and that's what's going on here. I don't like think the that, Sean Connery James Bond. Yes, there you go. Get out of here, my dear. It's time for man talk. <laughs> yeah, that's not that bad. Ba- yeah. That's that's that basically. That's, the kind of era and mindset that we're talking no, that's about. That's a quote here. from the movie. <laughs> I know it's a quote from the movie, it's but that's basically what we're what you're saying Donald Trump is like, and I totally agree with you. Not that I've ever met the guy, so I don't I don't know. He yeah, can be it's charming. It's a very cringy clip to watch because it's very clearly uh, Billy Bush, who's like trying he's like the host of the show, I guess, who's like trying to ramp it up and like, oh, keep that energy level high. We're just guys futzing around. And Donald Trump being this so patent to everyone in the world but Billy Bush. In that moment, he looks like an insecure asshole who is just standing out there, chest puffed. I can do whatever I want. Women love it. I'm so rich, I just walk over and they're throwing themselves on me. I'm the best. I'm the fucking king. I'm Donald goddamn Trump. Like, it's, it is, and watching Billy Bush basically do like a real life troll <laughs> that he was implicated in because Billy Bush is also kind of shitty from what I've heard. Like, like ramping up Trump, being like, oh yeah, you know, let's get this, uh, how about a hug for the Donald? Oh, oh calling him the, the Donald. Donald in real life. Can you imagine how much your stomach would hurt if you were in that room? How much you'd have to go, oh, ugh. Oh, don't know. Oh, Billy Bush, you little bitch. Why would you even say that? Why would you act like this little weak shell of a man just trying to make Trump look like the big head honcho there? It's uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable to watch, and it's cringy. It, it, like, Billy Bush was trying to facilitate Donald scoring with this married woman, and I thought the whole thing was pretty bad. I don't think he was doing that as much. I think he was trying to ramp it up and get material for his show there. Billy Bush was, but I don't think that Trump, if but given the opportunity, would have not slept with the married woman. They're not, they're they're not allowed to broadcast that. Like they were mic'd up and stuff, but they weren't ready for recording it. Like none of that was for the show. That was just them in the bus. Yeah. Yeah, and then oh, the show. Here's it's another thing. Do you guys like... think the other tapes are going to come out? Supposedly, there's far worse tapes for The Apprentice and other shows, and that include racial slurs and other hateful things. Do you think those are ever going to see the light of day, or the studio is just going to sit on those to avoid lawsuits? I'm sure that um, they what, will come out eventually. So it's a five million dollar fine if they release the things, and, and some like billionaire who doesn't like Donald already came for it and said, "Hey, I'll pick up the fine. I got five million right here. Play them." And then nothing else came of it. Um, so like, as much as I'm willing to admit just about anything and everything about Donald, you know, it's, it's clear this, this is some things not going well there. I don't know. I, I just, for the time being, I won't believe that he's the end. Yeah, in there's a, no way for NBC like, like in a, to in win. In a mean, like, dark Donald um, Sterling kind of way. Like, like, I don't think he's up there like, oh, those... Those niggers, this, those niggers, that, and they're the Jews too. It's a big conspiracy. You see, the Jew uses the Negro to overpower the white man. Like if he's having talks like that with like all of his like inner circle, then I'm like, oh shit. Let's no more Donald Trump stakes. No more Donald. Now I'm now I'm on board. Now it's time to like boycott all things Trump, right? Because he's like borderline white supremacist. He is a white supremacist in that in that. Uh, and that light, if that's true, but I'm not willing to sign on to that quite yet until I hear him. I um, see. But we know he's an asshole. I've well, and there's it. no good way for NBC to handle it because basically they have to come out and say, they'd have to release it and say, hey, look at all this. Look at these clips from 2003. Look at what a monster he is. And people will be like, yeah, wait, so he, you had him, you knew about all this for a, for decades, and you continued to employ him as one of the flagship shows on your network? And yeah. so this this doesn't this didn't bother you at all until it was convenient. Is that what it is, NBC? And NBC would then have to say like, well, yeah, I mean, you already knew what you know hat we threw ours into, and so you knew we would come out on this side. And you know, if we had uh, really thought about it, then uh, you know what? As a matter of fact, a couple of vice presidents are going to have to step down because this is just tisk 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 reprehensible that this could come out sooner. Like that's all that could happen if NBC released it. Like they would look like assholes too, because it's like if this is damning evidence that he's a piece of shit racist that really was being awful and you just sat on it then you're implicated in this there's two other things first of all as a 
network, aren't they not allowed to officially endorse a candidate as a network? So they try to stay somewhat non-biased. And also, other than the $5 million fine in the contract, couldn't he sue them for either slander or libel? I forget which one. Not or if even, it's true. Tr- not yeah, but true, the fact that he would, and rent. he would just throw lawsuits their way, and it would just be expensive yeah. and cumbersome. That's- if it's not true and it causes financial damage, I think that's slander. He won't sue, though, because then he's just adding fuel to the fire. Then we have a big court case where we get the nitty-gritty details and we find out exactly what is true and what is not. I so is not. disagree with that. He, he, he will totally sue because he always sues. He did not sues. sue when the New York Times for- released his tax records. Dude, the New York though, Times it? made him his bitch. Like, like <laughs> they wrote that letter. It, I, I was laughing. Oh, do you want to hear about it? Here, hold on. Let's see. I, I'll... This won't take me long to find. While he pulls that up, you talked about court cases. One of the nine women or whatever are having a, a, I think it's a grand jury hearing. Like they're actually going to a hearing and we're moving forward in court, but it's going to be in November after the election. What's her charge? Do you know? (sighs) Sexual misconduct, sexual assault. It was one of the lesser sexual assaults. I don't think it was like a full blown. No, it was rape. It was the. I think it was the 13 year old girl that said he tied her up or some crazy shit oh, like that. Come on, there's no way. That's, I can't believe I'm, I'm going just Donald purely on, I'm just going purely on so memory of one, stuff that I've read. Donald Trump has a man who ties up all of his little girls for him. So, so if she's saying that he tied the knots himself, she's a goddamn This is the New York Times letter. He... Yeah, yeah. The essence of a libel claim, of course, is, to, is the protection of one's reputation. Mr. Trump has bragged about his non consensual touching of women. He has bragged about intruding on pageant contests in their dressing rooms. He he has acquiesced to a radio host's request to discuss Mr. Trump's own daughter as a piece of ass. Multiple women have mentioned in our article have come forward publicly to report on Mr. Trump's unwanted advances. Nothing in our article has the slightest effect on the reputation that Mr. Trump, through his own words and actions, have already created for himself. And uh, it, it goes on. It's a couple paragraphs They long. released his taxes illegally, though. Um, I, that's illegal? It's, I don't think, is it? Yeah. yeah, you can't just release someone else's personal information. Like, Are you, you can't sure? just release that. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is the New York Times, which is a majority owner of the New York Times, is Carlos Slim, who makes an enormous amount of money from illegal immigration because he gets a little bit off the top of all Western Union transfers, things like that, of sending money back to Mexico. So, clearly unbiased, New York Times. But and, and New York Times is a liberal paper. I, I mean, like, it, people defend different No, I'm saying the stuff, majority but... owner of the New York Times hates Donald Trump. Yeah, I, I'm and he has a lot of ways to hate on Donald Trump, realistically and in a good way. But he released his taxes illegally. That's that is illegal. That was the well, only. There's illegal a lot thing of people there. that don't like that man. There's a lot of people that don't like. That's uh, true. Clinton either. It's not a not a popular race <laughs> at yeah. all. Yeah, nobody the, is so happy. The Trump so, uh, you, I'm gonna, supporters I'm gonna ask this have been to you. just one second. The Trump supporters okay. have um have been upset that the media is not covering the things they want them to cover. And uh, I, I took notes here. There was this great list of things that, like, Donald Trump supporters wanted them to cover. And it's Clinton's cough suppressing device, Clinton's severe brain damage. Where Clinton's is this list? I look it. it was on Reddit. It's uh, a list of things that came off the Donald subreddit. Um, <laughs> That they wanted, that they were all upset that the mainstream didn't, mainstream media didn't cover. Clinton strokes and seizures. Bill will be dead within the month. I remember most of these. Clinton had Justice Scalia killed. Clinton had a DNC intern, intern killed. Obama is busing in illegals to rig the election. The election will be rigged. Mainstream media is sabotaging Trump after giving him $2 billion of free advertising in the primaries. The DNC is working to get, with the RNC to get Hillary elected. Megyn Kelly sabotaged Trump by being on her period. Anderson Cooper is a Hillary shill. Lester Holt is a Hillary shill. Martha is this Raddatz, real or is this like no, a, it's, it's, a list. These are all things that have come from like Reddit. This is a list. That I thought that Donald says, hold on, real quick. Let, let's, just, let's just to be clear, to be honest about this, this is a list of someone who very clearly has their mind made up and is being a little bit snarky yeah. and snide in these lists. Yeah, dude, if you go to the dude, Donald, there's a there bunch are of crazy more of these nonsense there of wild theories. Hillary had a secret listening device in the first debate. subreddit? No, there, these there's are definitely supporters. people there for real. Yeah, these are supporters of the Donald. Do you remember Hillary having a secret listening device in the first debate and how they were all upset about that and there were pictures and this and that? Um, the thing in her ear. There was no thing in her ear. There's okay. a, see, this is this <laughs> is the, the, the salting the earth tactic that you get often from people that are still 
defending a lot of these conspiracies is that you say, look at this. They thought that Megan Kelly was a conspiracy theorist because she was on her period. Never seen that. Never that's heard of joke. it. That's clearly um, a joke. That's clearly a joke from someone making that list. They thought that the RNC and the DNC were ganging up to get against Hillary. They thought that she uh, deleted a bunch of emails and then uh, conspired to start riots in Chicago. And then they also believe that she's an alien. Am I right? See, like, I can't get through They throw in a bunch of bullshit they in there. They say Trump supporters are responsible for zero no percent of, of violence at their events. The polling is skewed. Quentin wait, wait, read that last one. Read that last one. The polling is skewed. No, no, no. One before. Trump supporters no are responsible for 0% of the violence at their events. It just came out in video evidence that the Clinton campaign intentionally caused violence and is trying to bait violence at Trump rallies. I saw that whole we're video. Not, hold on. We're not sure yet because the guy that produced those videos is famous for taking things out of context. He was also the guy, if I'm not mistaken, he went to uh, HUD or like social services Planned or something. Parenthood with the pimp thing? Yeah, he, he tried to buy baby parts, but the one before that was really bad. He went in and he uh, tried to get, I think it was like HUD or like one of these welfare type agencies. And he was like, hey, you know, I'm bringing in, I'm smuggling in a bunch of illegals overnight. I need somebody, I need a place to house them. Can you help me? And the guy, God bless him, he says, okay, you know what? HUD's going to help you. Uh, we'll take it. all the immigrants who are going to smuggle. Just tell me when and where, and we're going to do all this. And as soon as he left, he called the police and told them exactly where the meat was going to be so that they could arrest everybody, right? But all they got on the camera was him just saying, yeah, HUD's going to help. And that's all he put in the documentary, and the dude got fired. That's totally possible. I haven't seen that documentary. But have you watched this one? That yeah, I did. Really it wasn't looking great. It was some really, it, really not dirty out of context tactics. quotes because it's not, for the most part, there aren't little snippets of people saying things. It's like full 20-minute videos Those of videos them sitting in the bar and this guy going it, like, yeah, awesome. you know that Chicago thing? We did it. You know, oh, another good idea for a hit. We're going to get women there early. We're going to have them hide signs in their pockets and then it's going to try and make it so that men are bullied them like it's it's clear manipulation uh, there's also frank discussion of voter fraud like these are actual did real you, issues see the that one the best was they planned to have signs and to say things that they said they quote new Trump would make trump supporters flip their shit like they they planned the most offensive things to do possible just like piss people off and make them fight at the events see that had yeah, I, I, I saw all the same stuff the only thing is Taylor's not right when he says it wasn't edited and it was 20 minutes long. Like, the stuff I'm seeing anyway is they edit lots of it. Like, there's one where he's like, they pay this guy, they pay this guy, and then they pay me. But, like, you don't know what they're paying for. Like, they just kind of like, oh, okay, so that's the money trail, I, I guess. Yeah, they do. But they, that, it, they elucid he elucidates And then, that. like, not in the same clip, not without an edit. And I, like, I... I I know how edits work, right? So like that <laughs> <laughs> you can make it say anything. You can really distort the message, which is this guy's specialty. And uh, so they, they outline like the money trail and then like 10 minutes later in the video. This is just so surprising to me that you got you were just all over like a bunch of accusations, mm -hmm. you know, except that it's fact. That's list true. I believe you, I believe that Trump is a evidence. shitty guy. I, I believe all the accusations against Trump for the most part because he's a shitty guy and I believe he does shitty things. But to then, as soon as the table turns, and it's like, but look at these actual definitive things of this voter fraud, bias of action. manipulation, of ganging up on fucking Bernie, ruining Bernie's chances in the primaries for that collusion happened. in the DNC. Yeah. Uh, you know, for, I mean, fucking the DNC years ago in 2011, Tim Kaine was the head of it. He stepped down, made room for Jebby Washington Schultz. I wonder what Tim Kaine got out of that. It's, this is real shit. Real shit, and nobody wants to talk about it. I mean, look at we, what we just did. We just talked 20 minutes about an old clip about Trump being an asshole from 2005. Yeah, because is it we didn't talk at all about stuff that just came out. What, the the like, point I'm trying to get to in this is that the Trump side has spammed so much bullshit, right? They jump on every conspiracy that the true stuff that comes forward gets lost in their noise. The point I was trying to make, and I, I can't get not interrupted, but the point I was trying to make is, this is like, hey, why won't the mainstream cover the mainstream media cover this? It's because you've been bleeding about unsubstantiated and debunked bullshit for months, and no one cares what you think anymore. If they would stick to things that were actually true, you know, it, and by they you mean a small niche group on one website, the loudest Trump supporters is what I'm talking about. Now maybe this I, look, I, I, we I, all I, everybody I, views the world really through their own lens, right? 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 Like you, we all have our own universe. Right? Like this is my universe where I'm exposed from, and for all I know, like there's a whole another group of really respectful people who don't jump on every conspiracy theory. But my view of the, the Trump people that I encounter is 
oh my gosh, they see the mic pack. When everyone here has probably worn mic packs, you know, for a lav mic, and say this is a secret listening device that Hillary had on during the debates. And I think, oh, all right. Well, the next time I hear from you, I'll know that you're a full of shit person. Yes, I've seen. But but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater on it because basically, I, I do not believe that the media was thinking. You know, this WikiLeaks stuff and this these videos, they're really good. We should cover this. Oh, you know what? A very a, a, a vocal minority contingent on Reddit has been talking about how Hillary's actually a reptile monster. So let's just you know none of this matter. Like that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. They don't cover it because they have a vested interest in supporting Hillary. They, every one of the mainstream media outlets is flagrantly ignoring WikiLeaks, ignoring huge blows that would cripple any other campaign. The only reason Hillary's alive is because she's running against one of the worst candidate, the worst candidate in presidential history. Do you remember the conspiracy that people were like, so Hillary, uh, Donald Trump used to do stuff with the Democratic Party and they were friends and she went to his wedding and that's, you know, powerful people in New York you go sure, visit yeah. socially. It's not a conspiracy. Like, what, the conspiracy that maybe Hillary asked Donald to run just to shake up the Republican Party. Oh, yeah. And somehow he started getting more men momentum than even he expected and I don't know, kind of like you feed the beast and it gets out of control and it rebels against its master and stuff like that. Do you think that's possible? <laughs> I, I don't think it happened. I, I don't think it happened, but I, that it's exactly what I was thinking watching the debate the other night. I, I was like, maybe Hillary just had Trump come in here and clear the fucking way because, man, she is so bad at this that, that Marco yeah. Rubio would be wiping the floor with her right now. The, the likability rating of a Marco Rubio to a Hillary Clinton right now would just be night and day. Yeah, it would. There was the a WikiLeaks. This list, I never even got it. through it all. There's stuff on here like all fact checking sites are Clinton shills. That's something I this, can't Woody, get away this is a from. list from enough Trump spam, a very vehemently anti Trump part of Reddit. So if we're going to yes. throw away the nonsense bullshit from the Donald. Why don't we throw away the nonsense bullshit of straw man? You hate straw mans. This is a whole list of them. This is actually like, an ad hominem attack, not a straw man. <laughs> a straw well, man is when you change somebody else's argument to something you'd rather argue oh, against. An ad hominem attack is when you say, like, oh, well, you would say that. You're a priest. Like, you, you don't attack the message. You attack the person who gives it. Yeah, I guess that's a whole blend of stuff. But, but that's what we're doing. We're kind of attacking the person. With little bits of truth speckled in that's, so that you can read through and justify it in your own head. But that's what I'm trying to say. So thank you for agreeing with me. Like, there's this list of things in here. And every so often I run across one. Like, Quentin, quid pro quo with the FBI. I believe they did meet on the tarmac. And they did have an influence. I remember they were like, oh, we'll get her to go along with what he said. Like, the FBI. And then the FBI comes out and says, we're not pressing charges. So now the attorney general, who agreed to follow the lead of the FBI, doesn't. And it's like, fuck. Like, that's something that they organized in that freaking meeting on the tarmac. Right before they were going to come out. Like, I believe that. Some of these are true. Um, then what did they get in return is the question. That's what we really don't know. Like, obviously, a favor know. was called in, right? What uh -huh. was the favor? Is it a future favor? Is well, it a? I, I guarantee that that I guarantee her career will go up and not down after Hillary's president, right? Like, uh, that, that's always going to be yeah, the case. Yeah, that, that's what but, her but little this, thing this, is. This, this list is just it. silly because this list is literally, literally composed of things that children from the internet put together over the course of months throughout a silly campaign where cartoon frogs and and witches and werewolves are are commonplace talk, and, and I, I mean like rep, calling her reptilian is is a legit thing. It, it may be on that list. I don't know if it is or not, but yeah. I've heard her referred to as a reptilian seriously um, on the internet and in other places. But Clinton was on drugs on, during the second debate, right? That thing comes from you, Trump. Yeah, he, Trump legit you know, asked he for a like he was on drugs. Can, you saw it. You saw him. He looked high as a kite, but he was probably just old and tired, and he's got a bad heart. So they're saying Clinton was on drugs. Clinton was wearing an earpiece. Um, Clinton wait, 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 started who, the birth of conspiracy. Though? Are we talking because about Bill Clinton? Or are we talking about Bill or Hillary? Hillary? Yeah, about Hillary. No, we don't know so who they are. But this is, this is the point. I'm surprised that, you haven't seen is, these same things. Like This to me is stuff I hear all the time. I'm surprised Why you is it the mainstream to them and, and inject them into this conversation. It's like me saying, hey, my neighbor said this. I judge all Trump He's a Trump supporter. I tag what he said along with him. No. The Donald is a silly, half-assed parody subreddit. A lot of the people on there aren't Donald Trump supporters. They just want karma. They're they're posting cartoons mm -hmm. and tabloid stories. That's not a piece of journalism. You can't use them as uh, no one's as calling a, as a, it journalism. I'm saying this is what the Trump supporters are saying, and it really yes. is it's not. not. No, 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 it's not parody. That's what some Trump yes. supporters are saying. 
And some Trump supporters there can't are some Hillary Clinton supporters and, and the real shit, which things, is concerning. But we don't go to them. Like, I, like we know that there's. You a know what? I was seeing that there. I read a comment from a Hillary Clinton supporter mm -hmm. on the Hillary Clinton Reddit that mm -hmm. said that she thinks or he thinks that gun owners should be prosecuted because there's no excuse to have a weapon because it's just needlessly yeah. dangerous. I would never say that that's at all indicative of Hillary Clinton supporters as a whole, but this isn't exactly what that list you're reading is. Is you're saying, look at it. They thought that there was a huge conspiracy that she had an iPad in her fucking uh, podium on debate one. No, that wasn't a huge conspiracy. It was a big conspiracy on one small forum on one website on the internet. And then those those relative people on Twitter spouting the same nonsense. But that is not indicative of the Republican Party as a whole. This whole alt-right thing is a minority of people who are very loud online because they are younger. And a lot of them, like Kyle said, are doing it for the lulls, because they want to fuck around, because they want to get all their internet points by jumping on this bandwagon, knowing it'll be popular. So, it, it's just really there's some truth to that. But to act as if watch this whole thing, I'm this saying whole Republicans are doing this. That's not what I'm like, saying at all. Like, okay, go ahead. So it's annoying to watch this whole thing play out, and true blue illegal conspiracies become proven on Hillary Clinton's side. Oh, they orchestrated the Chicago uh, uh, violence in those rallies. That's a crazy conspiracy theory. Something comes out, a guy from her campaign takes credit for it. Those people end up fired as soon as those videos come out. Not generally what you do with someone who's innocent. Usually you have an explanation. You only fire if it's immediately a bad thing. And people are still so bogged down in Trump's shittiness interpersonally. It's like, yeah, I know. I bet he's a terrible guy. I bet he's not a lot of fun to hang out with. He's an arrogant narcissist. But this person... Hillary Clinton is so much fucking worse. She's had the reins of power, and she's demonstrated not only is she woefully inept, but intentionally damaging and selling U.S. secrets down the river for whatever foreign entity wants to give a lot to the Clinton Foundation. There is dyed-in-the-wool facts that she has broken the law, and she is receiving treatment that none of us would receive if we did the same thing. It, it's just ridiculous. The point that I've been trying to make is not that all of these things are true, or even that all these people think it's true. It's that there is so much noise... If something like the James O'Keefe videos came out, which is what you're talking about with the Chicago violence thing, mm -hmm. if, if that had come out in silence, it would have gotten way more attention than coming out in a sea of bullshit, which is where, which is the environment that's actually. Or if existing. it had come out in the primaries or something like that, because you can't tell the real stuff from the bullshit. It's so much. Every but time I turn on the can. news, every time I turn on my phone, is some kind of crazy nonsense, one way or the other. So, well, I'm not going to ask you. Um, I'm, I actually just want to talk to Woody on this one for just a second, because you're, you're you're older than I am by far. But I, uh, <laughs> sorry, I, 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 you know, followed political stuff even mm -hmm. in high school and middle school, and I watched the elections. I think the first one that I was ever involved in or mentally was uh, where we had a Dole, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> good old Bob Dole running against Clinton, but. I cannot remember a debate so ridiculously ugly or nasty or with so much dirt on I there's always dirt. There's the Swift Boat Veterans for Vengeance and the, the Bush did nine eleven stuff and, truth, and whatever. Um, but this was just savage and not only that, but it seems like the candidates are horrible. The joke is always we're voting for the lesser of two evils. We're uh -huh. doing you know, you just choose the one that you can live with. And you usually get like 20, 30 percent of Americans supporting one candidate and the other ones being like, OK, you know, it's not so bad. Right. This time around, you have like a very small amount of true Trump supporters. You have a, I know a lot. Of, I'm in Texas. Right. This is red state. Mm -hmm. Very few people here in Texas, even my most conservative friends, very few really support. They're just like, it's better than Clinton. And even on Clinton's side, a lot of like liberals and stuff. When I got in California, talk to those people. They're just like. I guess it's not Trump. Like, it seems like almost nobody really supports the candidates. And my question to you is, am I hallucinating? Am I imagining this because of the Internet? Or is it really just that bad? So there's, there's, there's two parts of that. Um, one, yeah, there's never been an election in my lifetime where both candidates were hated this much. There's usually a guy you actually kind of want. You know, he doesn't always win, but you want one of them. This is the first election where people really don't want any of them. You know, like there's just more hate. On the debate thing, though, I liked this year's debates more than any in my lifetime. And I'll tell you why. It's like when Gore debated uh, Bush the first time. This is 2000, I think, or whenever the hell it was. And uh, 
Afterwards, they were talking about their ties, their shirt, did they roll their sleeves up or not roll their sleeves up. Gore sighed too much, right? So he, like, it, Bush would say something and <sighs> Gore would go, <sighs> like, yeah, to show. Dude, now, that's not what they're talking about. Like, what happens is the next morning, it's fucking fact check, fact check, fact check, right? There's a little bit on, like, Trump's temperament or something like that. But by and large, because they do that, right? They talk about the interruptions and whatever. But by and large, I feel like they're just fact checking everything and talking about whose plans were more detailed. And, like, they just kind of, it's more substance oriented. Whereas before, oh, my gosh, like, it was like a, a, a red carpet event where they talk about their clothing and their attitudes and 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 all that funny stuff and so in body my, language body language oh yeah they would legit hire body language experts to talk about how they held their hands did they point with fingers or thumbs you know because clinton was a big thumb pointer and uh yeah kyle's got it and uh um this time at least they're talking about the things they said like and i i really like that and i like that it's harder to lie right like um pence the night of, I felt like really won his debate, right? Like everyone kind of walked yeah. away saying Pence did great. The next week was about all the bullshit Pence says, right? All the coverage was like, Pence said Trump never said that. Here he is juxtaposed against Trump actually saying that. <laughs> Trump said, you know, never. There were this like a half a dozen examples like yeah. that. And um, I, I like that. Whereas if you go back 10 years, it'd be like... Pence really won. He was so confident and presidential, and and that's where <laughs> the story ends. That? Yeah, and and now it's all about like that. Not all about, but there's so much more truth and stuff that it, it, it's encouraging to me. Yeah, the there's no was, way for either of them the to win. Debate. You remember when Trump uh, was like, uh, somebody asked if he, what is it? There was an opinion on ISIS, if I'm not mistaken, and Trump is like, and so it's like, well, your running mate said blah blah blah, and it's like, well, then we disagree, and we haven't consulted. I'm like, really? Damn, son. Okay. I didn't hate him for I that. I liked that because yeah, yeah, it I liked that. a fake statement. I liked that because <laughs> it was more of like, a, oh, shit, I've never heard a politician say that. Usually it'd be like, uh, Pence said he disagreed with that, and then the politician would go, oh, uh, well, I must have misspoke. Could you <laughs> tell me exactly what Pence said so I can align it? Like, <laughs> that's what would happen. But it was kind of, I remember watching that and being like, oh, that's that's actually a little bit surprising. It's stuff like that that gets certain groups of people to like him. But really, you yeah, can't find anyone, like you were saying, Drifter, that actually likes these candidates. Like, if you ask someone why they're voting for Hillary or why they're voting for Trump, it's never. It's because Trump has this policy. It's because Hillary's going to do this. It's because Both Hillary is the suck. devil and Trump is, you know, the Antichrist and they're the worst person ever. And we have to vote for this person as a way to avoid that person. That's the only defensible argument because if, these people both do indefensible things if we judge them like we would normally would judge politicians neither one of them have a good tax plan neither one of them have a plan for medicare and social security neither one of them have a real grip on foreign policy and how it really should be conducted hillary has had her hand at that and we saw what happened it's just been a big mess I, i've heard so many of those reports on the internet of you know this world leader didn't respect her this one didn't like this uh, how how when uh, she would have foreign ambassadors come over she wouldn't let them get in the car with her she'd make them ride in a separate car what? when traditionally they get in the car with her but instead she wanted her like uh, chief of staff or like some per other person sitting next to her in the limo so like all of a sudden every ambassador you know it's an ambassador from estonia right like maybe it's not that big of a deal but let's just be clear the ambassador from estonia does not fucking like Hillary Clinton and felt disrespected by her. And that's just a, you don't want that, right? You you want a, a secretary of state who's like pulling every world leader, every ambassador in close and whispering in their ear. I don't know. But, I heard the Saudi Arabian ambassador loves her. They love her. <laughs> they love her. Didn't over they, there. Didn't they fund the campaign a lot because <laughs> Citizens United opened they're in, up they're on outside tandem bikes. funding and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, there's course, a lot. I actually front, got a fun one for you guys. You're gonna like this one. Any of you guys considering voting for Gary Johnson? No. No. No? no, good. A lot of people are voting for him. I met him in person. Huge asshole. Hey, Get out! <laughs> what do you Get do? Out. Uh, I used to. So when I was in college, I was into the Ron Paul thing. Young libertarians. Sure, we, sure. we had our own thing on campus. It was funny. The libertarian group had like a thousand students, and Republicans was like twenty, and Democrats was like fifty. So we actually had Ron Paul come to our campus and speech, and I was media for the day, and we had like a lot of guest speakers and stuff. We had Gary Johnson one time. I think he. This was before, obviously way before he's running now. And he came and he gave this speech about libertarian principles. And he went on and he talked about Second Amendment and right 
to own firearms. And of course, I was that goofy guy that asked the question, well, like, where do you draw the line? Can you own a tank? And the guy just lays into me and makes fun of me for being stupid and asking the stupid question about owning a tank. And I was like, the fertilizer that you can use to blow up a building and stuff. And I'm like, okay, that's that's It's fine. not a it stupid was, question. No. I have friends who own fucking tanks, and we want to know how he's going to legislate tank ownership moving this forward. Gets worse. It's a very big deal for us. This gets worse. Bear with me. <laughs> it's a little private event. He started talking about right to conceal carry, and he said that he does constitutional carry in every state, which is conceal carry, even if he has a license or not. He, has a, he said he had a license in no state, and he said the Constitution grants him the right to bear arms, so he will conceal carry as he sees fit. Mm. And uh, we're like, well, what if you get uh, like just a traffic stop, and the cop searches you and finds a weapon? I'm not shitting you. When he said that he would tell the officer that he plans to use deadly force if the officer is going to remove the weapon from him. And I'm like, <laughs> at this point, I had to be that guy again and ask questions. And I was like, hold up, you're serious. If you got pulled over and you had a concealed weapon for which you didn't have a license, you would tell the officer that he can't remove it and that you would use physical force if necessary. And he's like, yes, it's my constitutional right. And I'm like, you don't care about getting shot at all. And he's like, no, because I'm right. And I will die for this little thing. From that this point the on, hill. the whole tone of the conversation just got worse and worse. Like, these are his supporters. These are the young libertarians, right? Mm -hmm. And then they went out for dinner afterwards. And this is a little bit hearsay because I'd had enough. Young libertarian like, dinner. What happened like, there? I'm fucking, I'm fucking <laughs> done with this, right? But a lot of people still went out for dinner. And they said at dinner he was just a complete ass. Like, I was done, but all of my friends are like, this is the worst event ever. And he would just, like, make fun of the people that supported him because they didn't support him enough. Like, if we agree on one issue, but I have a slightly different opinion, it was not accepted. It was, like, hammering all the way home until you agree with me 100%. So I've been telling people when I get the chance that want to support Gary Johnson and the Libertarians and all this kind of stuff, and I'm like, this is not the guy. Like, even in a room full of his supporters, he was basically picking fights and saying stupid ass huh. stuff. This was the That's year that the Libertarians could have put somebody who was really good up and so many people would have voted for him because the other two options, like he, he could have, they could have run commercials with just the guy standing there, like kind of smirking and going, and then just <laughs> saying, what else are you going like, to hey, do? I'm Apple. I'm yeah. PC. You could just have like a Donald Trump impersonator and a Hillary Clinton impersonator first. Like I'm Donald. I'm Hillary. Yeah. I'm Steve. Motherfucker. Yeah. Right. All right, votes for just Steve, and this doesn't happen. Like that's the I whole commercial. Smith. I hate both of these people, and so do you. Vote for me this November. You know, <laughs> and then, I promise you, and no then you're, then you're everything present. will stay the same. None of your fears will come true. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not going to start any wars. Not going to sell our national security. Not going to start a really big creepy slush fund faux charity. I'm just going to get in, sit down, and probably not do much. I, as no I border walls, no bailouts. We ain't doing shit this year. Out of all the crazy things that all the candidates have said, though, I think that, that her talk of enforcing a no-fly zone over Syria is much more dangerous and insane than Trump's wall. Trump could tell me he was going to build a wall over the entire United States. Like, Canada, too. Keep them out. Like, and, and I would <laughs> On the be beaches. Like, what the stupid. fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, we don't want those dirty Canadian fish popping onto our beaches anymore. Never again. Like he could say that, and it still wouldn't be as crazy or dangerous or frightening to me as telling Vladimir Putin that if you fly your plane over this area, we're going to shoot you down. We don't care that you've got a naval base here now and that you're ready to go and you just annexed a whole fucking oh a chunk of a country. Yeah. That's like, the scary like, thing that, about Hillary, man. Like, like she's yeah. made some That's bad hawkish decisions before. And uh, it, it, I don't know. Like she was pro Iraq. She was. I'm just trying to remember some other examples. Yeah, no, I'm of coming course, up that, short. Like, so, but like, she's hawkish. I think it was 98 out of 100 senators voted for Iraq. I mean, that was right after we were attacked. The hype was on. Uh, but then again, it was still the wrong decision. Yep. I'm, so, yes, exactly. Yeah. Hyper, politicians. Hyper, you know, they're supposed to be able to remove under. themselves from that kind of personal pressure. That's why we have representatives and not direct democracy. Did Bernie vote for the war in Iraq? He didn't. He didn't. Think he, so. was, he was the one that didn't, and then there was another guy. Um, and, uh, and, of I course, Donald Trump. Trump. Her run for her money. I don't think she expected anything from him but to roll over and die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what Bernie was. Yeah. The, and, and, you know, for all the, what I consider to be false reports of Hillary corruption, some are true. That one's true. Like, like the, the DNC thing, those email leaks, she even, like, uh, what, I forget the word I'm looking for, but confirmed that those emails were, like, legit from her. The DNC and Hillary worked together 
to make sure Bernie lost. Like, that really happened. Okay. And no support. Like, everything was stacked against him. Yeah, and he did yeah. so well, despite it all. Um, so, real, I, I got to say, Bernie was very impressive throughout this whole thing. He, he's, mm -hmm. he is the old guy who's not a billionaire, who doesn't have a staff. He's the old guy who, when he announced... I, I love the picture fuck, of him. Though, right? Yeah, he is rich. Yeah, I think... Not rich as fuck, he's just he really He owns, like, rich, three right? houses. Yeah, he, like... I mean, he immediately went to his multi-million dollar house on a beach or something like that after the after the, well, his, after wife, lost the yeah, his wife owns it though we all know he's a cock but what i'm what i'm getting at here <laughs> <laughs> no what i'm getting at here is it was really funny when he announced his run for presidency it's it looks like i'm announcing no 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 it, i would have more people it looks like Steve at the gas station yeah. <laughs> is announcing his 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 run for presidency. There was a, a it was really pathetic. He had a really small like podium in front of him. It was chipped and dirty and a <laughs> microphone. He was in a field. It looked like like behind a Denny's or something. Like it was sloping yeah. down and and <laughs> there was like a dozen fifteen people there and most of them were either like do, most of them were doing their jobs right. I guess they all were. There weren't very many people who were like yeah we're going out today to support Bernie. He's announcing like. There's like three people. I, I saw that clip. He was screaming into a cornfield before his handlers turned him around. <laughs> yeah, Bernie made a real run of it. He, he did as well as anyone could, could hope for. Yeah. The one yeah. thing I'll say about him, uh, not all of his ideas were brilliant. I did like some of them, for sure. One of the few people who had ideas that I liked. Not all of them. I didn't I like him. But <laughs> it's, it's fine. But tell me this. Did it not appear that he cared? He could be wrong, but he genuinely thought that what he was doing was right. Like, he felt that he had a righteous cause, which I guess can lead people to do terrible things. But, you know, you, you look at Trump and Hillary, and it's just like, how much can I spin this, and how do I avoid that, and let's cover this dirt up. And, and Bernie's just like, I have to try to do the right thing. Right. Even though I didn't agree with Bernie's plans, I always thought his motives came from a pure place. And, you know, that there's nothing to be I said for so that. I thought so, too. I thought he was just misguided, and but wanted the best for people until he endorsed Hillary, at which point it was kind of like, well, this is, if there was, usually someone like Cruz saying, I'm not going to endorse Trump because he made fun of my wife and said my dad might have fucking helped murder JFK, was which on is the ridiculous. List. <laughs> yeah, uh, and so I'm not going to endorse him. And then Cruz ends up endorsing him. You're like, okay, another politician. He didn't expect him to keep their word. The thing that was different about Sanders is that you were like, okay, this guy, he's an insider but a little bit of an outsider insider if that's not if that makes a little bit of sense right like he like i was kind of expecting him like he's not going to throw his support behind hillary for real like th for a while i was like yeah he will he's just like other politicians and then i kind of got swayed over to the fact that like maybe this guy is different and then of course he throws his support behind hillary and as money. soon as she b requests it which was kind of like well fuck dude like you were supposed to be this like super awesome pseudo messiah in a way and then you <laughs> yeah. you know come when the devil claps as soon as she needs you I think Bernie could have ran it for uh, as a third party candidate even after everything was said and done and he would be what we're all talking about right now if he had because we, we've we'd have gotten why he made state. Trump win <laughs> yeah because he splits the left so yeah. the, Bernie is far left at the end of the day love him whatever hate him isn't that His better supporters though are left of Hillary and when you split <laughs> we're them better with Trump there's I really just not do. enough I still think that like I still, I still I think that think too so. oh. I think yeah. we're better with Trump yeah because because here's the thing I think Trump if Trump does something bad it's because he made an he, it's accidental Hillary's going to do some bad things on purpose that that's that that's my main justification Hillary will intentionally do bad malicious evil things that are not necessarily in the interest of the uh, the American people, certainly not in in the interest of, yeah. of us here. Um, but but Trump, on the other other hand, might bumble or pussy grab an ambassador or something, and then four years will go by and we'll get a real president in there. That's what that's what I think would be the result of a Trump presidency. But I think it's very chaotic. You have you have chaotic or controlled evil. Wait, you, which one's controlled? Hillary. Uh, Hillary Clinton, for the most part, a lot more capable, forward thinking, not. More calculated. Uh, Trump, Trump. Well, only one of them has voted for and supported wars in as a politician. And the other one was busy making reality TV shows. Yeah, and, and running a business. And that's yeah. that is what he did. His job wasn't being a politician. So I that's not a very shit. fair knock. No, what I'm what well, I mean is just fair the demeanor knocks, of the person. Is one never voted Donald for Trump a war as a politician a fair video. pro thing? <clears throat> No, that my, no. The argument I was not argument as much as I was just trying to make a statement of one is crazy chaos, one is controlled. I don't think Hillary is controlled. I think she has a record of hawkishness, and that she is. If she is controlled, it's controlled, manipulative bullshit in her favor, 
where she facilitates arm deals with foreign nations and takes back ends off of it, or that's, where she does bullshit tough. and where she actually starts wars, where she actually does horrible things, where she's, oh, you know, Saudi Arabia, you're a good friend. Take all these planes, have fun killing a bunch of people in Yemen. Maybe so, like, but she did all of it on purpose. She did all <laughs> it of it on very purpose, yes. I just, the that reason I don't think though. Trump would... Go ahead, sorry. Trump could wake up one morning and just be in a bad mood and be like, you know what? Fuck Nova Scotia. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, like yeah. somebody would come in and like so, some ambassador like from Estonia and they'd get along and he'd be like, I ain't going to listen to that bitch. I mean, we just talked about how the yeah, ambassadors yeah. actually don't like Hillary. Yeah, right? No, it's, it's not great. Uh, like I said, our choices suck, man. They, they fucking do. Suck. Who's the German leader? Like Wankel or something? Merkel. 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 Yeah, Merkel. yeah. I can totally Angela see Merkel. Trump on the podium like, Merkel? She's a four. Why are we even working with this woman? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just so look I, at her. You think that I would work with Germany? You got the down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she would not be my first choice. <laughs> this is what he would say. <laughs> the leader of the EU. But, um, yeah, really, I just, I, I honestly think with Trump, I don't think he's going to do anything. If if he gets elected, no, which I not. don't think I think I think it is a zero percent, maybe like two percent chance he gets elected. Mm -hmm. But if he does, he's not building a wall. He's not going to do any of this crazy shit. He's going to get in there and let Pence do a lot of what he wants because Trump, I think, is just a narcissist who ha wants the ego boost. He wants to be the president, but he doesn't want to like do the Imagine president if stuff. He gets president and starts selling like Trump branded this and that, like President Trump collector plates and stuff. <laughs> president, yeah, like, I uh, want just that. huge numbers of coins. Look, the <laughs> Trump, Trump presidency points. is forget about the country's well being. Okay, just just put all that aside. Let's okay. talk about entertainment value and merchandising options. Okay, now we're gonna have some fun. You've got. He's got so much power as the president. We all know it, and we we forget about it that the president can, at on a whim, just be like, "Hey, uh, all the major news networks, I'm gonna be talking to the country today. Show up and be there with your camera rolling." He could do that at the drop of a hat now, yep. and and we've seen him put on these uh, these these conferences where we think, you know, oh, Donald has something substantive to tell us about. It's a very big deal. Everyone come and roll, and then he tricks you, and it's really just an ad for Donald. I think that's what the State yeah. of the Union addresses would be like. I think that's what the uh, you know it, the the radio announcements would be like that the president does every week or whatever. You'd get Trump advertisement. You, 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 the TV would come on. You'd see him sitting at the desk, you know, with his focus. And you're like, oh shit! I remember when George W. told us that we were going into Iraq. Oh God! I remember when 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 Clinton came on like this and we were bombing Slovodan Milosevic. This is going to be some heavy shit. And he starts talking about Trump's steak, and he starts talking about the new Miss Universe pageant coming up, and it's yeah. gonna be huge. And like eight minutes in, you're like, "Did anything happen?" Or he just want to talk. Like, like, yeah. like I'd like everybody to join me at 8 p.m. on NBC for the 20th season uh, celebration of The Apprentice. You know, <laughs> <laughs> please, you know, now the Apprentice schedule Opus program. edition. Like that's like, cool. Would be real cool if he, if he had like if he if he was like you know the West Wing was a huge show back in the day. Think that, but reality style. Bring the cameras in. Let's go. Let's go. They're like, fo they're following him to the situation room. You get to see him making major, like, global changing decisions, like this and that. Just yes, no, go. He kill will him. make kill major him. global him. decisions. He'll retroactively give himself an Emmy. <laughs> you know, well, <laughs> this was, was great really all funny. along. Yeah, that I, was funny. Like that was a good part of the debate okay. where he said, like, he'll give himself the Emmy, and he goes. Uh, or what did he, you probably remember it? Yeah, I do, I do. Uh, he he was complaining about things were rigged, right? That this election was rigged, and she's like, "Oh yeah." And back when this judge was supposed to try his case, he said that was rigged. And back when this was you know, supposed to happen, that was rigged. And for three years in a row, when he was nominated but failed to win the Emmy, he said that was rigged. And Trump was like, "It was," <laughs> or something yeah. close to that. And what did Trump say? Did he say it was? I think was? he said like, "I should have won it." Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> no, he's, I should have won it. You're and I saw it. that. Trump, you're a puppet. He had put out no, a bunch of... you are a puppet. He had put out a puppet. He had you are the out, one who is a puppet. He had put out a bunch of tweets uh, of having lost the, the Emmys, and he tweeted that, you know, this whole Emmy process is rigged. So I was like, oh, this, you know, like I hope that this comes up in the debates. And it did. It did. But that was a real <laughs> so thing. So do you guys think that the election is rigged? And I, I think I, I'm going to say it kind of is. I don't think there's, like, massive voter fraud. There's always a little bit every year, but not, like ridiculous like 150 percent of people voted right but donald trump has the left stacked against them 
and he split the right. Like, he's not getting endorsements from some Republican figures, arguing with some of them. He calls the GOP spineless, and they're saying that he doesn't respect. The The party itself is kind of turned on him. So not only is he fighting Democrats, he's fighting uh, about a third of the Republican Party as well. I'll admit he's doing a shitty job, but that's not what rigged is, right? Rigged, to me, would be the wrong person <clears throat> winning. And, like, it, it just doesn't sit with me. Like, the main argument... Like, why is it that it's rigged when there's a presidential election, but then when it's senators and congressmen and stuff every other two years, there's no rigging at all, right? Because the Republicans... People claim rigging the as Republicans, far as senators. People have said that uh, Al Franken got in because it was rigged in Minnesota, I think it is. I've, I haven't looked into the facts maybe. on that. These are people saying, on Reddit. Just, I'm just teasing. The, the, yeah, <laughs> many people are saying, these are smart people that are saying this. This isn't just like, you know, a couple of articles on Google. These are I, certainly facts. Smart I'm people. just saying, I, I think it I hadn't heard does. the Al Franken thing, but it, it just as a at a high level, I'm like, oh, why is it rigged for the years where the Democrats have been doing well lately, like the last two presidential elections? A lot more election. scrutiny. Like, for but Senator, it's unrigged like, for... The smaller down the you go two. in the election, there's much less interest in everything. That, like to true. a local level, it, it's pitiful. I mean, in 2000 and 2004, Democrats said it was rigged. In 2000, Gore spent like five weeks suing and wanting recounts. And so. Well, the recounts were triggered automatically by law because it was so close. Like, it wasn't even a Gore thing. I'm just saying that, like, this revisionist history of, you oh. know, every other year people just say, you won? Back to work for me. Whatever I do. Like, that's not true. That people think about rigging all the time. Trump talks about it way more than other people. Mm -hmm. But in previous elections, it's absolutely true where people make a fuss and say on both sides of the aisle that stuff is rigged. You need to do it American Idol style. We should all call in, let them know who we want. Uh, we yes, to text yeah. Trump to 8088. Yeah, yeah. Well, what happened with the Gore thing is he won the popular vote and then he lost Florida. And there were a couple like legit things with the ballot, like the, there were two pages and they didn't line up, and it made it like like Nader got an unusually large percentage of the vote, and people think that some of those were they wanted to vote for Gore, but the butterfly ballots didn't line up. That was a thing, um, but the way Gore handled it, I didn't love either. Like he wanted recounts, apparently, and I'm no expert. A recount tends to get more votes than the first time around. And he only wanted recounts in counties that benefited Gore. Like, he wasn't saying, we have to recount this whole state. He's like, oh, no, we need to focus on Miami-Dade County and then another one, Wade, maybe? I he forget. also tried to get rid of military absentee ballots in Florida. Tried to make it so those would not be counted. I yeah, remember military that, but I don't doubt it. Like, 90% like, Republican. Gore's, yeah, right? It's just, so, Gore, yeah, Gore's whole thing, kind of he wanted recounts in a way that benefited him. And... Uh, and then it went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court voted along party lines, and it was like 5-4 Republican, which bothered me a little bit. Like, it might be that's just how they felt and that, you know, whatever, but it also, like, oh, I, I never thought of the Supreme Court as very political because of those lifetime appointments, that they get beyond all that. But, you know, they voted for the way that would have helped yeah. Bush along Don't party they do lines. Like, uh, what Hillary time, said about the time the, they do party uh, lines? In the Supreme Court? Yeah, most of the time they vote down party lines. Not not a lot of outstanding I opinions. I, I feel like because yeah, like leading sure. up to decisions, they're always like, "Well, we know how this is going to go." It really just depends on what this one justice <laughs> decides. Because we just know what these two and what these two are going to say. Right. I like that the justices are being held up. I find that entertaining, if nothing else. Um, and, and and I, God, I hate both these fucking candidates so much. You got Donald up there talking about repealing Roe versus Wade, and you got Hillary up there. Who is so just stupid? Just, just between fucking yeah. toxic teeth is just spewing these lies about her real positions about gun control. Which, if there's anything I know about, it's that. And mm -hmm. I know she's lying every step of the way. And mm -hmm. I wish Donald was good enough to. Call oh, you can go back. I love those quotes from the oh, '90s where she talks right. about super predator this and drug epidemic that, and mm -hmm. against gay marriage this, and now pro. And I get that times change and opinions change, but it's it's a pretty rough juxtaposition. She still oh, supports the assault abortion weapons ban. comes up. Yeah, she does. And, and partial birth abortion comes up, and Donald doesn't know how to explain it. And, oh, and then she was terrible on that. I wanted Donald to be to be to to explain what partial birth abortion is. I wanted to explain that the head crowns that that the the woman is giving birth, and then they insert the scissors into the skull and open them to create an, a wound. Isn't that then, illegal in most states? <laughs> and they it's, suck it's out the brains with the hose. Okay. I, yeah, it, that's like a real thing and the reason I don't think he could come up with a good argument against it is because he's a pretend Republican he doesn't actually believe most of this stuff he's like and I'm also pro-life because uh, 
Pence assured me that's what I should be before I walked out here tonight, and I will <laughs> yes. not be going against him on that. Taylor like, might be yes. right, or he might not be able to uh, like lay out these positions because I feel like he doesn't have the attention span to learn the positions. You know, when he Seems said like we should punish the women for having abortions. Mm. It's like no, that, that's not how they t- to historically do it. What they actually do is they punish the doctors for performing them and consider the women a victim. Yeah. like that's that's what the politician is supposed to say. He just didn't know. Like he doesn't sit there and come up to speed like other people in his position. No, because he's, I think his position before yeah. that was pro-choice. He's intellectually and you don't have lazy. To delve into it. Yeah, I, I, oh. he's intellectually lazy or he's dumb. Like, like like I think you like like as much as I like I like having a good time about Trump. Like he may be a little stupid here, despite his accomplishments in other regards. Uh, you know, a, a, a braggadocious like real estate tycoon, which is really just a big loud mouth salesman in the end, isn't necessarily the guy who can sit down and crack books and like really learn international policy, comprehensive tax strategies like like that's thick stuff. Like, all right, you know, if, if you don't already have your feet in that water, it's going to be hard to get up to speed. And it's really going to be hard to get up to speed on all the things that a politician says when you get these 30 questions that mm-hmm. someone should have sat down and be like look every politician gets asked these 30 questions here they are and here are the answers that we all give no matter what we do you know and, and they're there you know things like blaming that you know oh it's the doctor's fault not the woman never blame a woman for anything <laughs> i'm a politician <laughs> never you say know, you're yeah. going to raise taxes even if that's yep, necessary nope. we've seen Unless that the if you Raising do, yeah, unless it's the rich, yeah. If you are going to raise taxes, you have to tell them this only impacts people that aren't you. Yeah, and yeah. make sure you use very vague words like fair share, so that if nothing happens, you know, maybe that was the fair share. You know, like <laughs> maybe nothing needs changed. Fair maybe share. they uh, need to pay less taxes. Maybe yeah, that's more fair. Kyle. Let me get an ad read here. I want to tell everyone a little bit about Squarespace because they're helping us out sponsoring the show tonight. When you use Squarespace to build your website, it will look professionally designed regardless of your skill level. There is no coding required. They use intuitive and easy-to-use tools. Squarespace has state-of-the-art technology powering their websites to ensure security and stability. They're trusted by millions of people and some of the most respected brands in the entire world. So you can start your free trial today with no credit card required at squarespace.com. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use offer code PKA to get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, build it beautiful. So whether you're starting a business, building a portfolio, or just expressing yourself online, remember to sign up today and go to squarespace.com slash PKA. That's squarespace.com slash PKA. If you need a website, Squarespace is the place to get it. I that's have, probably enough politics. I have a new topic. Right? Like, yeah, we've done a lot of that. I want to talk that's the about issue this. Of the... Time to boot this is the a forty-four top. second video about airplane violence, <laughs> more or less. I wish Taylor were here, but I, I, are you guys ready for this? Let's get Taylor back. He'll be back soon. Okay, all right. We'll wait for Taylor. Um, Shit, I had a so you took off from your yard for the first time ever in your uh, your paramotor. I know that was a huge deal for you. That it's one thing to be able to drive, you know, multiple hours and like set a whole thing up, but the idea for you, I think, um, uh, of just stepping out the back door brrr, and going into the sky and then, you know, ma- doing your thing and coming right back was the big thing, and you did it. I had a video I made. I don't know if you saw it, but I talked about it for ten minutes, and it, it, it's a really big deal to me. L- like Kyle laid it out perfectly. Like it, it's. It's pretty neat that you can take a paramotor somewhere and go fly. It's a portable thing. It fits in my truck. I like that about it. But the dream included looking at the sky and saying, you know what? I feel like flying. And 15 minutes later, you got it laid out and you're running into the air. And uh, there's something cool about no instrument panel in front of you. There's something cool about like just so open. If you lean forward while well, I have a chest strap, but you can unbuckle it and you can just roll into the sky. You can do a somersault to your death. And, That's the uh, way to go. It might be. <laughs> so the, so the, I've seen these things. These things aren't even remotely safe, are they? No. No. <laughs> I didn't think so. They, just making sure. <laughs> Woody's like, I've only crashed a few times. Come on. <laughs> yeah. The, still with us. The so. statistics on them is that they are safer than motorcycles. The and that's it per- <laughs> I mean, like they only if you're across. jumping motorcycles, I believe. No, it, what it is is in a motorcycle, you're dealing with traffic and all kinds of things that are hard to predict. Uh, I'm sure if it were motorcycles on empty roads, they'd be safer. But the reality is, more people per capita get hurt on motorcycles than paramotors. I'll add this to it though. If the paramotorist views it as aviation, 
then it's really safe. You know, like we're gonna go up, I've kind of thought about my flight plan, where I'm going, what I'm doing, and I'm coming back. If the paramotorist thinks of it as a sport, like I'm gonna learn how to do loops. I'm gonna learn- Like a go-kart that you can just hop in and go. It, it, there's that, like not checking out the weather first and stuff, yeah. but, but you can literally do loops on it, right? And, uh, and that's the thing, kind of like holding a bucket full of water. You're swinging high enough or fast enough, and it works. And there are people better than me who know how to, like, work the energy. And you know the pirate ship ride where it goes up a little and it just continuously goes better until it can do full loops? That's kind of how they do it in a paramotor. Well, like they build up speed and left turns, right turns, and then they do the full thing. And there's something called a wing over, I think, where you go sideways. I'm not an acrobatic pilot. Um, if you're into that... Then you will probably someday work your way towards, they, they call it gift wrapping, where you go halfway up and then you come down through the wing and now you're like a, a Roman candle or something, you know, just like shooting through the air. Um, yeah. That's bad. You next, know? Uh, that doesn't I sound telling, safe. <laughs> I, I was telling Woody yesterday or the day before that the next time we do uh, some sort of an outdoor PK event of some kind, whatever it may be, that it'd be really cool if he made some kind of an entrance with the paramotor. Like imagine like, um, you know, a lot of you guys have been to the events that are listening to us right now. You know, there's a couple hundred of us out in a field or something, you know, waiting, and all of a sudden we hear him coming, and it slowly gets louder and like, <laughs> and the cheering starts, and then we see him coming. And I imagine you with like smoke uh, grenades on your feet or like flares on your feet, or uh, or maybe even like holding an American flag that's like something festive, oh, like flopping behind you or something, like a real entrance that you make uh, with this thing. That would be so uh, cool, I, and it's yeah, not that crazy. Would. Like like let's say we uh, went to some uh, a paintball field, for example. Like like uh, what's the first one we went to? CPX is that what they're CPX? called? Yeah. yeah, CPX totally has places I could land a paramotor. Absolutely. Why not just like throw that instead of flying in next time? I'll drive in. Uh, I'll throw the paramotor in the bed. Drive all but the last, whatever, 15 minutes of it, take to the sky and arrive. Would it be safe for you to play paintball from there? Like, if somebody's shooting a paintball at you, is there a way that it could totally ruin the the rig and you That'd fall be out too of low. the low. I think I just yes, get enough you altitude with a that you can. Up there? I think I just get altitude. I don't want paint all over my gear and stuff. And no, I was meaning like you, like you know how at CPX Sports when we went to that thing, it was like, oh, here comes a tank. And it was like a golf cart with a bunch of stuff on it. That I, I don't know, maybe they could be like, oh, here comes uh, our uh, resident Apache, <laughs> and then you would just come in and be able to shoot from like thirty feet in the air, low enough. No, no, that he can, can throw those. Uh, I don't want to be shot grenades. back. Just drop them. <laughs> that would be from there. Oh, now, oh that's a great slowly. idea, Drifter. <laughs> Drifter just nailed it. Like, like before we we already talked about this idea, and it just won't work like it's stupid because they can't return fire and if they do what if he gets hurt he crashes you know what if that paintball hits his throttle and it maxes out and now he can't stop and he's trying to figure out some way to stop it that's bullshit that doesn't work but what if we made paintball bombs and they are a thing yes. right like we don't need explosives don't, don't get me wrong but something that when we drop it and it hits the ground from woody's 400 feet of altitude it bounces and goes like like imagine they make those paintball grenades and what they do is they take really small inner tube like smaller than my pinky and they hyper inflate the center portion of it with paint and then they crimp the ends and fold them so when it lands and bounces it comes uncrimped and all that pressure is spent spinning and squirting paint everywhere now imagine we made one that weighed 25 pounds like we're talking about three gallons and Woody's just up there and he flies over the enemy and lets that piece of shit go. Oh, that <laughs> I'm going to be, be like an incompetent With... terrorist, right? Like, You're dude, it's all over his lap. He fucked it up. Strategic <laughs> you know? bomber. Oh, that would be the best. You're up there and we just see like a big green poof. <laughs> <You're just laughs> <developing>. Yeah, I, I don't think I want aren't, any part of it. Aren't those some of the best YouTube videos ever? Like, or I guess not YouTube, Live Leak, where terrorists <laughs> accidentally kill themselves yeah. and their fellow terrorists. We all love where that. they like have a plan and then you're like, Aha, you jackass. There's one where a guy like tries to like pop around the corner in Somalia or wherever the fuck and like is trying to shoot an RPG and he just cranks it right into the building right in front of him. And then he and all of his horrible little friends explode. And it's like, there you go. That's like probably 15 kids and a bunch of women that are going to see another morning because this jackass didn't aim correctly. Seen the one where he's like dropping the mortar rounds into the tube, and 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 uh, and all of a sudden a tank just shoots him. Yeah, they just... <laughs> thought it was a mortar like, round Poof. misfire, but no, it was a tank. Yeah. Tank fucking shoot. Or did you see the guy? The, the best was they caught this guy having sex with a goat, and they blew him up from like an yes. AC one thirty. Yeah, that, 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 that was that was cool. I love. I, I like how he's he's really like not. 
actively engaged in combat or doing anything like hurting people, and they're like, uh, let's just take this guy out. <laughs> Whole half of the mountain. We, we got a goat up. fucker at three o'clock. You know, what's he? What's he doing? What, what's he? What's his mark? That's right. Oh, he's just fucking the goat. You know? <laughs> I mean, should we take him out? Go yeah, let's take it. him out. And you know that that guy heard like the AC one hundred and thirty like rounds oh. landing around him beforehand because they he, they weren't the first people that he shot. There were other people oh. that were getting shot. If I if I'm thinking of the same video, and that guy just kept fucking the goat. If I recall, <laughs> because at that point it's like I, I can't come back baby. from this. Yeah, but you know, we're going out together, babe. There's, yeah. there's, there's almost no way to survive an AC-130. Like, if you're away on the ground, a guy on the ground, I, I thought about this the other day. I could not think of a way to reasonably survive an AC-130. No. no I mean, unless, giant... unless you're just able to jump into a missile silo or down a well. Yeah, but a the cave. Well if, all if you had a cave nearby. No, you'd have to get in the cave, though, because well, they'll yeah. shoot one of those big-ass howitzer rounds like in the mouth of the cave from an angle and suck they, all the fucking they oxygen could maybe out or something. collapse the cave. I would guess yeah, it'd be a they'll partial They'll bury you collapse. alive in there. They're like, like, even if you're in a city, like, into let's a say, cave, like, get guys. under the overpass. I love when they do that. Mm. They went in the cave. Seal them up. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, no, guys. Looks like he found a cave. Oh, yeah, man. We better wait for him to come out. You know? <laughs> no, just yeah, blow the whole cave up. It's hard to deal with that fucking thing. I did you see the new? Um, I don't want to get away from the video, um, but I saw the the Navy's new like high tech destroyer. And I guess the cool thing about this destroyer is it's got four uh, electrical generators that it's powered by. Um, I think it's burning gasoline or something to power them, um, but it's creating an enormous amount of electricity. And the purpose of that extra electricity that they that they've created is for rail and uh, and laser weapons, rail guns and laser weapons. Uh, kinetic rail guns use. Uh, electromagnetism to hyper uh, accelerate projectiles to like Mach 6, six times the speed of uh, sound. It's incredible technology, but it requires a lot, a lot, a lot of electricity. And while the thing is not currently armed with any of those armaments, just seeing it, I saw some video of it going down like a river. Either they're like taking it out to sea or something. It looks so futuristic. It looks a lot like um, the spaceships from Star Wars, but it's, it's on the water. It's, I hope uh, it works. Because I, I, that's always my knock. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, you know, lasers and we have sound-based weapons. It's so futuristic. And then meanwhile, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, you just have to aim the laser at the same spot for 90 seconds. And it gets so hot to the touch that they'll hate it. <laughs> <laughs> they just they, they would not care for that one laser. bit. <laughs> you can ramp them up significantly in power. The railgun's probably the better because that's shooting a, a slug. It's not even that big of a slug. But it's going so fast it just incinerates everything on impact. Just... Nothing stopping that. I think that they have maybe. I know they have a plane-based laser system, and I want to say that it's it's like the plane that they use for the AC-130. Mm -hmm. um, but they just fill that huge cavity of the plane up with the inner workings of a gigantic fucking laser, and I think they use it to shoot down missiles. Yeah, that you're, you're, we're, you're, we probably saw the same thing. They use it to shoot down missiles of most any kind because you normally to intercept a missile you'd have to hit it with something. But with yeah. the laser, you just you just track it, you know, speed of light. Mm -hmm. So you just yeah. warm they, it up. Warm it up. Yeah, it's cool. Let's watch this video. It's called Time to Boot the Armrest Hog. Yes. I am cute at... Uh, yeah. So, Drifter, if you're not familiar with this, we, we put it on zero, and then I'll say one, two, three, and then we'll hit play together. So one, two, three, play. Is everyone ready at zero? No, nope, I'm, I'm on, I'm on advertisements. Okay, I'll wait. Watching no, Ouija, no Origin you. of Evil. All right, ready. Ready, set play. What's up, Facebook? So I'm in a bathroom right now in an airplane, and I have a guy sitting next to me that thinks he owns the armrest. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to try to get some video of me showing that if he wants to tussle with the muscle, he's going to get it. So I'm going to fuck him off. You want to tussle with the muscle? Camera. So watch this. He pretends to be sleeping. Like, this happens as he's asleep. <laughs> 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 He's got his CrossFit t-shirt on. <laughs> I accidentally watched the wrong video because I'm a smart man. <laughs> what a fucking... Yeah, what an asshole. He, he shoves that guy's arm off and he looks bewildered. And then you realize that the guy who shoved his arm off didn't even pretend very well to be asleep because he's like raising his eyebrows, like looking a little peek through his right eye and like, uh -huh. oh, he's staring at me. Okay, still so close, still asleep. I took that arm 
fast, fast. He was he like he, he took it like an like it was an ambush predator. Oh, he he waited for his moment, and there it didn't even come. The other guy was just resting his arm on it, and he's just like boom and takes it. And the guy stares at him like, "Are we about to fight? What is this? Wait, are you asleep? Are you fucking really asleep?" He doesn't know what to do because he thinks that there's a chance that this man has had some sort of a, a sleepy time movement and taken the arm. Rest I'm sorry, I have Clinton's disorder. <laughs> <laughs> And so, like, this is an area where and I know the Jim Jeffries thing. I think we've even had it on the show before. I, I see that Kyle has it. Yeah, we could watch it if you want to. But he is, he, into it. he's like, look, the guy in the window has the window and you can lean there. The guy in the aisle has a little extra space for his legs. The guy in the middle has two armrests because we live in a society. And because Jim Jeffries said it, it suddenly become this, like, truth in places. And, and I don't know what to make of the whole thing. I... I I like to share the armrest, but I've told at least two stories where people didn't want to share the armrest with me. They they seem like armrest bullies, and and like I'm not, I don't like to be bullied. You know, so that's the kind of thing that I'll push back on. And uh, the I, Jim Jeffries is the one that I uh, I, I, I I subscribe to. Mm-hmm. Um, last time I was on a plane, I remember, I think I had the center, and uh, and I was being very. I was like, all right, I don't, I don't, you know. It, Actually, let me just, let me think. No, no, I had the uh, the aisle, and I was mm-hmm. I was allowing her the center uh, seat to take the armrest. You know, I'm sitting politely, and she's like, "You can have the armrest," and I'm like, "No, no, no, the center seat has no has no advantage here. I've got nothing to lean on. You've got nothing to lean on. You got no extra uh, leg space. You can't. You have to ask me to get up to the bathroom. You get both armrests." And she was like, "No, I really don't want them." So I took them, and I felt like a king. I was like, "Ah." <laughs> Oh, now. So yeah. I, I like that, and it seems fair. Uh, the way that I've always worked it, and I'm willing to change, is like almost you choose where you want to be on the armrest and leave something for me. If that means I have to use the you know forward half or the back half or whatever, I'm okay with that. But that was always my, my line of thinking. This guy <laughs> with the armrest supremacy thing kind of made me laugh. If he didn't say tussle with the muscle – People might have liked him more. His dislike ratio is at like 300 to 2,000. I did right not now. expect it to be that bad. Like, I expected him when he was saying, you know, tussle with the muscle in the mm-hmm. bathroom. I thought that was funny. Mm-hmm. And then when he went back, like, I, I, I saw the ratings before I walked, finished watching the video, and I was like, okay, he must, like, really, like, elbow this guy in the nose or something to get him to move because there's no way. And then he just kind of douchily pushed his arm off. And I think that's fine. That guy's in the middle. He deserves that armrest. And you could see. If that guy didn't know that he was in the wrong, the guy who had it stolen from him, taken back justifiably, actually mm-hmm. not stolen, taken back, recaptured, he wouldn't he would have like made a scene or something. Because that guy knows that Blue Shirt is not sleeping. Because Blue Shirt <laughs> nobody sleeps with their hands grasped around and the flexing. end of an armrest. I, I in my yeah. opinion, he's sleeping eye. holding a cell phone, filming himself for Facebook. Like, <laughs> oh my yeah, hold up guys. <laughs> so but the <laughs> It, like, okay, the last time I was in this situation, I was like, you know, I'm taking the back, you take the front, we'll share it. And then, like, I think he, I had to wait till he left, and then I put it there, and he's like, I want the armrest, and I'm like, well, I was here first. He's like, you sound like a child. Then what rules do we apply? Like, like help me out here. I, wait, I he sound said, like a- I want the armrest. And then said, you sounded like a child. He said, like, he, no, he was like, excuse me, like, like I, I he said, I want the armrest. He's like, you know, the, I'm trying to put my elbow here or something like that. And I was like, but I was here first. Like, like well, I don't, do you, tell me what rule set to apply here, and I'm willing to go with it. Wait, but, wait, wait. Which seat are you in? Are you in the middle here? Are I, you on the I, side? I, I, I believe he had the aisle and I had the window, and that was the size of the plane. Oh, okay. Well, then that is more up in the air. I'm not because... sure, though. I, I, I hope I'm not changing my story but yeah I, I think that's what the deal was i think in that situation person on the outside should have to take the uh the, should get the back part of the rest so they can have something to lean on because the person by the window can have the front part and still have the whole window to lean on you know and it's all about leaning real estate on a plane just things that you can balance yourself on to get some sleep and so you need to make sure that guy in the aisle gets that back spot so he can kind of brace himself and on the window, you're already in the best spot. You can sleep against the side of the plane. That's my my two cents. In my opinion, the guy that was kind of wronged here, you know, the one that had like really spread out and taken the armrest, what gives him the right? Like, why was it his so much in the beginning? Like, he's looking like you really just did something to me, and I guess he did. He pushed his arm, 
But I, I also see where tussle with the muscle dude is coming from. Because, like, why do I have to do this? It, it, I... I don't know the yeah. rules. There should be rules. Depends what do you do on a flight? Anybody, anybody can sit like this for a 45-minute flight. But if you're going overseas, it makes a much, much bigger difference. And you, you've flown a lot, so I'm sure you've had some interesting uh, people. I've sat next to a gay tank commander that was very touchy and liked to spill into my space. Um, uh, one of the more, more recent flights, I sat next to a morbidly obese woman that had like an entire buffet in her bag of three different fast foods. And then when that was gone, she started eating paper. She ate paper? Like from the fast food or just, you know? No, it was from the straw. She put the whole straw in her mouth with paper and everything and just, like, licked it up and, like, and shoot it up and ate it and just put the rest of it in the drink and stirred it up so you got paper flakes floating around. And I'm just sitting there like, yeah, this is perfectly normal. I'm just going to read my book, you know? You and I were on a flight together where we had a 15-year-old helicopter pilot named Dylan. Yes, I remember that. That was one of my more intelligent decisions. You know what? He flew pretty well, I thought. Yeah. Did you c- come with me on the cab there with the crazy cab driver that was yelling at people on the way? It was right when I was starting to get into Uber. I and if remember. I remember this correctly, the cab driver put his arm Dylan. and his head out to scream at somebody in the traffic. And then on the way back, me and you and everybody were like, no, 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 no. We're just, we're just going to do Uber. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I, I, like, you, like you said, that was one of my more intelligence. It's weird. At 15... You wouldn't want a 15-year-old pilot, and I feel like that doubles down for helicopter, right? He was literally yes. too young to get his license. Right? He's too young to get a helicopter pilot's license. He had to be 16. But he also had, like, 350 hours. And I'm telling you, like, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not a helicopter pilot. <laughs> but it seemed like everything that happened, he meant to happen. Like, th- there was no moment. The instructor never recovered anything. Uh, he gave him some tips. It was a new helicopter to him, so he would tell him, like, what RPM and something. <clears> this. <throat> I don't know any better. But he, he was giving him some, like, what I thought were machine-specific instructions. But, I, shit, I don't know. They did not, there was no close calls on it. It all seemed to be just what he meant to do. Do you agree? They were talking about doing loop-de-loops, and we are like, yeah, nah, let's not. <laughs> Yeah. What was the uh, what was your cab driver screaming about? Because I like bad transportation stories. Was he yelling at like a, a passerby? It was Maybe? traffic. It was traffic because we had to go up to a regional airport, and he was just all over the road. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, somebody cut him off, and he started screaming at them by sticking his head out and yelling at them. That's why I do Uber. I, I get 99% of the time I get good Uber drivers. Very rarely do I get a. Uh, Get bad ones. I did I have a question. dude up in. Uh, he got high. I had a high Uber driver that didn't know where he was. Oh, that's that's horrible. Oh God, you're like <laughs> that's not what like, you this want. That's why I called you. No, he has. He said, no, when he picked me up, he says, "Dude, what city are we in?" <laughs> and this is after you know I've sat in the car and like ten feet along the way, and it, we're sitting there and, like we have to turn off on the highway, right? And he's got his GPS going, and it says. Take a right on exit, blah, blah, blah. And it's not one of the small exits. It's painfully obvious, like Midwest, huge-ass turn lane. It's coming up. Okay. Take a right on blah, blah, blah. Okay. Take a right on blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, the exit's right there. He's like, oh, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it was probably one of my few bad Uber experiences. Did, right? did, he tell, get... did he come out and say, oh, man, I'm sorry, I'm high, I shouldn't be Ubering right now? No. <laughs> you just kind of figured it out or got him to admit it? I, I, that's kind of the impression that I got. Huh. Drifted. Yeah, that's not what you want in a in any kind of driver. Mm-mm. No. On your channel, Drifter. So, yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to say you started, but, it, but my, at least my introduction to you was you did Call of Duty Analysis. Mm -hmm. more professionally than other people like uh, other people did it first my first video back in like 2009 was call duty analysis but you took it to another level and you better um uh, production value and research and stuff then you got into league i think right and did a bunch yes i was into league of legends for a little bit i got out of that recently replaced it with overwatch i saw that um is it because the league community i'm told more toxic than cod Hard to believe. Toxic in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, they Call of Duty. I would say is a bunch of like angry dude bros in a locker room. Okay. Like uh, too many guys and not enough girls. The League of Legends community is like a cutthroat competition to the top because the game 
you have your normal matches, but then you have ranked. And the way to become a professional League of Legends player is you play their game. You just get online and click ranked, and you go all the way up to the very top. And once you're at the top, a pro team will recruit you. Like, you will be officially a pro player, and there's no, there's not like wow. Call of Duty where you need to know somebody. There's no that's nothing. There's just. Cool. Wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's so cool. I did not know that. I had no I idea. Like that. That's really. All right, very, let me ask you this based. because this is really important. If okay. you are a professional League of Legends player, like you're, you're, you're the man. How much you, sure. how much you bring in down? Let's say you can stream. Uh, probably, and... I would say if you're, if you're, if you're bottom end of professional, yeah. probably closer to like three hundred k, four hundred. Uh, <laughs> near the near the top end, you can probably get closer to maybe a little under ten million. That's that's a, a outrageous. Ten million like, dollars do. a year. It's I the biggest there was a, on the zero planet. Less. I would have like, taken they, a zero off all of those numbers if I were guessing. That's shocking. They, they fill out like Madison Square Garden. They used the Olympic Stadium in Korea and had like 400,000 people watching in person. Yeah, if you're in the that, top, you can have really good. ridiculous stuff. Why did you get but, out of it? Well, um, it was not a good habit. I played the game a lot more than I should have. Uh, I think in a couple of ways it hurt my video quality because I was focusing on League of Legends and not Call of Duty. I uh, spent a lot of time on it. The matches are very long. A League of Legends match is 30 minutes to an hour. And you cannot quit or you will get banned like for significant periods of time. And that's one of the reasons it's so toxic. Like, like so, Let's say you're doing a ranked game uh -huh. where every step is just another step up toward that $10 million paycheck, right? And you get put in there with a bunch of fucking idiots and you're stuck with them for an hour. And if you quit, you get banned for a week. That creates a lot of toxicity. Hmm. I can imagine. So, were you ever in the pro rank? No, 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 no. I was. Uh, I was at the bottom. So they did uh, bronze, silver, gold, diamond, and then they have, have like master and challenger, as exponential all the way. And I, the best I ever hit was low gold, which would be like maybe average. And really? only the challengers at the top are the pros. Yeah, yeah, and that would be like the the challenger. I think is top point oh oh one percent out of like. 60 million players. Shit. That's a lot of people. Is there cheating? Yes. Mm. So they got to find cheat. that out pretty quick, though, if the game that popular and that much money on the line, right? It's not as it's not like COD where you aimbot people, uh, but there is bits of cheating. The ban hammer is really strong, and the anti-cheating tools are strong. So at least at my ELO, I almost never ran into it. It's not as big of a problem, but... No, League of Legends was, was crazy like that, and yes, very toxic. But I moved on uh, to Overwatch, which is very similar to League of Legends, but in a first-person point of view. It's, you got, you, it's a shooter, you've all got a lot of abilities and crazy moves and stuff, but it plays a lot like League, but first-person. Hmm. And it's a much more positive game than League of Legends. The whole community was built around positivity. Uh, all the characters complement each other before the match instead of talking shit. And Blizzard did a brilliant thing marketing the game because instead of just giving the keys to like the top streamers, they gave it to people on DeviantArt and Tumblr and like cosplayers and like a, a large number of females and artists that maybe not even really played games and got them into it. So it started with this big like base of positivity. So it's that's been really good for me. Hmm. Huh. It's good. Now, it, sounds, it sounds like you're really into a, a gaming environment that, that has women into it. It's rare. Like, think of a think of a fast-paced first-person shooter you've played to where when you get on, there's a 50-50 chance that there's going to be a woman on the mic. 50-50 is no, a the, lot, the but the only I will times... say this. Left 4 Dead had a lot of girls. Hmm, surprising. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I've only played it a little it bit, but, but that was like, it seemed like there was always a girl. Yeah, Left 4 Dead had so many girls, and I then went like to college. You know, it's a community game, right? Though, right? So I think you've got bands of friends, and often those incorporate a girl, and so they're just. I know we always sense. had two, uh, like a girl or two that played with us that <clears throat> that was good. You know, yeah. I would never play with a girl who wasn't fucking good at Call of Duty. Um, that's that's one thing I will say for sure. Like 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 I found that disgusting. Someone was like, "Oh yeah, that's uh, that's Steve's friend. She uh, she's she's new." I'd be like, yeah. well, "Well, then she can't fucking play." She can't fucking play in our like top tier masters level group we got going on here where we're pub stomping so fucking hard our eyes are bleeding. Like we're going for <laughs> win streak, motherfucker. What if we run into another full party? Like there's I there's know the girl That's true. You there. would be sexist if you let her play just because she's a girl. I know the yeah, girlfriend that Kyle's talking about. And by the way, I mean like girlfriend, not like the romantic kind. And uh, she pulled host a lot. That girl had like fifty both ways back when that was godly. You know, yeah. other people have three. She was she pulled a lot of host. 
yeah, that helped a lot. Yeah, but the, uh, talking about gaming, there's a lot of good games that come out. Uh, you've got Modern Warfare Remastered coming. You've got New COD comes every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got Battlefield, which is better mm-hmm. this year than it has been for like the last three sequels. Uh, yeah. Then uh, Overwatch is still relatively new for me. I enjoy it. On top of that, you have Titanfall 2 launching, another shooter. Counter Strike is bigger than ever, and you've got I've got PSVR over here that I've been playing with because it's easier to set up than the Vive or the Rift or anything, and a bunch of games for that. So it's been a pretty awesome year for gaming. And yet you have forgotten the biggest release of the year, Civilization VI, which comes out in two hours and 45 minutes. Nah, not for me. It's Oh, I'm so into it. I got it preloaded. I'm ready to roll. I can't get Uh, back into that. I did that back in the day, like Civ 1 and 2. But that's those kind of games I just know are bad for me because they're good and addictive. And I would just sit here for like 18 hours and play Civ. And And it's always one more turn. Like, oh, I can just do one more turn. It's I, I can stop at any time because it's not a live action game. I can step away. Right? But you no, don't. It's easy. You just keep going. Well, I'll just wait till I get, you know, my, my stealth bomber. Then I'll step aside. Well, may as well just go for the science victory now. Who cares if it's another two hours away? Like, yeah. I'm gonna, it's going to be fun tonight. Bomber. We're, we're going to play some multiplayer, I think, as long as the multiplayer lobbies will hold us. Uh, play like a maybe a six person free for all or something. So it's going to be like a three or four hour game, I would estimate. I'm going to be super aggressive. Uh, this, this Civ has a. Um, it, it's fucked. The Civ 6 is fucked up. Like, none of the streamers who have pre access to it want to admit it because they've been treated very nicely by Firaxis. Um, they're certainly not lying. Uh, Filthy's not lying. He's not saying anything that isn't 100% true. But he, I feel like he dances around it a bit. He, they're like, what do you like most about Civ 6 over Civ 5? And he's like, well, there's a lot of new civilizations to play as. Yeah. Got all- <laughs> and it's just like, well, yeah, there's a lot of new civs, but but what do you like game mechanic or user interface wise that's new and different? What what gameplay aspects that have been added? How what about zone of control and combat? What what about those uh, d- uh, changes? Do you like all that? What about the artwork? Yeah. I don't think they do. Um, Scythia, Scythia, whatever her fucking name name is, the Scythian Empire is going to be so overpowered for multiplayer play. Um, usually there are good military civs in 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 uh, Civilization Germany and Civ is very strong. They get an extra hammer per horse, iron, and resources like that, strategic resources. They get one extra hammer. It's a huge deal. In Civ VI, Scythia gets double military units in the early game. So when she builds one, it builds two instead. It, it builds two instead. She gets a so double. So she's going to be able to Zerg rush people in Civ. Even better. Even better than a Zerg rush. Because with a Zerg rush, you know, you, they're just pawns, right? They're, it doesn't matter as they evaporate in, in, on the front lines. This time around, they also get another bonus where after every, I think every time they kill an enemy, uh, they heal 50 uh, hit points, which is there. a massive heal civilization. Um, it, it's so what's a, her weakness then? What? There, there isn't. Well, I mean, all right, so she certainly gives up ground. Not a good temperament. Yeah. Scientific. Uh, she's not as good at science. She's not as good at, as good at culture. She's not good at a lot of things. But taking three extra cities right off the start is the best way to win the game, right? She can just eat a city-state and, and own its lands with no penalty very, very early game. You know, <clears throat> you skipped over the turns. biggest thing, I feel like. Pardon? So I, I, I'm trying to jump into it. When we talked to Filthy, the thing that I thought was the biggest advantage of Civ 6 over 5 was that they care about multiplayer and you can expect the stability and bugs to be fixed. You pretty much couldn't play a Civ 5 game without it crapping out on you. And I know you figured out some secret sauce on how to recover that and saves and things. So the deal is this now. They haven't mm-hmm. fixed those bugs. I saw them having connectivity issues today, oh, no. uh, playing, trying to play like three-player matches. Uh, all the menus look identical. Chiz mm-hmm. was really disappointed with that. I haven't opened the game yet. This game comes out in two, two hours and 45 minutes, but we're seeing someone with the full game. Um, and the multiplayer menu looks identical and doesn't let there's matchmaking or ranked, which is what we all want, because... If you put 1,700 hours in a game, into a game, you kind of want a badge that, that proves it, right? You mm-hmm. want to show that you win 80% of the time or whatever it may be. You want to quantify how good you are. Do you want to play ranked right off the bat? Like, don't you want to yeah. play it a bit? No, I want to get in there and fight. Like, like they're no better than mm-hmm. me. I've watched all the videos. I've played more Civ Five than most. I'm going to be as good at Civ Six from the start as anybody is. I mean, I've, I wa- I've probably watched 20, 20 you did hours beat of... Filthy. I did beat Filthy. Um, but there's probably 20, uh, 20 hours of Civ 6 content that I've watched already. I kind of know how to play for the most part. So really excited for it. But multiplayer shit again. We will have to rely on the modding community. I think I think that's really tentative. I haven't even played the game yet. But, I, but from what I've seen in his stream of him playing the game, 
they were having connectivity issue, and then um, the auto unit selection, you have to go in the back end to disable it somehow. Like, you have to go into the... Uh, How can they launch games in this state? And I feel like this not just happens with Civ, but I talk about all these great games. Even some of the best games launch with some of the craziest, dumbest bugs that I have ever seen, or like, giant multiplayer game comes out today, servers die immediately. Yeah. <laughs> That's not just bugs, though, right? That's capacity, typically. Yeah, like, there's a lot of things. They're just not it's ready still, for the spike. They probably don't want to spend for it, right? Probably they're like, look, after the first week, this game is going to have 100,000 people online all the time. But the first day, it'll be a million. Do we really spend 10 times as much on infrastructure as we need to support day one? Or do we let them suffer for the first 12 hours? That sounds so, like, I... It's because you have a background in this kind of stuff, but that, as a layman, that never crossed my mind. Is like if they were prepared for that big rush, they'd basically build, be building, you know, a, a gigantic stadium for all the people like in Pokemon <laughs> Go who came out the first week mm -hmm. and then will never open it Yo, again. I'm still playing Pokemon Go. I'm still catching them. <laughs> I have not played in months at this well, point. Well, you gotta catch them all. Not yeah. back into it, but Dude, it's a it's yeah, fun. For, it's a social it's a game point. for me. Like so, my wife plays Pokemon. And we'll just go out and take walks and catch Pokemon together. It's more yeah. of a social, fun exploration. I played a lot of Pokemon kind of when it first came out. I, it got old to me because there wasn't any multiplayer functionality that I found rewarding. Um, so I, so I kind of got out of that. When Pokemon Go came out, I was like the guy who didn't like Pokemon yeah. Go. <laughs> and uh, I, I still don't. But what I do like is giving my kid my phone and driving around in the golf cart. And there's no Pokemon by my house. I guess it's just not densely populated enough. But if we mm. go to the nearby neighborhood, he can start catching them. And, uh, and you know, Colin gets excited when he catches one he hadn't caught before. And, you know, he's, he's gotten to the point where he's like, Rattata, keep driving. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, isn't it sad? As I did the same thing at a park. All these kids came by, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm, and the other kids are like, oh, I don't want to catch Rattata again. It's I, not good when you got like kids saying that. I don't even know. Yeah. To me, I'm like, catch it. He's right here, right? You can turn him into candy or something. I don't really know. The and by the way, is well, my but... camera freezing? It's freezing on my end. It is. It's it's periodically. Uh, it is. I went to way too like I, I okay. ruined the game for myself because I treated it like I was a day laborer at a sweatshop and my hands were going to be cut off if I didn't catch enough pidgeys that day because I started off that game like I got to level 25 in like two weeks, which yeah, doesn't sound like good. a lot, but I got, it. I went fast because it I was, was all just I'm going to catch every Pidgey I come across I'm going to catch every Rattata I'm going to catch every Pokemon I see get all the XP and then evolve with the little double XP egg and then by the time I got to like a high enough level where I was throwing like ultra balls at Pidgeys mm -hmm. and they were just you know resting out of them with no worries whatsoever I was like this is bullshit I've pretty much cornered myself in this game so that now through nobody's fault but my own I have leveled to the point that even the worst Pokemon is so difficult to catch that this is not fun yeah. like man, and there's you, like, you went had so hard at Pokemon like I I felt like I was playing too much I felt like I was making grocery trips and gas station visits that weren't required. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was getting up. I, I would wake up early, but it wasn't like I was up. It was like, oh, oh, I kind of woke up here at like 5.30 a.m. I'm not up for the day, but I could go out and get breakfast. And yeah, on the yeah. way, I could catch some Pokemon, and I would. And I, I was shocked every time we'd compare our Pokedex, and he was so far ahead of me. Like I was 20, or I was 18, and he's 22. I'm 21 and he's 25, and it's like exponentially uh, harder. Yeah, you ruined it for yourself. Uh, I did. I went a little hard on like the first couple days, and then slowed down, and it's been a lot more fun. Yeah, I get. Yep, that's what I should have done. I did the same thing with Skyrim. Like every time I want to jump back oh, into a character yeah. for Skyrim now, I can't think of anything other than uh, if I start this new character, I know that I have to spend seven hours making iron daggers to get my armor level to the right thing, ding, and ding, I am just ding. not willing to put all that ding, time in. Ding, ding. Exactly, and then oh, I guess I got to make quite a few leather bracers too. So uh, those grindy things I don't like. Even though I like Pokemon Go, I think just because it gets me outside. I have, a, I, have a, I have a hoverboard Segway, so I just scoot around. I'm that guy in the neighborhood hatching <laughs> eggs and catching them. Uh, but those grindy Ooh, games yeah. just drive me bananas. That's why I couldn't do Destiny. I just couldn't do the same raid over and over and over and over to get the light emotes and stuff. It those just was daggers. not fun. I made so I, like I maxed it out. I maxed the armor skill out by making those daggers. It's the most for those listening who don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Like in, in this game, if you want you to have master level 
uh, iron working skills uh, or armor skills, I think maybe it is. So you can make the pimpest of pimp armors in the game. You have to get to level 100 at that skill. And the most efficient way to do so is by making iron daggers because the require requirement for making an iron dagger is very low compared to the reward of XP that you get per iron dagger. It's much better than making a bunch of curuses, for example, which cost a yes. lot of iron and get another shit. So you're just sitting there for hours, tink, 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 making these things, and literally hours of just clicking a button over and over until you can make some yeah, fancy And basically trying to find supplies. I did the, the, first, I, the first character I made, That's I didn't even terrible. finish. I just gave up off the first character because I was like, well, that was the character that I killed every blacksmith in Skyrim because I didn't know they wouldn't come back. <laughs> and so trying back. to upgrade my armor was literally me going out like a working Joe trying to find iron in them hills so I could get iron and then go smelt it into an ingot and then oh. take that ingot and make a shitty little dagger <laughs> with you a could, modicum of XP. You could make a real iron dagger from scratch faster yes. than that takes. That did, you guys, did you guys ever play Oblivion? Do you remember how you could oh, yeah, level hours. up from sprint? But you could also level up from jumping, so your first couple hours just bonk, bonk. Oh, I, I got oh. that beat, my friend. I took rubber bands and put them on my controller so that I was always swimming in a circle. Put that guy in a lake and left the thing running for days. When I came <laughs> back, I had Lance Armstrong yes. for a character. He was like, you did the rubber band thing, uh, you sneak while somebody's asleep, yep, and it still gives you the points. So you just walk into the wall for like an hour and a half, two hours, you get okay. maximum sneak. You could also yeah, max out your illusion magic if you just did uh, illuminate in the middle of a field, where you just go, fring. Yep. Fring, if, if, if anyone fring, in illuminating nothing but getting XP. I yeah, played yeah. Skyrim way differently than you guys, and, and I really <laughs> enjoyed it. I went in a straight line, I killed the main dragon, and then I won. And I'm like, what is wrong with you people? Like, I beat the game. There are other ways to do it that are fun, because, like, the what? grinding was not fun, <laughs> but I, I, did we'll the way, I, did it, I did it the way Woody did it. And that was fun. I did it that way, but it was also fun when I did every other side quest and then at the very end did the main quest because you're basically just a god among men at that point, like summoning wizards and, and skull demons as they're like, you know, you're getting like the little prompt from the character like, oh, I'm Balgruff. Be careful. This one has a knife. And you're standing there with like flames coming off your shoulders because you are, you are you're like already like, sir, do you know that I'm the president of the Assassin's Guild? I'm the chief thief in this realm. And I'm also the president president of the college of winterhold you know do you know who you're talking to at this point like you've been to the underworld at this point and killed great uh daedric princes and shit and collected their souls but this random thief is like trying to muscle in on your territory i, I haven't it. done He's any of that shit but i like the game I, I i beat the main i would i killed those dragons <laughs> with like a bow i think maybe <laughs> yeah and it's uh, a fun game yeah, it's yeah, great. It's great. And, 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 and then uh, after it, like some live it's, streaming, it's, right? Like tens of ten thousand people are like, "Oh, you gotta go do this. You gotta do that." Like, why would I? I already won. Like, I, I <laughs> I'm the best Skyrim player to have ever Skyrim. You guys spend a lot of time, and I want it quicker. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, unfortunately, right. it's about time for me to bounce. I've got a dinner engagement that I'm a little bit late to, but thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming by, man. Thanks for coming on, man. Anytime. All right, y'all have a good rest of the show. Check where can people out. find you? Oh, oh yeah, tell us where to uh, find you. YouTube.com slash Drifter if you want to see Call of Duty, Battlefield, Overwatch, a bunch of different shooters, analysis, occasional political opinion, live streams, and fat dogs. Very All nice. Right. You can do a Sounds lot great. of uh, Modern Warfare Mastered. Yes, and playing very well. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan, so yeah, we really are. excited for Modern Warfare Remastered. Do you want to break out my tiny little scorpion and go pellet yeah. people to death? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, that will be fun. Thanks. All right, let me All right, tell everyone for coming on, bit, man. Good to see you. Let me tell everyone a little bit about me undies as Drifter leaves us. Uh, you wear underwear every day. That's 365 days a year, rain or shine. You need it to be extraordinary without an insane price tag. Me undies understands this, and that's why they've created the world's most comfortable underwear, luxury at half the retail price you'd find anywhere else. Me undies is made from Modal, a fabric that's twice as soft as cotton. That's twice as soft as whatever you're wearing right now. Most of us wear underwear every day, so why settle for low quality multi pack underwear that is scratchy and lame? Me undies has tons of colors and styles for both men and women, which means you and your lady can finally have matching underwear. They release a new design every month and on top of that they even offer free shipping to the united states and canada me undies has a money back guarantee so if you don't love your first pair you get to keep it for free that's right they don't want your used underwear back so you have nothing to lose here the best part about all of this i think 
is that they're offering 20% off their first order when you use URL meundies.com slash PKA. So click the link in the description or go to meundies.com slash PKA to get 20% off your first order at MeUndies. You won't regret it. Yeah, get yourself some me undies. Treat your genitals to that. At the very least, you you beat them too often, and they don't get the home they deserve. It'll be that pair of underwear that every time you see them come out of the dryer, you're like, yeah, it's gonna be a good day today. We're starting off on a, on the right foot. That's how I feel. Yep. Put on a pair of hot me undies. Me undies. So actually I wanted better. to I wanted to bring up Halloween, mm. um, since that is coming up. Ooh. Last year, I know you guys didn't get too. Dressed, uh, Kyle was a priest, if I recall, and Woody was a lumberjack. Is that the right? The brawny man. The yeah, brawny we, man. That's we what, all that was, that was pretty close. Low, we went very low effort last year. <laughs> yes, we did. Low effort. So this year, Melissa and I were trying to think of something good because she gets very, very into it. And what we decided on is I'm going to be Ramsey Bolton, and she is going to be Reek. And I'm going to, I guess, be dragging her around this big fest. They have like a big... Uh, in Central West End in St. Louis, they have a huge, huge Halloween party where thousands of people go and walk around the streets in this area, and they have big costume uh, contests and a bunch of Bud Light tents and all that shit. And last year we went as the zombie things, and everybody was like, oh, man, that, that's really good. And But there was a ton of great shit there. It wasn't just low-effort costumes, very high-effort, like, professional-looking stuff. So the plan is to get me all decked out. I'm not going to shave, so I'm going to be bearded, Ramsey. Don't fucking care. I'm going to have my cape, all of that. She is going to be in her tattered rags and carrying around a flayed man banner. And then we found some like plastic chain links that I can hold like a leash almost as I pull her around as I'm cruel Ramsey all night. First impressions. I like it a lot. Kinky. I like it a lot. I like, I like tandem <laughs> costumes. My, mm -hmm. one, one that I have always wanted to do is, and that's why I had the priest costume, I always want to be the priest and then have, an altar, have my girlfriend be an altar boy. <laughs> uh, I always thought that would be hilarious. Haven't ever uh, pulled that one off. And, uh, but, but I like tandem costumes, so I'm definitely on board. I, when I see a oh. guy with a girl on a chain leash, I instantly think it's a BS, BSDM. Am I saying it Yeah, right? that's it. Oh, yeah, that's it. I feel mm -hmm. like you're pulling my leg. What is it really? I am. Sadomasochism. It's, BSDM. Th nope. Sh uh, tell me out. BDSM. BDSM? Okay. But this is a quick way to remember it. Um, <laughs> Bonded <laughs> something sadomasochism. <laughs> bon what's the D? Bondage. That's sadomasochism. Oh, no, D is... is uh, well, shit. What is it? Oh, domi domination? Dominate? Ah, that Dominate? makes sense. Whatever. Makes but sense. Um, another thing she's going to do is... You know the box that has Theon's cock in it that shows up at um, Theon's dad's house, basically? Yeah. Um, she's going to make one of those. She's going to make a cock box, mm. and then out of her like professional makeup supplies of latex and shit, she's going to make uh, a rotten-looking like black and purple and green like rotted dick for that That's box. That's great. And that'll be... That'd be pretty fun. I don't know how to it's carry it off all box. night long, but the idea of sausage on a fork that you could bite from uh, is attractive to me. We were thinking about that, but I, I don't want to be carrying around food sausage, all night. Right? Yeah, I don't want to be carrying around really sausage. Yucky. And it's yeah. not as I, I looked at bow and arrows on the internet today trying to find one, and it is there is no middle ground between complete toy bow and arrow that's this long and shoots a little suction cup mm -hmm. and... Four hundred dollars, eighty pound compound string. Like, there's like no middle ground. I'm trying to find like a reasonably sized bow and arrow that looks okay to carry around as Ramsey. And the minimum of like the the least acceptable ones are like eighty bucks that I'd have to spend. That, and that, it's like at this point, I'm not an archer. I will get no use from this at any point. If I become an archer, I'm gonna buy something better than this. I have the eighty dollar bow uh, that, that that you'd need, and you wouldn't want it afterwards. Like, yeah. I, <laughs> it's it's a child's bow, and it shoots the arrows so weakly that sometimes it bounces off those little like hay target things. Yeah, like, like we bought the target too, and and uh, it's just like this really sucks. Like you you have to get something better if you want to shoot it. Well, you, yeah. it the bow that you need is the Micmac bow. The Micmac bow. Now, does yeah. that look like Ramsey's bow at all? Exactly like Ramsey's bow. It's um, it, it's what Ramsey's bow is based on. It's um, like a Canadian tribal bow. M I C M A C. Micmac. The Micmac 
you'll immediately recognize the uh, the sort of the sort of double bow ah, yes. aspect of it. How much is a Micmac bow? Well, you have to have some sort of primitive archer make you one. You know, I don't think they like sell these as <laughs> Dick's Sporting Goods. So you'd have to find old Forrest Joe who like makes these things out of a solid piece of you or some shit. I think isn't that what an English bow would be out of? Anyway, you, yes. Yeah. Um. It, I don't think you're going to be able to get a Micmac in time for Halloween. No. You need I don't that primitive so. survivalist guy on on YouTube to make you one. Man, that guy is impressive. I watched his sling video the other day. And I expected him, and it's like cut after cut after cut of him like launching it. So you yeah. don't have to wait around for him to do stuff. And I was like, okay, there'll be 10 attempts, 20 attempts, 30 attempts. No, there's like 80 attempts until you see him getting good. And then you, yeah. see, you see him getting better. And then you see him getting kind of good. And then at the end, you're like, he did this until he was good enough to actually kill something with it. Because at the end, he'll be using his homemade bow to shoot a target. Um, that's like chest size from 25 yards or something, and the, the arrows are sticking in, or the 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 the, sl- the rocks from the sling are hitting uh, whatever his target it's like was. Pottery and it's or bursting. something. Yeah, I yeah. think he like, he like at one point he like stood up like a half dead log, and it was he was like pegging that every time. But that's really like, you're totally right because you can notice in the videos like it starts out you know high noon the sun is up there, and then by the time he's throw in the last sling you can tell like hours have gone by of him just out in the woods trying this shit he and brave wilderness those are my two favorite youtube channels right now i would Every like to talk to that guy we should we should try to get on that the primitive technology guy the one who doesn't speak he's wearing just like shorts and that's it um and he's out there i believe if he's filming his own stuff i have an enormous amount of respect for him mm. if he doesn't have like his girlfriend his wife his fellow survivalist friend out there setting up cameras for him then he is on another level because not only is he doing an incredible job at what he's creating with like making the kiln making the shelters making the tools himself like he he chops down these the the wood he the tree he chopped down to make that bow by hand was chopped down with an axe that he also made by hand by hand you know yeah. he doesn't start with a saw he starts with his fucking fingernails and he breaks something He's down. He's playing real life cool Minecraft. Pump. Like step yeah. one, punch a tree <laughs> until yeah. it falls down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's shit like that. You know, you'll see him chopping the trees down with his primitive stone axe and stuff like that. And so, but it, then his filming is excellent. It's very, very good. It's 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 better than what we saw from Les Stroud. Yeah, it's better than that. It's better than more a cuts, lot of more all those survival angle. TV shows. Like I would argue that it's it might be. It might be better than uh, Bear Grylls. Yeah, it's because enormously it more crew. substantive. I, now, hang on. It's enormously more substantive than Bear Grylls, but it's it, it, it can't compete with his entertainment value across a broad audience. It just can't he's yeah, because all, like, he doesn't flash, and, you know, he's all flashing. Yeah, he's flashing. That's subjective. I don't know. I, I am engaged and riveted it by is, primitive technology, is. whereas Bear Grylls, I'm just critical and... Angry. It absolutely is subjective, but but what I'm saying is that a larger audience, like I agree with you, I think this guy on YouTube is what's educational and substantive. Like when you watch that shit, you get a sense of what it really takes to do the things. You see his hands in the mud, making like score scoring clay to make it, you know, uh, to punch the holes for his kiln. And when that kiln was done, I expected it to be kind of half-assed. It, it 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 the flames were coming through those holes. Roaring. With like, it was roaring. Like a furnace, and which is what a kiln is. I and I, I just if he has many efforts that end up on the cutting room floor, because that would impress me too. If like like if he made a kiln and was like, all right, this is my first effort, but I don't put shit on my YouTube channel. I put gold on it, so I'm gonna do this all again tomorrow, but learn from this one that no one will ever see. I uh, yeah. I read his WordPress because he has like a WordPress website up that kind of mm-hmm. gives like a brief synopsis of what he's doing. Like really, his only point seems to be like, hey. I'm just sharing my hobby with you guys, and this is a really fun hobby. You should look into survivalist survivalism yourself. And I think he's like, monetized. I he better fucking be because he's making he's got like, a, like 200 million views on his channel. I saw a comment the other day. They're like, "Dude, you gotta monetize this. You've already lost hundreds of thousands of dollars." That was the comment, and um, I just thought to myself, like, maybe he's got a store or something like that. Like, I don't know anything about the guy, mm-hmm. but if what would he sell? <laughs> Outdoor supplies, survivalist things, right? Like that's things what he, he doesn't to use. <laughs> yeah, like, here's a knife. I don't if you use it, it you're a sissy. You, it'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even catch on your little joke at first. It's like, what the fuck would he sell? He said, 
I guess his videos. That's what he needs. He, he can needs sell those shorts because that's about. But, he's like shirtless in what, the woods, right? Here's a he belt does, and some shorts. What he does well in like the filming of it to go back to that for a sec is like yeah. he'll show like I'm gonna make an atlatl or however you say that that like um as a spear thrower. Ah, uh, yeah. From ancient civilizations, where like you yeah. have the the like stick. That comes back almost like a thrower, almost like a lacrosse stick or something. The and then in the, in the like nook of it, you, you throw a spear. And he didn't just show, like, this is me shaving this. It shows him, like, good shots of where he clearly had to go put the camera, aim it at a tree when he's like, that's the tree I'm going to use. And then he makes, like, 50 edits of him showing, like, first slice, little bit comes off. So then it's close up. Second slice shows him, like, cutting exactly where he's cutting. Like, it's actually descriptive and showing you what you would need to do. Like, it doesn't help as far as, like, what the fuck kind of tree is that? I don't know. I'm not a survival. He's in Australia. He's in Australia. Uh, well, he? then it's not helpful as much as I thought. No, I've also, I have read somewhere where they were, they were like, just keep in mind that anything and everything he does um, is Australia-specific sometimes. I, I guess I didn't say that right. That some things that he does are Australia-specific as far as what he's doing. That but thing, like, he's got a stick that helps throw spears, which are, of course, just more sticks. And you'd think that would be an easy project, but there was a lot that went into stick throwing mm -hmm. sticks. Like, I'm very impressed by that guy. He makes amazing videos. That was one of the most early, early weapons that, that humans came up with. I think the first one was the sling. Um, I know in Civ Six, that's the first one you get. You, you just start out and you can use this. You can you can make a slinger. But um, I, I think that that at at thing was one of the really early uh, weapons that man had. You can it really was. chunk it hard. I've used one before. You fucking fling those things. Really? Um, they I think the atlatl was like the big thing in a lot of areas of the world until some guy came around and was like, dude, this bow and arrow is pretty dope. And they're like, yeah, you're My right. My friend had better. a modern one. He had a modern one that was all like, like I don't know, fiberglass and I, plastic and shit. And we were just slinging these darts so hard that I was thinking, really with practice like instead. Taylor's like 10,000 BC lingo. Like, dude, this new yeah. bow is dope. You, you should check <laughs> hey, me out, how, how are you guys in this tribe? How are you guys throwing your sticks? Well, we have these atlatl. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. Didn't mean to laugh at you guys. But the tribe across the ridge, the Borgs. Yeah, the Borgs. <laughs> I know your rivals. They have this thing, a bow and arrow, and oh, a door to door, cave to cave, bow and arrow salesman. That was probably the first entrepreneur. He figured it out, <laughs> went around, spread the wealth. That first the first entrepreneur was, was like a prostitute. Yes, you like sex? She can do sex. <laughs> it took chimps like half a day to start prostituting themselves once the concept of currency was introduced to them. Yep. Like once you showed chimps, hey, this little token right here, you can put this in this machine and grapes or strawberries or fruit will fall out. Here's a bunch of money for all you apes. Let's see what happens. Immediately almost, female monkeys started prostituting themselves for grape coins and like <laughs> strawberry uh, yeah. waivers and whatnot. And it's like, wow, that really is the world's oldest profession. Like that's exactly they. Then they, they started monkeys. complaining that the females weren't getting as many grape tokens as the men for an equal amount of sex, and there was a whole meltdown. Ah, yep. the first wage wedge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first wave feminism. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a really interesting study. I, I know that Taylor is a big fan of monkeys. I want to get a monkey involved in the show because his passion for monkeys fires me up. I want to see his eyes light up when he like gets a monkey and when we get a if we get a monkey involved with something here. Can yeah. we get a monkey? Ship Woody a monkey to have him send to me. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> He'll be here forever. You see, there'll be a, a footage of me opening a window and throwing the chip out. <laughs> I'll just get a, a smelly box that's not moving. <laughs> uh, it definitely used to be a monkey. <laughs> Couldn't quite outsmart your way out of this box, could you? You know, Bobo. <laughs> Bobo. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I do like monkeys a lot. If one of you guys had a monkey, I would be more jealous about it because I'd be like, well, this sucks. They have a monkey. I don't even get to play with it. Um, I'd, want a, I'd want a capuchin monkey. I don't want a chimp. Too, too, you know, too much energy, too high energy there. I don't want to have a finger ripped off. I want a little capuchin. Who knows, who knows where the cards lie? He knows that I'm the big ape in the room and that he just wants to, you know, be my friend and maybe try and pilfer something while I'm not looking. That's fine. I expect a little bit of thievery when you're dealing with monkeys. Everyone should. They're, they they don't understand morality. They have thumbs and don't have morals. That's a dangerous combo. <laughs> <laughs> but I, <laughs> that's very true. I never thought. Yeah, of that. <laughs> huh. yeah. yeah. all animals would be getting up to way more shit if they had thumbs. That's why the raccoon is so tricksy. 
Yes, the raccoon is. Uh, what are the people called? Like trash pandas. Yeah, trash pandas. Yeah. Yeah. Where the, uh, those are really cool animals, but so fascinated by them. I want one yeah. as a pet. Like like like. I, I feel like it's on the same level as is like a uh, monkey as as a pet. You know, a shoulder monkey. What do you call them again? A capuchin monkey, an organ grinder monkey. The ones where like there would be that guy from, uh, you know, Austria. Taylor, why do you know so much about monkeys? Oh wait, 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 is that the little monkey who sits I, by the music box? Goes, yeah, yes, and and organ like a, grinder. He's grinding the organ. Yes, right. So, uh, so but, like, you knew a lot about dinosaurs because you had a passion for them as a kid. Why do you know a lot about monkeys? Because I had a passion for monkeys as a kid. I thought that monk. So, uh, the St. Louis Zoo has. It's gigantic. It uh-huh. is huge. And we went there all the time when I was little. And they have this big thing called the monkey house where it's just you walk in and it's this gigantic building. And you walk in and all of a sudden you just you, – it smells horrible. But you get used to it. But you hear like there's nothing but <laughs> like hooting and shit. And you walk around and it's just you know hundreds of different kinds of monkeys. And as a kid, I thought that was so cool walking around and just being like, man, these these are like all the smart animals and it's not like on TV where, you know, you can't really understand how smart they are. You can stand here and watch these chimpanzees and you can tell they're communicating. Like, like when you watch a bunch of alligators futz around in their exhibit, at no point am I like, man, I wonder what that one's saying to that one. Like no, because it's that's not happening because they're right. dumb dinosaurs. When you look at monkeys, you're like, there's there's an inner working going on here. There's a whole hierarchy. There's like a, not a culture that's a little bit too loose, but there's a set of norms that these monkeys abide by. And it's neat to watch animals that are still way, way dumber than us, but seeing that low threshold of intelligence that it does take to formulate a somewhat working society, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, monkeys are just – monkeys are fascinating. I haven't looked into dinosaurs in a long time. I doubt much has changed. They have. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, monkeys are super interesting. They have feathers especially now. Gorilla- and uh, chimpanzees and capuchins are very and lemurs, new world and old world monkeys. I don't discriminate. Have you heard that dinosaurs had feathers? I don't. I choose not to believe that. Hmm. It seems to be yeah. the prevailing opinion based yeah. on <laughs> based on my it. exposure to dinosaurs. Well some, <laughs> well, some definitely did. I thought they'd known that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, but, they did. I feel like during my like adult lifetime, dinosaurs went from you know, just lizards and stuff to pre-bird. And, and, and now they're like, right, right. Yeah, if you watch birds, you can predict a lot of dinosaur behavior. Dinosaurs don't roar. That's the thing I learned recently, that they, they had much more bird-like sounds and clucks and shit, and they grunted maybe. And, uh, but, but no Jurassic Park roars. If you look up, like, a, I think it's called like a hornbill stork, okay. maybe. Like, if you look at some storks, it, they look like dinosaurs. Like, they move the way that you see dinosaurs move in Jurassic Park. Obviously, that's not scientific, but it's like that's kind of what they had to be basing it off of. They didn't watch an actual dinosaur. But it's no, just it's they neat. Did. They brought them back from. Uh, they did. Yeah, I forgot mosquitoes. about that. That right. Asian guy. <laughs> yes, and then Newman helped him escape. Yes. <laughs> Nobody cares. Vile weed. Yeah. Vile weed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Dinosaurs got less cool. They went from monsters to birds. Yeah, uh, I think I they're still monsters. I, I mean, have you? I don't know how close you've ever been to a uh, an ostrich. They're terrifying. Are they? They are terrifying, dude. You one v one with a motivated ostrich, mm-hmm. it would be gruesome what he would do to you. Like, really? like you would pre- you oh, would, would prefer me. a wild dog over an ostrich. I think the ostrich has these thumb claws that are it's not a raptor claw or anything, but they're so big and they're they're like stomping with their weight and slashing at you and they'll slice you apart like they really would they, they it could open your guts or it could slash your face or your throat or something mm. and there's think about this How, what do you do to him are you trying really trying to hit that head that's the size of your fist that's floating around control the, the neck lo- right is with a knife get, on it sure i think if you ever were to get his neck if you ever were to grab it like that might be a thing but when i've like ran they always like lean their heads back and mm. down and they're really aggressive with I've been around them and been afraid of them. Emus are, are, are a little more. Emus are fun, actually. Emus are. Those cool. are little ostriches, kind of. Yeah, whatever. I, I don't. I don't know the, the they genealogy seem big or anything of emu. They're they're fun. Like like we we had that outdoor picnic thing, and, and the emu like was eating the spaghetti and stuff. Like like eating all this all the food, and it was really fun to pet the emu and like feed it feed it stuff. Kangaroo too. That I've was a cool never met a place. nice bird. I used to, I maybe even still do have this thing about all birds being total dicks. This one was this one was cool. Uh, you mm. saw we all met a nice bird one time and you fucking killed it. You fucking you fucking killed it. <laughs> You're talking we about Henrietta. 
who made who, who if Henrietta were bigger, she would have eaten you. Exactly. I don't think so. She would have cuddled with us and given us her warmth because that's what she did during her life as a tiny bird. She would sit on your foot. Um, she would uh, she would come and sit really like like if you're sitting in your hammock, feet on the ground. She would come and like sit on your foot to like share in the warmth. So she could make contact with you. She would always sleep like right by Chiz or under Chiz. She would if, let you pet her. If you were she worm sized, my hand. like compared to Henrietta, she would just eat you like a bug. I, yeah, I took a little saucer of water and I was like, "Here you go, here, Henrietta," and she's drinking it out of my hand, like, like tilting her head back to swallow it. And we all loved her. And Woody was like, "You know, I've never really killed anything before, if you know what I mean." <laughs> Get the. Get the machete. <laughs> <laughs> the well, may as well just hack it a few times, break yourself into the whole process. So it was a dull machete time. because Chiz chopped the dirt for a day. Now, now that's true. Hey, <laughs> I, I'm not letting anybody loose on this one. I actually, <laughs> Chiz was out there tilling the soil with his machete. Like, <laughs> he was cutting the grass out there. That was funny. Mm. Why, I, <laughs> why was he cutting grass again? All right, so we, we got to our campsite, and there's this, like, these sprigs of forest grass, and I'm going to say are uh, uh, 12, 18 inches tall, coming up around the campsite, around our feet. It's not thick at all. It's just there, you know? And Chiz uses his machete to start, like, slashing at it in a downward slashing motion instead of, like, palm flat with the earth, which would be like a lawnmower blade would swing. He's just slashing down at it like he's hacking jungle. Are there, like, like, like thick stems coming up you had to oh, get or no, just because no, if it's if it's just grass the fastest grass. way to do that is just find a switch dude, and then dude. just you're missing the best part though he's hitting the dirt with every whack and dulling the blade um <laughs> although i will say this i can tear a chicken's head off with like four fingers it's it's barely on there it's like it's like a quail <laughs> or a pigeon like like you could i could take these two fingers and like like this is the chicken's head my index fingers i could go like this grab it and go and I could tear it right off. Like you never mentioned that on the trip. Well, everybody seemed down to let. Now, the best way to do it, the cleanest way, the part which doesn't end it with a head in your hand, is of course to go, is to drown it. the blade. I, like if this is his head, what I would have done is put the blade on top, and then I would have taken a, a, a stick, a stick and, yeah. hit it. But we didn't. The execution hour had come, and we were all kind of like the cameras rolling, and it was like, all uh -huh. right, well. I'll, <laughs> I'll hold it like this. We gotta kill this fucking bird. <laughs> I didn't want him to cut my fingers off. That was my number one priority. Uh -huh. It's always my number one. I also one didn't want to cut his fingers off. I we shared that didn't. goal. I could yeah. tell you did. Um, and Thank and you. yet because of that, because of both of our uh, fears of you cutting my fingers off, Henrietta had to suffer the brunt of one, maybe two extra blows. But look, she was greasy anyway, so maybe she had it coming. <laughs> she was. Yeah, she didn't look a like a very tasty bird. bird. Well, I well, was pretty hungry by that point. Days. Yeah, so had we. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I will do that to you. <laughs> we, we were. Imagine if we had our own primitive YouTube channel. Like you know, here we are. I don't really know what the fuck we're doing. We're laying around, preserving energy, dying slowly, and uh, Chase is chopping the grass. And uh, there's Chase, structure the that we never comment. quite finished. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, I talked to Chiz the other day about this. He's like, he had been watching a lot of that survivalist guy's videos leading up to the the trip, and uh, we were making fun of his shoes at the time, which he fully admits were ridiculous. But he uh, he was like, I went into that thinking that we were going to build a big fancy shelter like they do on YouTube. Now I went into it because it had been so long that we'd been talking about it. I had really lost the passion for it. I didn't want to build a shelter, and I, I, while we could have perhaps fashioned a shelter if we spent all of our time doing it, it still would have been a fucking shitty shelter, and right. and we wouldn't have seen it in any way because it wouldn't have been safe, and uh, it would have been it wouldn't have been any good. It just wasn't going to work. But he got out there and he starts chopping these trees down with a little to tomahawk, and he's got all these crooked trees laid in a bundle, and I'm just like, yeah, you go right ahead, you build whatever you're going to build with that. And I remember on the last day when we we're leaving, him like cutting those bundles of trees down and letting them lay down on the ground. Like we had used them for firewood and stuff. There was only one thing we built that we used and that was the clothesline so we could dry our shirts and stuff. It was uh, it was the worst thing, worst decision I've I've made so consciously ever, I think. I, like, I, like there were months enjoy, of like If you were to say, it. Woody, would you like to do another survival trip or another drinking episode? I would take the survival trip by far. <laughs> I would much that's, rather do that. That's so much harder than just to drink for a night. <laughs> because, 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 
a camping trip. We should just do a camping trip, and that way we've got a cooler of beer and we got hot dogs, and then oh, we still get all. Now you ruined the- it. <laughs> I have still to drink got- on this thing. You're like here. <laughs> then we still got the camaraderie and the campfire stuff and some fun outdoor activities, mm-hmm. which I think is what we were the fun stuff to watch is it's anyway. It's not camping if you're not drunk. <laughs> you just don't have our suffering, um, and I just don't want to suffer for 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 so little money anymore. I just don't. <laughs> 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 so little money. <laughs> it was so much. So little suffering. payoff. It so wasn't. Much. It was so little money. It was just that it was so much suffering. Like, like, like the money's fine or whatever. But it was just like, wow, that's like twelve times as much suffering as money. Instead, and instead of just three or four or five, I just, I just didn't enjoy myself. I don't like being dirty. Maybe I'm just a, a pussy, right? Like, like maybe I'm just too metrosexual for my own good. Like, I, I really want to be clean, Fish posh, clean smelling, clean feeling. I want to like rub my hand here and not feel grease or grime or grit like i, I just want to be clean and, and and that was just not able to you be never notice how great it is to be clean until you're very dirty especially uh, the worst situation stickiness you never realize how unpleasant stickiness is until you're sticky and you realize there's not an immediate solution she like, said you- that that was the best shower he'd ever had in his life he, he said there was nothing more relieving or refreshing um, and then that shower after a week of being in the woods, and I believe him. Um, well, he didn't I, bathe the whole time. Not a bit. Not oh, even that's a rinse. Right. He did, which is bathe. horrific. I don't and, and and look, I'm not going to say that. that Woody, awful. look, here's what happened. It's, it, it, my view of what happened with the bathing situation is this, and I would bet that if we asked Patrick and Chiz, they would they would well maybe they didn't see where Woody was bathing, but I went downstream. Where the water was very shallow, I got on my knees like a, like you're praying to, I don't know, some omnipotent power as low as you can get, and I like threw the water over my back and onto my body, and then I soaked completely up, and then I di- repeated the process of throwing the water until I was completely rinsed and scrubbed clean. It meant that I had to get down in this really shallow, fast running, cold ass water, mm-hmm. and it meant that my bath took a long time. Woody got into some deep water. But it was deep because the beavers lived there. And part of beavers living there is that they shit there. And so the bottom was full of like eight inches, I would say, right, of silt. Very loose material on the bottom of that creek bed, which was shit. And as you were like walking in the shit, I noticed that it would be stirred up into the water. And so all of the water, the big pool that you were bathing in, inevitably became a bit shitty. And and so, despite the soap and the rinsing, when you got out, there was this microfilm of shit on you at all times, I felt like. And yet, and yet, you smelled 10,000 times better than Chiz, despite your micro shit coating. Yeah, I would argue, so even though I, I was above the dam, and if I could do it again, maybe I wouldn't have. But uh, the water still flowed. It wasn't like... You know, it wasn't like, stagnant. Yeah, so I'm getting it's constantly being fresh water like flowing in. It's not like I'm bathing in the cloudy water that Kyle describes. No, cloudy water is downstream, clean water is upstream, and and that's you know it's passing right by. That that was my opinion of the oh, bathing. Like legs were all in the cloudy water, and and, and well, but that wasn't maybe, the last thing I did. Right, last step is go to the shallow water. Yeah. Okay, you you might have done good. Uh, my, the thing that really just that, that, that I was seeing that, that, that I didn't want for myself was that your feet were squidging down into all that material. And I was thinking, like, what if there's a broken beer bottle at the bottom of eight inches of beaver shit? And, like, as you're compacting beaver shit, you get to it and it slices your foot open. And yeah, get the you old Samwise Gamgee. Yeah, you get the Samwise Gamgee. That's a, that really happened. I, I like yeah, that you know I, that. I feel like <laughs> of course I know shit that. doesn't yeah, make up Running the... out for Mr. Frodo, stepped on the bottle, cut himself very badly. Yes. Very bad. Mr. Frodo! Yeah. He can't swim. <laughs> no, he can't swim. Yeah, because he stepped on a, on a beer bottle. And, he, yeah, and, he, and he's a hobbit. And he is a hobbit, yeah. You would think that those rubber feet would have given him some protection. I really considered that, but I bet he wasn't wearing them for that shot. Probably not. Have, really needed them. It would have slowed him down. Yeah. And I bet those rubber feet wet is probably not something they want to do. Yeah, and it's like trying to walk in flippers, but with your flippers under the water. Which is a little bit annoying. Probably not yeah. for Woody. I bet Woody could be like, I could even put flippers so, on my head and I could salt the other day, Woody. Silt is not actually super... made up of beaver poop like you imply it is. Well, well I didn't say that. Well, I don't know that it was silt. I know what silt is, but but like there was this base of material I, at the bottom of the creek. I don't know. Little poopy wood shavings. Yeah, I, I he's it making it out to be like, oh, Woody bathed in like eight inches of poop. I, but it's 
like rotten leaves and you know the things that and, just and come any from other nature. dead animal and fish and crop it, it's all the it's the lowest point right so it's where all the sediment and dead things and rotten things are collected um i'm not saying that it was necessarily like a dead pig carcass in there um, but there was definitely beaver shit and any other shit that would collect to the lowest point and silt and stuff. I just didn't think it would it was sanitary. It wasn't for me. But you were bathing and that was good and I, I lived alone. <laughs> like I, I think that's that it's bad. good that Woody introduced oh, potentially new bacteria, new viruses ah, into his system because you know what happened? His immune system is so strong. His body just learned how to fight beaver shit, Ebola or E. coli or whatever, learned how to fight dead leaf syndrome. And all of those horrible things that could be upcoming. You don't know what the next thing's going to be trending on Twitter yeah, that we all have to look out for. Zika can't be that popular forever. So I'm, my out. wife is texting me. James O'Keefe, the whole Chicago whatever video. There's proof now. He was hired by the Trump campaign. $10,000 actually to make that video. And it doesn't mean that all the interviews are fake or whatever. But it's just really suspicious. So, or hmm. maybe that's a good cover story from the Clinton campaign. Yeah, maybe that's very convenient for the media, who really doesn't like to cover either. WikiLeaks or these videos at all. If it was totally it. bunk, nonsense, objectively disproving, uh, objectively disprovable, they would be airing it and showing, now this is where it's bullshit. This is nonsense. We have facts and figures and blah, 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 fact check this, that, and the other. But they're I'm ignoring not sure it, you're and right. that leads me to believe I'll tell that you there's why. still a lot of truth. If you're defending, you're losing. And uh, Hillary has done a really good job of just being like, what? No. And then talking about what she wants. Whereas Trump tends to relitigate it again and again and again. What? No. He all does, those women are but... crazy. All this, all the. Yeah. He'll talk about stuff until and try to change your mind. I've learned a while ago. You can't like for me, it's you can't change the Internet's mind. Right. If they think a thing, just move the fuck on. You're not changing their mind. But uh, Trump and relitigates all the time. Hillary just moves on and, and tries to let it die. Well, okay, I don't, I don't want to go back to politics too much, but yeah, just to you. put it out there, Trump is always under attack because he does a lot of stupid things, and the media spends a disproportionate amount of time critiquing his malfeasances as opposed to Hillary's. And so when you say that Hillary doesn't have to spend a lot of time re positioning herself, having to overcome all these things, it's because the media is doing a huge part of her job for her. I follow all of the mainstream media sites, especially a lot more in the last few months, because I really wanted to like follow their articles online, see the tone of what's being said, what they present, how they present it, what stories are not touched on, what are. And it's very apparent to anyone who's watching that CNN, MSNBC, these uh, net networks, ABC, CBS, they have a, a distinct bias, a distinct bias of always attacking Trump and not overtly defending Hillary, but making sure that narrative never treads too close to her dangerous line of corruption, because it's much easier to defend if it never gets brought up. And that is what I have pulled from it. Like, of course, you can always say Donald Trump does stupid stuff, and he re-litigates. Of course, he does. He's stupid with that. He'll go, oh, you know this issue that I should really move past? Well, let's talk about it for seven more minutes, <laughs> and I'm going to explain well, everything poorly. You know what? A good Nobody's example gonna, I'm not is that um, the Miss Universe that he called fat Right, he spent the next week defending just how fat she was and how he was in the right and all that stuff. And the media couldn't help but cover it. And, and every time the media covered it, Trump would talk about it again, and he just kept it going. And he lost a lot of female votes, women votes, because of that. Um, whereas Hillary doesn't make that mistake. But um, yeah, there could be some bias in there too. Like I, I've seen it for sure. I've seen some of the bias, and it, it's frustrating to me because I, it's like, damn it, I tried to defend you, and now look at you. You know, the, the one I bring up a lot is CNN editing the footage of Hillary, like, collapsing. Uh, can't do that. Doesn't tell the right story. But um, anyway, also, Trump hired this guy to make a hit piece film, paid him $10,000 yeah. we'll for it. We'll see if that's true. We'll see According if it's not. Even if he did, it doesn't mean that it's not true. It, Washington Post and NBC have both picked up the story. So it, it, it's not have. like it's Huffington Post. Yeah. It's some mainstream stuff. Agenda. Yeah, I guess. Let's not go back to politics. Too I'm much. with you on that. No, I mean, you could bring up the fact that the Washington Post is owned by Jeff Bezos, and he really loathes Trump, uh, is a Hillary Clinton supporter, but whatever. Washington Post looks really left-leaning, right? You know, their, their stories is. are always crazy that way. But they're not, um, like the Drudge Report, for example, which tends to publish stuff that's silly. Uh, they're usually on target. 
but yeah. left I, I don't trust the Drudge Report. The Drudge Report's more an aggregator, if I understand it. I very rarely go there just to kind of see what that far right people are seeing, like what they're clicking on. But yeah, it, it, yeah. I, like I wouldn't, if someone said, hey, here's a great source from uh, Drudge Report, I'd just have to be like, no, because I would not feel, basically the way I think about it is like, if I'm trying to convince someone of something, would I feel comfortable sending them this as a source? No, I would not feel comfortable sending someone CNN, MSNBC, um, Drudge Report, um, Breitbart. Good God, Breitbart is just an arm of Trump at this point. Like, I wouldn't feel good using any of those sources because they're very flagrantly biased. It's not politics exactly, but news is frustrating to me, and my wife put it really well. She's like, I'm tired of opinion-based news. And people will say things like, I don't mean to pick on Fox exclusively, but they'll be like, well, Bill O'Reilly's not the news. He's, in, he's like the opinion section, and Hannity's not the news. He's this. But I feel like everybody is getting their news from opinion-based stuff. And that opinion, it could be, I mentioned some right ones. Stephen Colbert, um, Trevor Noah. Rachel Maddow. Who's the, um, I'm looking for the new Daily Show guy. Is it Trevor, what's Trevor his? Trevor Noah. Is that a Trevor Noah? John Stewart. Right. Oh, okay. Um, you just, whatever. Like those guys on the left, the guys on the right. People are getting informed by opinion-based news. I think at least as much as they're getting informed by news that uh, aspires to be unbiased. And uh, yeah, so like, I don't know. Opinion based news is where everybody's going nowadays, and I don't think it's healthy. That's all. Because it's, it's, it's more palatable. Yeah, it's, you can just read a headline and be like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm not feeling as good about this election. How about I pop on over to MSNBC and just read a couple times? Oh, yeah. Yep. All my biases are confirmed. Hey, yeah. you know, Trump can't be this bad. Let me hop on over to Breitbart.com. Ah, as I suspected, <laughs> I'm right. Like, that's, yep, that's yep. all that it is. Like, you have oh. to actually do some due diligence in all of this and actually put a concerted effort into researching it because otherwise it's just misinformation and everybody's got a fucking agenda. It's, I don't want to talk about it anymore. But I've got a got terrible to. topic. I laid out new grass seed today it has been like oh, a multi-day effort for me to blue uh it is like kentucky 31 fescue? which i believe to be a tall fescue variant um I'm a 30. it is a fescue i nailed it <laughs> dude so i bought a cedar for my tractor it holds like 700 pounds i it, i my original idea was to overseed my grass. Overseeding doesn't mean too much seed. It means you put seed on top of existing grass so that it grows in like nicer and fuller and stuff. And um, I was like, all right, I don't need it, need it. As a matter of fact, the grass seems to be getting a little greener with each year I own it, which is kind of nice. We, the, I, the, an old set of owners came by. They were driving like creepy around the yard and stuff. And they, they're like, do you own this place? And I'm like, yeah. And they said, we built the Game of Thrones room. I'm misquoting him because that's what we call it. But they put that addition on, and we talked to him for a while. And he asked me how I got the grass so green. And I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, I just cut it. But uh, cut it furiously. <laughs> he Seven said, times a day. <laughs> <laughs> he said that it's greener than it ever was when they were there. They also had miniature horses, which probably was hell on the grass. But um, um, uh, I wanted to overseed. It's 14 acres. We were only going to seed like 10 of it because some of it we let grow tall and some of it there's buildings on and stuff. How much do you think it costs to seed 10 acres? I mean, uh, with what kind of grass? The, the cheapest like tractor supply grass you can find. Oh. Uh, it's $60. Two, $250. $5,000. I mm. opted not to do it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy $100 worth of grass. We're going to experiment, right? Because the back of the, I don't know if you saw it in the flying video. We had the behind our house graded and, and we have to kind of wait till fall to replant it. So we did that. And, um, uh, and then we overseeded like a little section in the front yard. And it's like, if this comes up gorgeous, then maybe next fall we'll make a decision about doing either another part of the yard or the entire yard. Uh, if, it, if, it, if nothing happens, then we'll have saved $5,000. You know, we, we could have I, taken dollar bills and just tilled them in and made it just as You know as what green. I wish you would do out there? And, mm. and, and I bet one day you'll, you'll progress to this. I wish you would plant it with wheat. I wish you would sow wheat and grow a crop of wheat and then take the crop in and make your own bread. That's pretty cool, <laughs> actually. I would like to see you make your own brand of bread, and we could you could ship that to us, and we could eat it to keep ourselves from getting too drunk on the next drinking episode. No, Woody's, could, Woody's prime love. What if I make beer out of the hops or something? <laughs> what if I make beer out of the hops or something? <laughs> I, I already know yeah, half of what I need. You could grow some barley, 
and uh, that could be an ingredient in your beer. I, 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 every time I see that Samuel Adams commercial where they've got that, he's like, most beer companies only use a dash of hops. Here at Sam Adams, we use this huge fucking heaping double handful of hops. And he goes, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's why your beer tastes like shit, because you use a double handful of the bitter part of the beer. Like, 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 I hate Sam Adams with a passion. I, if I could find that waitress who dumped that bottle of Sam Adams in our cheese dip, I'd spit in her face right now. <laughs> Ruined my dinner. Yeah, I, I I remember that. She was like mixing so all gross. these cheeses. We're at we're at a <laughs> fondue restaurant, and it's like this is gonna be great. And then she pours a beer in our otherwise fantastic food. <laughs> and, Keep and in I, mind, it's me, Joe, and Woody. We, none of us drink. And she like he, he, you kind of skipped over the cool part. Like like she didn't just mix some cheeses. She put all these really cool cheeses into this hot plate and stirred them together. And they were getting every time she'd add something else to the pot, it was like. My my stomach's rumbling like ooh it just got a little better oh some 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 uh, Wisconsin cheddar oh the yeah. king and of I'm, cheddars I'm, yeah the <laughs> king of cheddars you know and then she's like and a bottle of Sam Adams and she didn't pour it there was some sort of mechanism the way I remember it where she just upended the bottom bottle into this mechanism and then went on to do something else and the beer is just glug, 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 glug. and for a split second I was like. I could save it. Like, I almost. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, I thought. Like, get it. I was kind of the opposite. It was like, should I save it? It's already ruined. You know, even a third of a beer it, yeah. in cheese. Who puts beer in cheese? You, you guys are are wrong on this because beer and cheese is very common. Like we as far as is. those like not in my house. Joe is drinking beer. We don't drink beer. I know. I'm, I'm just saying that like the same beer that tastes like cheese. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I don't love red wine, but when I have burgundy mushrooms, which is mushrooms sautéed with butter and red wine, it's really, really good. I'm not eating it like, oh, man, that red wine, this is so fucking great. You're just, you're enjoying the entirety of the flavors, and the wine happens to go well. With the cheese, sorry, go ahead. Red wine in cooking tastes very good, but red wine in a glass is this bitter thing you have to force down. I, I... I didn't want that beer in my cheese. Oh, no one. No. That's part of the reason we all went to a second dinner to Capitol Grill, which was delicious. That I didn't want good. that beer in my cheese. That was you great. Know, seeing, just imagining your three faces suddenly <laughs> become sullen and your eyes just, oh, as you see her upend this beer into what you thought was going to be a delicious treat. <laughs> I'd never seen such a big thing of melty cheese, and it really looked good to me. And I was uh-huh. I was really into it. And, and then she poured that beer in there, and she might as well have, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were on the <laughs> same page, so close. <laughs> she might as well have, like stirred it with her hand, like that scene in Vacation where like the dog. Like... <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure I would have like... found urine that much more distasteful than the Sam Adams. Like I've had urine and it's not. Urine is better than that Sam. See, Adams. I, 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 and you're talking about Bud, I assume when you say. <laughs> I'm just joking, <laughs> but, but uh. Yeah, I don't know. She just ruined it, and, and and to look at it, like, cheese has a certain kind of purity and texture and consistency. Like, you can picture a melted cheese. It's thick and yummy and gooey and just sinfully awesome. And then you put beer in it, and it turns into, like, I don't know, like a slime. Very good cheese. Uh, or... It tasted, uh, if you liked beer, then you would love this cheese. It just tasted very, very strongly of the cheese. And it made every bite... It was like it looks like good food. It would be like if every bite of the delicious dessert actually tasted like the bad part of a pecan. You'd just be like, oh, fuck, it looks so good, but <laughs> fucking. And I, I just kept eating more and more until I was just like upset. And then I don't, I don't remember whose idea it was to go for a second dinner, but everybody was on board. That was, I'll never forget that. To be fair, like I've been to like melting pot and fondue places like that where they add beer to cheese. I've never been somewhere where they, where they up end a bottle of beer into it because that seems like a lot like the places i've been to they like basically like they had they bring out their whole tray and they've got like the cheese and the thing and they've got all the like spices they add and then like a, like a sauce cup of beer that they like add in the beginning to give it some liquid and shit, whole like, beer. So it doesn't congeal so you, you could be right maybe i don't know yeah they, they should have asked you about that they and, then said, you, and, then, and then woody was rude to the cab driver that was a good night oh uh, what happened well he, I mean, he had it. a lot of anger to he earned about it that beer he, cheese. He was supposed to be following Joe's cab. He didn't follow Joe's cab well. He got we got lo- a bit lost. It wasn't that big that's of a right. deal. And then he didn't want to like drop us <laughs> off on the right side of the street. We were Bloody, like, no, go right. down, make a U-turn, come back, and put us on the right side of this busy Boston downtown street, dude. 
don't don't put us on the wrong side of the street when the restaurant's right over there. Like, yeah, and it was a, a street that you couldn't know. like cross. Like, like you couldn't just jaywalk across it. Like, we would have had to like go down no, the it, block and something. It was crazy. It, it was a major intersection. Yeah, and the you know he was like, hey, where are we going? And like I was really clear. I was like, follow that cab. Like we don't know exactly how to get there. You have to stay. Uh, you have to keep up with that cab. And he stopped at a yellow light. Which now I, I hate to assign motives to this, but I think he did it so it would cost more, right? Yeah. I, I think they stop at every yellow light is this free fucking money, right? You know, every time someone's sitting back there, my fare is just going up. The name of the game is to have people in this at the largest percentage of the night as I can. So he stopped at a yellow when he lost the other cab. And now he's like, oh, so where do we go? We don't know. Like, we, I, I didn't even know the name of the restaurant. Like, it was, follow the other cab was the, the only directions we had. And you stopped at a yellow so that you could intentionally lose them. And I, I didn't like the cab driver anymore. Woody, Woody started a real scene in the lobby of the W. <laughs> okay. uh, he comes to my hotel. <laughs> I don't even know this. And, yeah, so, so, so I'm staying at the W. Uh, Woody's meeting me downstairs in the lobby. I come down the elevator. I think I'm taking him up to my room. We're going to hang out there for a bit until the thing we got to do happens. And uh, the guy from the airport shuttle thought uh. Woody owed him dollars uh, for some bags moved around or placed somewhere or something. I and mean, Woody was positive that that $20 had already been taken care of in some way or another. I remember that clearly. Mm -hmm. And so we're in this standoff where we're standing in the elevator, Woody and I, and the man won't let our elevator doors shut, and I'm getting mad. <laughs> and I'm getting much madder than Woody is. Kyle I'm wants like, to fight him. I'm ready to fight. <laughs> I'm like, you're not going to mess with like my moving about the world right now, motherfucker. Like, you're going to get out. I was ready to fight. I was like, we should just fight. Don't give him $20. Let's fight. Let's just do it right here. I'm staying at this hotel. He's clogging up an elevator. All these witnesses are here. All we need to do is like bump into him a little and I'll scream my eye. And then you just kick the <laughs> shit out of him. Let's do this. You know? <laughs> And it, for what like it's worth, guy uh, the, the guy was smile, smaller than either Kyle. <laughs> either Kyle or I, let alone Kyle and I, would have won yeah. this fight, right? I didn't want to. I didn't want to double team. Don't get me wrong. Uh -huh. I just felt like someone needed to hit him. I was happy to hit him. I <laughs> wanted you to hit him. Someone needed to hit him, though. I was mad because he was like, "Give me, my, give me my money, give me my money," and you're like, "You got your money. You're not." It was like he was robbing you. And meanwhile, like yeah, whoever Odin, sent like, me on the trip—I don't know if it was Machinima or EA or whatever—had paid for my limo to the. It's not a real limo; it's like a lim shuttle service. But you know, paid to the my service to get me to the hotel. And then he wanted to charge me again. And it's like, but you've been paid, like whatever. And then on top of that, his service was really bad. Like uh, he was maybe ninety minutes late, something like that. And. Uh, Rather than, you know how they go like from like stop to stop to stop at the airport, like picking people up? He did another lap around the airport, and the other people on the van were yelling at him, too. They're like, come on. Like, like you're, you're, you're really, all of us are waiting in here. You've got a two-thirds full van, and you need to have it completely. So you're going to do another lap in the airport? And the nature of the airport was that was like 40 minutes onto the ride or something. It was a oh. lot of stops. So uh, hours and hours have gone by. I'm at the end of my rope by the time we leave the airport. And uh, then when we get there, now he's trying to double dip on the payment. And I just felt really wronged. But in the end, I, I gave him $20. Okay, and... I was so, I was not happy. I was a little mad at you. I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, no, don't give him that money. Like, 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 like this is bullshit. And I can, I, like, like, it's rare that I see such like bullshit in my face like that. But I was like, this is bullshit. This guy is being way too aggressive, way too rude. Mm -hmm. And like, 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 let's just fight. It's time to fight. This is when it happens. It's when someone is aggressive and rude and they're, they're not allowing me to leave the situation. And that's what was happening. I want to go up in the elevator. He won't let that happen. He's, he's, not in my face, but he's he's much closer than I want him. He's being aggressive. He might have cursed. I know I probably cursed, um, and, and I was ready to throw down. I was like, let's just, let's fucking fight here at the W. Like, head, so Kyle's principled on this thing. I was like, oh, so how does this go down? Right. One option was just to like push him out of the elevator hard That's enough and try to get it to go up. But and if he comes back, like like now he's coming at me when I'm aggressive. I'm I'm, I'm like get away from me because you know that's what I'm feeling now. I'm like you're in my space. Get back. If he comes back again, then he is now the aggressor because I just want him away. I'm like, 
get away from me. My main problem isn't what you're saying, doing, isn't your smell or that nasty I look on your face. I don't know you. It's that That's I can't my leave. purse. <laughs> I, I felt like he was kidnapping me a little bit by not allowing my elevator to move on, and that just infuriated me to no end. I, I, we should have fought him. And, and in my head, I was like, huh. Or I can make this whole thing go away for 20 bucks. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, like – this whole I'd have, thing ends I'd have without. I'd torn up a hundred to <laughs> fucking push that guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I just like it was like man, mm. and like what what goes down? What if we hit this guy? What if we beat him up? What, if we win this, is there any way the cops look at us and say, "Oh, congratulations on your victory"? Like I, I, I feel like whoever wins is at fault. You know, it, even though I, I hear Kyle's point, we were semi kidnapped by this whole thing. And it was like, oh, or I could give the guy 20 bucks and this whole situation just ends. And, and that's what I did. I don't know. I, I feel like I made the right call, but it would have been I great fun. I wish I could remember what I said to him. Yeah, there was, it, it, there was the talk and then there was the posture. Both of it was like, you're not getting what you want, right? You know, it's like, get the fuck out of this elevator may have been said. Like, it, if that's not an accurate quote, that's an accurate vibe. It was something like that i was so mad I, I i was like this shit doesn't happen to me you're not gonna fucking like hold me ransom right here for his 20 dollars that he's saying he doesn't owe you and like <clears> i know you. you you're not scamming this motherfucker out of 20 dollars if you say he's been paid he's been paid and that's just concrete for me right away so i'm like all right you're a liar and a piece of shit now like as i look at this guy like not only are you holding me up but you're a liar and you're being way too aggressive i I, I, I st if I go back now, I'd st like even older me, you know, five, four or five years older. I'm mm -hmm. like, if I could go back, you know, and, and look at young me and be like, hey, man, this, don't do that thing you're doing there. That's that's no good. Just do this thing over here. I'd be like, fucking deck him. Hit him in the ear. <laughs> you got to do it quick because what he's about to pay him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kick him in the balls, man. He'll go down and you'll go up. Like, like fucking just do it. Just do it. Just One this is I, Sparta, him right out of the elevator, and then the, th the thing goes up. Like that. That'd I, be a I, great I victory. I still remember my heart. Like, like <laughs> just talking about this is pissing me off a little, because like, because I can still remember my heart was going, and it wasn't fear, it wasn't a fighter, it it wasn't it wasn't flight, it was fight. It definitely was. It was boom, 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 boom. All right, all right, this is gonna go down. This this motherfucker better stop. He's fucking up. He's fucking up. That's what I'm really thinking. So it's like, I, what is he fucking thinking right one now? One of the things going what through my head. So I'm telling you, I wasn't lying. That thing was paid for. My name was on a list. As I'm waiting by the podium, she like, oh, mm -hmm. and Woodworth, yeah, we got you, etc. Like, he was paid. But I don't think he was lying. I think he was wrong, right? There's an intent difference there. I think Thank he felt like he wasn't paid. And it wasn't that his, his motive was double dipping. That was his action, I think. But mm -hmm. not his motive. I, I think he was feeling like, I'm going to get paid for this. And yeah. Probably so. So that I had some sympathy right for there. him. You probably should have just, you know, given him the twenty dollars. But I, I it, it still makes me angry even now. I, I just felt like he was just. He was just <laughs> it was because he was. There are situations where we're just having a misunderstanding, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and if we all just calm down here, like, like let's find the the real answer here because there's no reason for us to be butting heads. If the answer is you've already been paid, sir, uh, if you just contact Michelle, you would find that information out. Like, like we can if we can solve things that way, that's good. But just like he was just so rude. Yeah, and, and aggressive. Uh, he had he had kind of a like you're not getting away with this motherfucker oh, he, vibe he, he, about he's like him. Holding his, he's holding the elevator like he's literally like got his got his arm in there and, and we're like we're trying to go up and I don't remember what the agenda was but if I'm in LA I'm sure I had shit to do you know we yeah. we had some stuff going on and uh, and and I I that was one time when like it would have been great if we'd had like a Scott or a Jeremy with us who was like <laughs> waiting for that who have been told that like look there might be some fucking maniac who thinks it's cool to punch FPS Russia in the head. And I can't be getting in street fights. <laughs> so if you see somebody fucking with me, you lay them the fuck out and I'll bail you out. And that's just how we know. That's just the way things go. Because, you know, I'm sure there's some maniac out there. Like, yeah, he thinks he's a tough Russian. I'm going to show that commie some bitch. My daddy fought him in Afghanistan. And, like, some <laughs> dude comes at me because he thinks I'm a Soviet. And, it, like, like, I need Scotty there to lay him down. So in, in the same regard, I was like, man, I wish Scott or somebody was here. Somebody who could just... You know, you go bail them out. It, one, you know, one little salt isn't going to be that big of a deal. Right. That seems almost dangerous to tell someone like Jeremy, though, because then in his head they'll be like, like in his head he is then your secret service. 
He is. Of, I wanted you know, to think that. Oh, I'm fine oh. with that. I'm fine with pumping that up a little bit. I, I'm, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I'll get him an earpiece that doesn't even do anything. If that'll make <laughs> feel good. Like, he's just like, got a curly cue. It sounds like it's just coming from you. Oh no, that's how they work. <laughs> is that a piece of rotini? <laughs> yeah, <that is> <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, I haven't heard nothing from this thing yet. You will hear something from it when you need to. <laughs> Not before. You will know it's on when is, you hear something. Is <laughs> Rotini the curly pasta? Yeah, I, I pictured it as the as the curly. Few silly is the is the curly pasta. Rotini is also silly, a curly Jared. pasta. He's it's the one I was thinking of actually. Yeah, the the, the one's like a corkscrew kind of like a like a, a spiral kind of thing. Anyway. Yep pasta talk um but so th that was just a it's rare that i can count the times that i've been that angry at another person who's in front of me uh, you know on one hand and that time just uh, god i was so mad at that guy i just felt like he deserved an ass whooping anywhere else other than the 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 lobby of the w in la and he gets an ass whooping he gets an ass whooping in chicago he gets an ass whooping in, in atlanta don't get me started on boston he, tried, <laughs> he gets I bet he did that to people. in texas because the other people join us because because <laughs> they see he's brown I didn't mention that, but he was. It had no bearing on the incident. Mm -hmm. But we start stomping him in Texas, and at least one guy joins in for the hell of it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he was doing that to other people. Because there's no way that you guys were the first ones that he like tried to bilk a little more money out of. You know, like I bet he's done that to other people I, if he did I'm that. willing to lean toward Woody's side that maybe this was just an error. Because he was so – he was as confident that he was in the right as Woody seemed to be. The only Good difference was that I, that, I, that I know Woody. You know, so I don't know. I just remember it just being furious, and it still makes me mad. Uh, I didn't. I don't like that. Uh, that was fun times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that, that's, uh, yeah. I don't remember which trip that was. I've been to that hotel a couple times. It's so nice. I, I don't the like before you walk in. Um, they've got like, like Christmas lights strung up uh, above you in these straight lines. It sounds tacky, but they're like. Uh, that's the lighting outside, and then they, they park all the nice cars there under the lights right in front of the doors. There's like a Lamborghini and a Ferrari. Is and a W Cor somehow related to the president? Like, it is in my no. head, but I don't know if they're at all... Like, no. No? All right. I, was, I don't know. So, what what yeah. is it? Is the W, like, stand for something? I, I, I don't know. Huh. Oh, well. No. I just like staying there because it's a real nice hotel, and, uh, man, that's where I always stayed. It's, Wait, rare it's called the that W? I, yeah. It's rare that I care very much about my the hotel Western. room. Like, there's a certain level of cleanliness where I want to believe that, like, even the comforter is pretty clean. Um, yeah. And once you hit that, they're all the same to me, roughly. So there's this bottom tier class where they have the air conditioner in the, in the mm -hmm. room, like the unit. Mm -hmm. And that usually produces a lot of humidity and moisture in the air. And it makes all the bedding feel moist and just too humid. I can feel or, it as I'm laying on the Or they don't moist. run the AC like it needs to be run if the room's not occupied. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, we turn it up to 89, you know, when no one's staying here. Those, those motel rooms, I'm going to call them, just have, mm -hmm. like, this this moist feel to them. And then there's that middle grade of hotel, like like the Jameson or whatever, anything, suites or whatever, that you can get, like, $150, $180 king room. Uh, or if you're in a, you know, New York, it's going to be four hundred and fifty dollars or something like that. Um, like a, you know, a nice king room though. You got a flat screen TV and a walk-in bathroom with a shower and a sink. But in you know, the next level above that, and if somebody's paying for it, I'm always happy. Um, is you know, we got a big fucking nice shower with like digital displays and a sauna in there, and the t and the tiles all heated, and there's an, you know, maybe it's a suite with a couple of rooms or something like that. I, I'm with you. I can go both ways. I've always thought of hotels as these little miniature adventures. So I'm just as happy in, a, in, in my own way staying in that hotel in Texas that had rubber sheets and blood on the towels as I am when I got to stay in like the, that incredible suite in Texas um, that was like several thousand dollars a night for a don't, three uh, Don't suite. float by that too quick. Uh, what? Okay, there was I'll blood all over your towels? Yeah, there were, um, you know, if you ever cut yourself shaving or whatever, you got a little bl blood on your face for whatever reason, and you blot it with a towel. Uh, you usually use toilet paper, right? You, yeah, you don't I want to do. Yeah. A towel. But, Not a savage. <laughs> but if you have ever used, you know, a towel or a washcloth, then you would recognize the blotting blood pattern on the cloth that you've done. So that was the case with our washcloths in this motel room. Um, it was clear that this washcloth right here that's hanging has been used to blot someone's bloody 
body in some way. And there's another blood stain on the floor. Um, you know, maybe like not even dime sized. I would say like smaller than a dime, but a blood stain nonetheless. Clearly. Uh, and the other funny thing about them was we plugged the AC in in this place to get it running. It was the nicest place within 50 miles. The other yeah. thing about them, though, was no soap or shampoo, but I had my own because I travel so much. And I was on the third leg of a journey anyway, so I'd taken them from from hotels. Uh, and so I've got soap and shampoo, single servings, you know, just enough to get me through this two-day trip or whatever. I leave them in the room when I go out hunting the next day. And when I re return back, they threw away my soap and shampoo and left nothing <laughs> in return. It was like she came in there and threw away my shit and just left nothing in return. And that made me so goddamn mad. But it was late at night and I was hot and I was just like, there's nobody to even yell at. So when I checked out, <laughs> I just I just threw the key like at the office and I was just like, it's there! <laughs> Fuckers, like, like. <laughs> One time, was, uh, Melissa and I were at a hotel. It was a real key. And we were uh, up in our hotel room. It was one of the, like, probably third night we've been there. And we were both drinking and both got pretty drunk. And she was looking down into the courtyard where you could see from our window. And there was a bunny running around the courtyard. And she was drunk, pretty wasted. We both were. And so she was like, oh, I'm going to go hang out with the bunny. I'm going to go find it. And I was like, whatever, you go find the bunny. More power to you. So I just sat there and watched. And I never saw her emerge into the courtyard. I'm like, this is weird. Like, she should have fucking showed up down there by now. She's just looking for a bunny. What's going on? And I don't know what I was thinking. I was hammered. And, and I had a t-shirt on. And basically, like, me undies style underwear. You know? Um, that kind of tight, you know, lift and separate style. And I was wearing that and just a t-shirt. And I left the room, forgot my key, locked myself out. And I was in these basically jammers that like swimmers wear except even less fabric because it's underwear and i was just drunk enough that i did not care about having to walk through the lobby and talk to the poor woman working the 130 shift in my underwear you could see like like cock outline on it for sure without mm -hmm. a doubt like i'm yeah. not gonna fool myself but i was drunk enough that it didn't matter and i had to go to her ask for a new key she asked what room number i was i said i don't remember mm -hmm. and then so she had to have one of the people come and help me find my room and then and then I, it all worked out but uh yeah that was stupid so <laughs> i think i've i i i'm asking taylor ha, have i told you the story about jeremy getting locked out of his room in his underwear you have i don't believe you have i'll stop you if you if i recognize it I'm looking for the hotel right now we were staying at. It might be the Hotel Derek. It does. It is a four-star hotel. I, I think it was the Hotel Derek. I'm not positive. I know that it was right down the street from Sullivan's, which is like a five-star steak restaurant. Uh, I would say better than Morton's. I think, they, I think they're like nationally known, and they, they have these like fancy blue lobsters they serve and stuff. And uh, anyway, we'd gotten back from a night of uh, drinking and eating, and uh, Scott and Jeremy had their own suite. Uh, I had my uh, room to myself, and I just have gotten back into bed. I, I'm I'm in bed. I'm going to sleep. Lights out. Phone's plugged in. It's nighttime, and the phone rings uh, to the room, and I answer. And, and I'm I'm scared by that instantly because what could that even fucking be, right? It's an emergency, and it's someone who doesn't even have my cell phone number, and it's an emergency. So I'm scared. I'm like, hello, and it's the downstairs. She's yes, uh, Mr. Myers. We've got a Mr. Fulbright down here and um, he seems to be locked out of his room and he says that he's in your block of rooms and I'm like yeah 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 um, get, feel free give him a, give him a ticket yeah or yeah, a, a key uh, you know yeah he's with me and she's like well we need you to come down to uh, to show your identification and I'm like well who else would I be and I'm in my room she's, <laughs> she's like well we need you to come down all together and I was like alright fine so I'm fucking pull my pants on everything go downstairs Really nice hotel. There's a grand piano downstairs. There's an attached bar that's really swanky. It was so swanky I didn't want to walk into it, like without without like a sport coat on or something. It just it was a very nice bar. I was like, we don't belong in that bar. Let's go down the street and find a Hooters or something. We don't belong in there with those people. Um, so, uh, there's a there's all kinds of staff, even though it's late of late at night. The elevators are literally gold. They're 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 gold. So the the floor is marble. It's big big and white. It's beautiful. We get in there. I get downstairs. I walk around the corner, and there Jeremy is, wearing his boxers and nothing else. They have hearts on them. The <laughs> hearts are pink. Um, I can Aww. see the outline of his cock and everything else. I can see his big hairy stomach and all of his 
racist tattoos. I can see his nipple rings, which he's fiddling with because they tickle. And he's <laughs> flicking them around, you know, doing one of these as he Well, when you get there. nervous, you got to play with something. He's not nervous even a little bit. He's very comfortable in his own skin. Uh, he's <laughs> drunk. And, uh, and I, I look past him at this 35-year-old black lady who is very nice looking and, and very well dressed uh, behind the counter. And she looks befuddled. She's mm -hmm. just like, usually we call the police to get rid of the people like this. <laughs> and, like, and, and he's saying he's got a key. Could you? So I shore my idea. I'm like, yeah, uh, he's with me. Um, <laughs> let him in. And so this is my he, head of security. Yeah. Oh no! Oh, like, she like, 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 she wouldn't believe that. That's why he has a macaroni in his ear. Yeah. <laughs> Taking him by the hand and being like, "Oh, you got away again! Come on now!" <laughs> like, it was so embarrassing. And I get upstairs, and Scott is also locked out of his room. You know, they had the same room. I'm like, Scott, why didn't you go? You he had like sweatpants like these and a t-shirt. I'm like, why didn't you go downstairs to the four-star hotel to get a room? He's like, we played paper, rock, scissors, and he lost. <laughs> <laughs> he was so drunk that he didn't—he couldn't even be like, dude, you've got clothes on. You should go. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. I lost the bet. I've never Damn been, it. I'll be back. Yeah. It's, like, I've embarrassed myself plenty of times, as we all have, but it's rare that I've been so embarrassed by another. That 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 someone else has embarrassed me that much just because of what they're doing. It's usually like, ah, what did I say? I didn't mean that thing. But but this time it was like, God, I can't believe I'm with this guy. And that's what she was thinking too. It was so embarrassing. Jeremy's a good guy. <laughs> that makes all this okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got racist tattoos. Complete savage. Good guy. Good guy though. Wouldn't wish anything on. You know. I, it's just just lifestyle that he's. Grown up, then. What a life's choice. What games are we looking forward to? Like, obviously, you know. Civ drops tonight. I know. Past six. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be playing that a good bit. I want to get good at that. Um, remastered is big for me. Obviously, uh -huh. I'm time. On, I guess I should classify why I'm excited about them by what I'm gonna do with them. Because it's one thing to say, "Oh yeah, I'm so jazzed about Battlefield," and I'm gonna buy Battlefield, but I'm gonna play maybe a dozen hours of Battlefield, 25 hours of Battlefield, something like that. It'll be something that I only play with other people, well, with friends like Chiz or Taylor if he gets it, and I, I just won't play by myself. Uh, Civ, I'll play by myself, single player, multiplayer. COD, I'll play by myself. Um, though I would love to have a full party and like the old days, a lot of camaraderie and friendship and stomping on noobs and that sort of thing. Um, beyond that, what else is there? And I, I, that's a genuine question. Like, what else is really one is tonight? I didn't realize that. It snuck yeah, up on me. I, I just I looked at the release date and it's like, October twenty first. And I also think they might be giving me a key. Like they gave me an email saying like, hey, all the keys are coming. We'll get them to you or something. And. Uh, so I, I might be getting Battlefield 1 for free. There is a... Let me check my one of these keys that, that Chiz just sent us here, I think they're for uh, the beta for Call of Duty right now. So you mm -hmm. can get into the new Call of Duty beta right now if any of us want to. I, it doesn't have remastered. It's about the next one. Exactly. It's the new game's beta. Yeah, yeah. I really don't care about it unless I can play COD 4. Right. Like, I, I played a little bit of it. My friend had the, has the beta on PS4, and so I played one game of Domination on it. It was, it was pretty fine. Like, it was... Exactly what I thought Call of Duty would be, but if you handed me that controller and didn't tell me it was the new Call of Duty, I would not have known. Like I, I would have just thought, oh, that it's just you know you boost the same way. It's just the old Call of Duty. But granted, I don't know that much about the current CODs and the guns and the maps. But yeah, it's, there's too many games that are apparently going to be really good when all I'm interested in is COD Four and Civ Six at this point. Like that's about it, honestly. Like maybe I'll get Battlefield if a bunch of friends say it's great and it looks neat, but. I just don't have enough time to be playing all of those games enough to get good That's at it. That's why I'm so excited about Remastered, because I feel like, like I'm like, oh, I'm going to walk in that one, I'm going to suck. Of course, there's boost and mechanics I'm not good at, um, but Remastered, like I, I expect to walk into that, have lousy skill on the stick, and know everything there is to know, and that's a pretty yeah. good place to be. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how good I'm gonna be at. I, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna be conservative. I, I don't think I'll be that good because everybody's playing this time. You know, it's mm -hmm. it. I think that a lot of very, very strong players are gonna be playing. I think I'll pull a positive KD, probably a 1.5 or a 1.7 or something. But I doubt I'm gonna be dropping a three and a half KD this time around. I, 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 I don't even probably know not. The people who one. are really into COD Four and are really, really good at it are gonna go straight to COD Four, mm -hmm. not to the new COD. You know. I know I am. And also, no, but I'm, I'm saying like at a time yeah. where I was uh, really pretty good at, at COD Four or like Modern Warfare Two or whatever, um, I was like 
way ahead of the game by having a headset. You know, like that kind of stuff is baseline nowadays. I think yeah. I haven't been playing, but I think everybody can sound whore. Everybody can. Everyone, the, the whole skill, the player base has gotten more talented. I think. See, see, but but COD for sound whoring is different than than any sound whoring COD that there has ever been. It's it's what I, I started with, and it never was as good again after Call of Duty Four because if you don't have Dead Silence on Ninja, no, it's Dead Silence. If you don't have Dead Silence on. I hear you stomping around. You're, you're, you're ringing the dinner bell for me every step you take if I'm mm-hmm. listening. And even with it on, if I just fucking turn this dial all the way to the top, I can hear you anyway. It's going to hurt my ears. I'm not going to like it. I may have a little uh, hearing damage from it in the end, but I don't care because I'll hear right through that shit. And in Search and Story 1v1, maxed out with everything maxed, I can hear you so well. I know where you are and what direction you're going. I know if you reload. I know everything. I miss that. Because because that's the difference. It's like, <clears throat> first of all, it's a skill. You got to be a little bit like a bat. I think after a while, you learn to create this three dimensional soundscape in your brain, mm-hmm. and 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 you couple that with your map knowledge to know mm-hmm. what they're walking on. You hear a ping, 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 ping. You know, oh, okay, he rounded the corner. He stepped out of the room. Now he's right. on the railing on on the big boat. You know, right. Oh, right. right? Like, there's wood. Right, the wood yeah. is behind the glass house on a state. Like that's where the steps are. You know, that must be where exactly. Sure, yeah, where that's, he another, is. that's another good example. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of there's lots of things like that where you can hear the difference between between footsteps on steel, stone, and and, and earth, and and and. You, man, I, I really was like a bat with that stuff, and so I'm looking forward to that. If that's not there, I won't like the game as much as uh, as I used to. Oh. The Call of Duty Four is going to be like a I don't know. If it's not the exact same flavor as last time, I won't have as much passion for it. If the sound horing isn't the same, if the reloads don't feel the same as responsive and stuff, if if my fingers don't follow the same paths as they used to, to like I like like I had protocols, right? Like if I run <laughs> through a door. And there's a guy standing there in a certain way. I automatically jump, lay flat, twist around, and do this like maneuver to try to beat that. And it works one out of ten times, which means I'm a little bit better than I would normally be. I have little maneuvers I do like that all the time. If I'm running, sprinting, and I sprint past a guy through a doorway, I automatically drop, spin around 180 degrees. That, that's what I do every time. Everybody else wants to turn around and like pursue back and go back and find that guy they ran past. I want to lay down and wait for that guy to follow me in. I do that every single time, 100% of the time. So I, I think I'll be good at the game. Um, I hope it feels exactly the same, though. If it doesn't, I'll be playing a lot of Civ and a lot of Battlefield. The player base is going to be better, and I'm going to be worse, and that's something I'll have to adjust to. But Yeah, but I also think that at this point, I got my life, control I care a lot less worried. about it. Like, I don't think, like, Woody of years ago... You like as you were looking for gameplays, you'd probably get a little pissed. Like, God damn it, I've been playing for two hours and nothing is usable. Or now you're stressed, you don't need, you know? Yeah, you don't even have to consider that. You'll just think, Oh, oh, I went two and ten. Who the fuck cares? Whatever. Yeah. Like, it, I'll, I'm and, fun. And, well, not that I'm bulletproof, but I'm better at not giving a shit, right? Like it, it, the me in Modern Warfare Two or like Black Ops One is like, Oh, the whole world is looking at my online stats, they're tired. <laughs> now it's gonna be like fuck off. Yeah, right. My, my KD is 0.8, you know. Battlefield 1. So, my son's a gamer. And uh, uh, he plays on Hypixel, the Minecraft server, a lot. He plays a lot of Cops and Crims, which is their CSGO like, kind of model. They also have a soccer game, which is kind of a Rocket League model. And uh, he loves it. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I wonder how much he would enjoy these other games. Like, I, I should get him on my Battlefield 1 account and see if he enjoys that. You know, he, he might. And uh, he communicates. It's really hard. I, I, Battlefield is hard. I, I feel like, like uh-huh. honestly, harder like, than like, God, I think. my biggest worry about Battlefield is like, I'm going to be so bad and I'm going to be so behind. I, I, I'm hoping that I find some PKA fans who are going to be my guides in that because I need, like, like if, if you tell me to follow you, I'll follow you and I'll do everything the right way. I just don't know where we're going. Like, like, I just don't know when and where to get into a tank. I don't know how to fight tanks, but I see that good Battlefield players do. I see them using teamwork to take out tanks and aircraft and stuff. I I don't know. We'll see, right? He's 13. How many good 13-year-olds do you know, right? Like, not many. I feel like they don't tend yeah. to get good till they're, like, 15 or so. But in the games he plays, he's strategizing. He's talking to the air. No one hears him. But he's, like, calling out when he needs help, when he's got you. You know, he's telling people to plant the bomb. No one's listening, right? There's no mic on him. But, you know, but I hear him, and I'm like, dude, his thought process is that of an expert player. You know, he's got the strategies. I'm like, maybe I should put him in CSGO and see if he likes the, like, the actual game. 
Uh, maybe I'll put him in Battlefield. Maybe I'll put him in. I don't know. I just feel like he'd enjoy. He's some been of these playing Daisy. Um, it's like mm-hmm. a Daisy uh, Minecraft experience, and while it's not my thing, it looks really fun. There's a but. It's there's a lot of teamwork. There's a lot of them like. You know, still Minecraft. So to me, it's just like, eh, this doesn't look hardcore enough. I need to see blood and guts and tears. But uh, they're it looks fun. They're they're driving around Atlanta, they're around the CDC. She's like, oh, I had to cut my arm off because it got bitten, and I had to apply <laughs> a tourniquet. And Jim gave me some beans, so now I'm feeling all right. But I don't have a left arm, so that's a thing. It's Daisy, you say, or a different game? It's Minecraft could... Daisy. You said right? Oh, yeah. oh, is it called Mindsy by chance? I, I honestly don't know. She would be able to, yeah, you know. Yeah. I, I just, but I, I walk by her office and I'll be like, "What are you playing?" And I'll come and peek every now and then, just kind of get the lay of the land. It looks, it looks just like Daisy mixed with Minecraft. It's what you would expect, um, except in our Daisy experiences, of course, we had like zero fun uh, ever. You know, <laughs> I, I, games like that have shitty. have really passionate communities out there, and I never want to like disrespect one of those communities by playing their game and then being like, "God, your game's shit." Mm-hmm. Because in essence, I'm saying like. You have bad taste, all of you do. And that's and that's not what, what I'm was. saying here. It's just yeah. that like we had such a hard time playing and, and getting going and uh Yeah, it's it, the truth is your game your game, this community we're talking about, has what I consider to be a fairly steep learning curve and there's a lot of like and, and they just you spend all this time building a sandcastle, right? On a scale of one to ten, I get to like a three. And I'm like, this is the best I've ever been. You never got to a three. Two? I don't know. <laughs> None of us did. Dude, I had guns and bullets that matched oh, it. Oh, that's a three. Okay. okay I'm yes. I'm both. <laughs> you know, if I have guns and the bullets that match, uh, you know, I, I've got like the melee weapon I want. and, and That's a three for sure. Maybe a four. I, like, more like, more than I'm one shocked. gun and the bullets that match. Yeah. So like, and I think like, all right, now I'm prepared. You know, I can maybe do something. And then someone who really knows what they're doing is blowing up the gas station as a trick to lure me into checking it out. It's really just like ringing a dinner bell and I'm like an idiot. I go towards it because it's really interesting to me. It's really interesting because we've been in this dead silent world. It's just like a real life environment. If there were no people in it, it's so quiet. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, no, nothing creaks or groans or goes boom or pop. And then all of a sudden, and we found each other, which is just a miracle in its own oh, right. That's... I, I came up with a navigation system on my own that involves using the color of trees, railroad tracks, the ocean, and the sun. That's how we navigated to find each other. It was like, what color are the leaves there? Not a good if, system. Because if, <laughs> no. if the leaves are orange, you're, so here's what you do. You, walk to, you find the ocean, right? Once you found the ocean, you can find the railroad tracks. They run perpendicular, or excuse me, parallel. Once you find the railroad tracks, you have found north and south. Now we just have to walk in one direction or the other until we find orange leaves. If we find orange leaves, we've went north, and that's where I am because I'm up by the harbor up in the north. Oh, my God. That sounds awful. Yeah, Guess how long that takes because an hour is far too quick to, to, uh, to even get started on that journey. This is some hobbit shit. Three hours later, we all find each other. And we've been having a separate conversation about our, our individual journeys. Oh, I found a tin can. Oh, really? Well, I found a torn raincoat. Ha ha! I found a twenty two with no checker. torn raincoat. You know, I didn't yeah. myself like for the, the payoff is so small compared uh, to the amount of time you're putting into it. Like, if you I put have... three hours into a normal, into Borderlands, you'll have some laser cannon that you have that's a lot of fun, and you're destroying bugs and giant miscreants and monsters. This sounds like you spend hours just to find maybe a spork. <laughs> the rewards and, and are and I've something. been an eight in this game. I, as I think about it, like we've repaired the helicopter and flown around in it and and shot people with the minigun. I yeah, flew yeah, the helicopter. You've, you've actually had some fun. In it. I don't know. So is that the same as the Daisy game? Daisy game we were playing, or was that? I know it's on a different server, but but maybe was it a? There's so many versions. It when was you're on the PC same, game. I think. Um, I, I'll tell you what happened though. Like so, in the end, somewhere by the uh, there's like a military base or something in the northeast if i remember northwest if i remember right Uh, you go there and it's very dangerous there's always well-armed people but we went there thinking this will be the way we end our night it was so glitchy like the graphical glitch was so terrible you could hardly see what was happening still is it still an alpha alpha? oh that's crazy still an alpha and um my my favorite experience that we ever had and this is why i say that the rewards are tremendous 
because there's so much buildup. It's kind of like Civ. When I get to it, mm-hmm. if I win a Civilization game in a triumphant, good way, when I when I pound my enemy into submission rather than like sne- squirting by or sneaking by at the end, it's it's a really good feeling. And that's what this was. So Chiz and I had ran. Chiz had been killed by a guy uh, up by the harbors in the north, and I'm heading that way. And Woody's far to the south, and and I'm going there to avenge uh, Chiz. When I get back there, Chiz meets up with me, and we meet the guy again. He has no way of knowing that it's Chiz on the respawn. Uh, he had just indiscriminately yeah. killed Chiz. Yeah, we're all three in there. And <laughs> so he's taking all of Chiz's belongings. And so I start talking to him, Chiz and I both do. And I convince him to join our merry little band and head south with us. I say, hey, there's <laughs> lots of good shit down south. Three's better than one. Why don't you be our friend? And he's like, yeah, man, that sounds good. Here, you can have my axe. And I was like, ah, oh, thank you for the axe, sir. And, you know, we, so, the, of course, we're heading south to Woody. Woody is waiting, waiting with a gun and a bullet <laughs> in a big tanker ship. <laughs> so we get to the big tanker ship, and we're like, oh, man, look at that tanker ship. We got to explore that. I bet that if there's not loot, there's dead bodies, and those things could have, who knows what, a machine gun and bullets. So we all go up in the building. Woody's, we're on two different chat lines, of course. One that's just me, Chiz, and the bad guy. One that's me, Chiz, and Woody. They're, they're of course, separate. And so we're coordinating this thing. We're leading him toward Woody, who's lying in wait. When we get to Woody, who's up on this elevated position with his gun with the bullet, Woody goes, Stop right there or you're dead! Everybody get on the ground and, I don't know, whatever, like, like yeah. some, some... I'm all you know, angry and, you know, like, like, just laying it on thick. And then... Me and, and Chiz drop. Yeah. We're like, better do what he says, man. <laughs> <laughs> and just drops. Woody just casually strolls up to this guy and goes, bang! <laughs> and fucking, fucking executes him right there. And we all laugh and laugh and laugh. And we take his things. And, and that was worth it. That was worth like three days of hours of like monotonous <laughs> bullshit to like lead this at, this guy that we had a reason to like turn on. Him. Yeah, he, yeah. He killed Chiz indiscriminately and stolen Chiz's things with no verbal contact beforehand. And we just tricked him so well, manipulated him, led him into a perfect trap. My fear, because the game is so buggy, it was that Woody was going to miss. And you might have missed his head the first shot, but you put him down. That's all that matters. Yeah, I don't it's kinda recall, like, but I got him. Yeah. <laughs> Is there like a death mic? Like, you know how in Call of Duty there used to be a perk where after you killed someone, you could hear for like three seconds of like, oh, god damn it, faggot, son of a bitch. <laughs> like, is there that in DayZ? Because I imagine they would be furious if you just that. walk up, execute them, and then pick up all of their little parcels and trinkets that they've been <laughs> collecting, and you just steal it. It's yours now. All those things that you spent hours finding while you were trying to find your friends near the yellow leaves, that's mine now. That that's seems so frustrating. And then <laughs> a, a, another circumstance, Woody Chiz and I had coordinated kind of near, near that gas station we were hearing. And we were uh, we had went inside of a structure that had multiple doors, kind of like bathroom stalls. And you could hear this guy walking around outside, which again, you just don't run into people in this game. You run into somebody, you're like, oh shit, that's a people. Mm-hmm. That's a people. Like there, Walking there's... Dead, the TV show, which by the way, coming back on Sunday, don't want to ruin your topic. Um, the real danger is not the the walkers it's the people and so we hear this guy outside and i'm so unequipped and and shiz is too that we're both like let's fucking kill this guy let's get this guy 3v1 it doesn't matter what he's got and what he's got it what he was a little bit better equipped and a little bit kinder to his fellow daisy players you know what he's always been a community gamer hey let's all be friends four heads is better than three i think was maybe Woody's consideration <laughs> that ain't what i'm thinking i'm thinking Three axes will kill this guy. We'll yeah. take all fucking <laughs> shit. And so he comes in. We start talking to him. Like it's 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 one of those things where like if we open the mic up, it, he can hear us mm-hmm. even though we're inside the building. Hey man, what's up? Uh, he's like, hey, how's it going? He comes in the room. We're all kind of doing this glitchy walk around each other where we're kind of, it's kind of it's like animals posturing almost. And then out of nowhere, I don't remember. It, there was like a countdown, and like Woody was like, no, no, no. And she was like, ah. And I was like, hit him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I ever got to hit him, but we all, like, me and Chiz start trying to hurt him, and Woody's still like, well, wait a minute here, guys! And, and in the end, I just remember Woody's dead, Chiz is dead, and I got into the bathroom, like, <laughs> cubicle, and closed the door. And I'm just in there like this, like, ah, and the door swings open, and he's got a machine gun. He's got, he goes, <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'm getting the fuck off. I do remember <laughs> that. We we were like, all right, because this guy was better equipped than us. But there were oh, three of us. 
three of us. And we, like, we were ready to be terrible people, and he was ready to be a friend. We thought three of us getting the jump, like, in real life, right? If Kyle has a gun, and Taylor, Chiz, and I all have axes, and Kyle's gun is, like, holstered, and, and he's yeah. you know, got, like, a friendly yeah. attitude, we can win! You know, we can win. Three people with an axe beats an unprepared gun. Unless he's just yep. way better than us. It's hard <laughs> to hit him with the axe because it's Daisy. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And the, you're, you're like, shit, I guess. I don't know if I'm hitting him or not because the blood animation is like glitchy. You don't know if you've hit him. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't really tell. So you kind of are just swinging in the direction hoping he dies. Yeah. And, and I think I had like a wrench or a stick or something. Like, like I was the least. Like, <laughs> that's why I was so motivated. I was like, he's hitting guys, him with like, a bandage. Like, <laughs> yeah, if the three of us hunt for another hour, I might get armed, or we could kill this guy, and we all, you mm-hmm. know, step up two levels. It just seemed like the way to go. But man, my my experiences of that game were terrible. Uh, I watched uh, the Overpoc gameplay for a long time on YouTube, and I find that fascinating. And if I could get into that, I would. I bet it's so much fun. It's like DayZ, the gigantic open world environment and vehicles and stuff, but with like factions who really aggressively compete with one another over resources and these timed missions that kind of, that like AI missions that we, happen in the game. They'll Everybody uh, hates pay to win, but we were desperately looking for a pay to win Daisy. We're like, is there some way I could give you a dollar and get a gun? Like, yeah, can, <laughs> I, can I buy something Overpox better than this? System. They've got a whole they've got a gold system and, and over that that's why I, I always try to play Overpock with the uh, the gold um, like coin modifier system. Because mm-hmm. they like build a safe area in the game that's like your transaction area where you take your loot, trade it in for gold, and then use that gold to buy vehicles, guns, ammunition, all the things that you could want in this in this region. Building supplies, you know, if you want, if you need concrete and, and cinder blocks, that's where you buy them and stuff. This needs um, to be my next business, Woodsy, the pay-to-win Daisy server. Are you yes. are you are you tired of grinding your ass because it's a dollar a teleport? You know, for three dollars you all get together, and for a dollar more you all have guns. Get going. I'd be like, $2? <laughs> Fucking sign me up. It saves me two hours. That- $7, you get a permanent teleport pass, and you start every game with a 9mm. Well, see, Overpox is different because you have a base. You build those nice, crazy bases, um, like Minecraft style, and within, and they have laws. You know, like it's, it's not like you can just go to somebody's base and hit the lock enough times to get in. you got to have the combination, or you can't get in that base. And you could share this combination. It's literally a combination lock that you, like, twirl the dials. Um, and in that inside of that base, you have uh, safes, which also have combination locks. So you could let someone in your base, but not necessarily in your safe. And then in that safe, you store your goodies that you've collected over mi- many, many missions. That way, because because Z, you just go out, get a little bit of something, and then you die, and it's all gone. But with Overpock, which is like a combination of my, of DayZ mods, you get like team-based combat everybody the weapons are like uber uber top tier like it's an intervention with a thermal scope with a silencer on it with a bipod with uranium bullets or something you know like like there's no bullshit like eight rusty ak's yeah i've looked over at the thing to make sure we're recording like a good 18 times we are recording I, I, it's like we, we are recording that, that definitely i'm glad for that is, intermittent update <laughs> come on man <laughs> All right, well, ne- the next PKA is the Civ 6 live stream. <laughs> right? In complete silence as Woody yeah. groans. <laughs> uh, Kyle, I think you had someone to tell us about. Yeah, yeah, let me get that last ad read in there. Tell, it, tell all you guys about Jack Threads, our brand new sponsor, I believe. When was the last time you ordered clothes online and got to try them on before paying for them? Never, right? Well, that's exactly what jackthreads.com does. You can try anything at home uh, for free, and you only pay for what you keep. Whether it's big name brands, uh, whether it's a big name brand or the Jack Threads in-house line, you can be sure to get one. You can be sure you are 100% in love with the items you ordered before spending a cent. Choose anything you want and try it on at home for free. Take advantage of their new tryout program today. You'll have seven days to decide if it's working for you, and uh, Jack Threads gives you everything you need to uh, you need to send their clo- the clothes back if you don't want them. Uh, packing tape and a prepaid shipping label. Go to JackThreads.com and enter offer code Painkiller when you submit uh, your tryout. Excuse me, when you submit your tryout for twenty percent off anything you keep. Uh, I think I just read that wrong. Go to JackThreads.com and enter offer code Painkiller when you submit your tryout for. 
twenty percent off anything you keep. Are you new to that, reading? I it seems like it. That's <laughs> jackthreads.com code. It, it's, it's just poor grammar. I, I blame Chiz. The uh, th- that's jackthreads.com code painkiller to save twenty percent off anything you keep. Never buy before you try ever again. This is really cool. Um, Chiz promised me. Uh, because there was only a small amount of, um, you know, like uh, bonus monies to be accrued mm-hmm. to one of us out Jack Threads. He promised me that I would get the entire sum of money so that I could have something nice uh, that I could show mm. up on the show. As yes. of yet, my account remains um, untouched. Dry. <laughs> Dry, as it were. Uh, zero dollars in there. So as soon as uh, I get some money in my Jack Threads account, I, uh, I'm definitely going to. I've already picked out a few things. I, have I, no I really like your with site. That. I feel like it, they, it's almost they, traditional that I get the spoils. Like I got the wet platinum. Mm-hmm. Um, the, wine. the wine. Oh, you didn't get wine? Yes, you got the wine. Okay, I got the wine. Um, and I feel like there's another thing that I, yeah. I can't. It's time for, for Kyle to get a little perk from Jack it Threads. Painkiller is the code 20% off. They've Don't got, buy the clothes if you can try the silk for free. And it's not know? just clothes. I was on there. I was on there looking at their messenger bags and uh, backpacks and stuff, and all their uh, their accessories. Like where they, I think they've got watches on there, if I remember correctly. Uh, belts, like like shoes, everything. Um, and it's really nice stuff. Uh, I thought I, I'm definitely interested in it. I, I've just been yeah. in that account every day waiting for Chiz. To get and the people my, over at Jack Threads, if you want that tagline of "Don't buy the threads if you can try the silk for free," contact us again. And I will sell it. So there you go. <laughs> it's such a stupid. <laughs> that, would, that would sell any clothes. <laughs> They'll be like, yeah, and it's also not trademark, so. Uh. <laughs> it's also not. Good, yeah. <laughs> uh, check out check them out. I, I'm pretty. I like this them. trend of being able to not have to. This, this sounds antisocial, but I like this trend of not having to go to like Macy's or Nordstrom anymore because, like, you're a. You're a target as soon as you walk in there. You know, you have guy with a uh, bow tie, mustache, and vest who doesn't really look like he works at Nordstrom 100%. And you don't know until he's like right up and he sidles up next to you and is like, you looking at jeans? Yes, I'd, I'd like you to be left alone. This is what you need <laughs> with that. Jackthreads.com. Check it out. I agree. I don't like being hassled anywhere. Um, I mean, I used to do it to people when I was selling cars. Like, like, like that's... That's a huge, huge part of it is 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 going after people uh, and you know uh, being aggressive. But I hate it. Everybody hates it. I guess you've got to be, you've got to be good to like approach someone and not have them on the inside just be like, ugh, the fuck do you want? Because I'm here for yeah. jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for jeans, not to start a conversation about what jeans you like and what My you goal think here I'd look today good is in. Not to make some money by selling someone a fucking credit card, you piece of shit. I'm buying <laughs> jeans now. Back off. See, I with a Nordstrom card. With I had jeans, to tell somebody with you. twice. Like, I don't want to be, like, I, I am actually fully capable of buying jeans without help, right? It's something Ooh. I can do. But a Prove car, <laughs> well, yeah, okay, I haven't done it in a long time, but I would, I would think it's something I could do. But with a car, I need help. I need a guy with a key. This I, hypothetical know. jean buying expertise you have. <laughs> Let's not leave that behind. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I can buy cargo shorts. <laughs> all, right, all right, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, I, well, on my own. But um, with cars, like I, I don't what I don't know what the salesman does provide any value aside from getting the key. If the keys uh, well, were in the if car, if you do your online they research, absolutely you. not. So, so a, sale, a salesman's worthless if you're doing all of that unla- uh, online research. Mm-hmm. Um, my thing was always I wanted to do a presentation for you and tell you things you didn't know, and, mm-hmm. and that's particularly good if you're if you have done your online research and then the guy tells you something you didn't know, whether it's bullshit or not. I never lied, but I would tell you some things like um, you know I talk about the breakaway engine mounts, right? So your front end front end collision, the engine is going to drop down and slide under your feet rather than you know careening Smashy. into the cab and crushing right. your legs. Now, I'm sort of implying that the Dodge would crush your legs when, in fact, this has been a standard thing on all vehicles for many, many years. They all do it. So there's, like, so many things that every vehicle does that I would always tout. Like, you see that fan belt? Made out of Kevlar. Yeah, they're all made of fucking Kevlar. <laughs> they just yeah. make them out of Kevlar now. That's what they do. The one in the Toyotas is made out of parchment paper. You wouldn't believe what they're getting away with. You see the headlights? They're made out of Lexan. It'll never fade or yellow, and it's tough as shit. You know, slap the fuck out of it, because you can't hit a Lexan headlight hard enough with your hand to break it, not an open hand. Just slap the shit out of it. They're all made out of Lexan. They don't go yellow anymore. You know, just little stuff like that. So if you could add some value... Which is what you really your goal as a salesman is to add value. 
and you know put sell the sizzle not the steak right mm -hmm. um but but most of the time 99 percent of the time you're a fucking salesman you deal with a bdc department or a, or a manager directly you just call and do your deal but uh, regardless what's the you, you slipped something past me the bdc business develop it was i think it stood for business development center uh mm -hmm. In my experience, but it's like the the guy they're not really salesmen. It's actually what happens to a salesman if you're not good at selling cars. Uh, you answer the phone for the the newspaper ads and and any, really all the ads, internet ads and stuff like that. Anyone calling to ask a, a question about a car goes to that guy because it's kind of a fish in the barrel, mm -hmm. and they don't have as much authority to make decisions. They're just kind of a they it, it's a they don't get as high they don't get a real commission they get a really small commission like five percent or something because they're not really doing anything um it's what happens to bad salesmen hmm. but, i don't know in my experience maybe that maybe that's what happens to great salesmen uh, you know they you know maybe there's some guy at acura right now in the bdc department making 600 grand a year i don't know yeah they, they, when i bought my tacoma this is 2003 so it's a long time ago but uh there was a guy who seemed to handle all the internet sales and uh like I don't know. It seemed like a good position. Like he's the guy that gets all the internet sales. Like that must be a lot of cars. Mm -hmm. And uh, he might have played me, but he was like, I bought the Tacoma. I think it was five hundred over invoice, something like that. And I didn't pay for the documentation fees or anything else. Actually, you know, just invoice taxes, and that's it. And five hundred bucks. And uh, uh, he sold a Toyota Matrix, which I think had just come out like a few weeks earlier. And that was way prior. He's like, yeah, you know, like and you get these. Tacomas where I don't make any money at all, and then make it on the other side with the matrixes. Yeah, and they they don't. He might have been uh, the Scion. The, uh, no, he's telling the truth. The uh, the Scion. Well, you know that's that's a little bit that's that's a while back. You know th those were the days where they had to turn the crank to start the Tacoma. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I remember the Scion at Toyota. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of my managers moved on to Toyota, and and I I was considering switching over to Toyota, and I was looking into it. I was like, what's the profit margin like over here? And it was such shit. It was like when we sell a Scion. He's like, you see that guy? He sells all the Scions. The Scion is like a. Uh, it's a Toyota. It's a, yeah, it's a Toyota Scion. It's a, he sells them all. Um, it's the only way he can make a living because nobody else will touch. If somebody wants a Scion, we walk away. There was like two hundred dollars markup on the car. Like mm. you just you got a base minimum for selling the car, and it wasn't worth your time. You were getting paid like fifteen dollars an hour or some shit to do all that paperwork. It was it was it was just fucking awful. Nobody wanted that. Hmm. I don't think Toyota has a lot of markup in their cars in general. I, I bet the more expensive the car, the more markup, of course. I bet like those, um, that's a Nissan. I'm trying to think, what's the big Toyota, uh, the 4Runner, like right? Like 4Runner is an SUV. Yeah, I'm thinking about the biggest of their SUVs. It might be more... called a Sequoia. Sequoia, it is. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Yeah, I bet there's some markup there's in There's also that. a Land Cruiser or something like that that's pretty big. But I think the biggest that's actually, is actually, I think you're right. I think the Land Cruiser is really expensive. Yeah, the Sequoia is also... Yeah, the Forerunner is the value SUV out of those guys, unless you count. The yeah, RAV. I think it's the midsize, but uh, uh, but but all those t the the biggest of the SUVs, the ones that are like the Expedition, the um um the the Suburban, the the top end of those I think now is getting up to seventy, right? Dude, I, yeah. So like a nice $1. Suburban is expensive as shit. A um like Ford F one fifty now. So like a a, a decked out four hundred one F one fifty sixty seven thousand yeah. dollars, like. Wowzer, that's a lot. Sixty seven thousand yeah. dollars. Like, it, I feel like a inexpensive home in an inexpensive area is double that. You know, it's you, less. No, dude, there's yeah, a house near me. Home. There's a house near me, um, and we looked at it one time for I don't remember who we were suggesting it to. It's fifteen hundred square feet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 like a kitchen, a living room, and a bedroom in the back. It's it's a one bedroom house. It's forty eight thousand dollars sitting it's, on a quarter. And it's not acre. a trailer. And it, it, no, it's a it's, house. It's, it's a, a house, house with land. It's, on, it's it's right off of a high. It's not on the highway. It's off the highway on maybe three hundred yards of dirt road. Like you turn off a highway, three hundred yards of dirt road, and there's your house. And it's not in a trashy area. I wouldn't say. Right. Um. It's it's a forty eight thousand dollars. Uh -huh. It's a rural area for sure. But you're four minutes from the interstate. You, you you leave your house. Four minutes later, you're at the interstate, and you know from there you, you get, get places. places. Yeah. It, wow, that's cheaper than I thought. I thought when you went to fifty grand, usually you went to like ghetto type area. You know, Dude, like, what's like, it called? This was four years ago, right? You know, okay. they, when they, they, it was real shit. The um, yeah, because I know that like in Detroit, they're giving away homes or like you can get them for like hundreds. Of willing dollars. to fight yeah. the rats. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, they, like, in Detroit, they you take bulldoze up arms homes against the rats? that people, like, deny ownership of. Like, people just walk away from property, which is weird to me. I'm like, should I buy it and, like, sit on it for a while? It's not that weird when you, like, look at the properties and you're like, ah, if you told me this was a property in East Baghdad, I would believe you. Like, unless you pan out and see, like, next exit Detroit, like, you wouldn't know. Like, it looks like garbage. Like, it, I don't think there's any way to bring those places back until there's, like... Right. I don't, I don't even know what it needs Take to bring like Detroit back. Years, I need you bring, you but... need to bring a ton of jobs back in there and make it so that just the, neat, the, the fact that a bunch of people are living in the urban area with jobs build the city back up. Because city makeover. Until then, no way. Yeah, they, they, they need a whole... The whole city needs an extreme makeover. They, Did you see that yeah. video that Chiz... Uh, was the Huns razzed it. It sucks. Who? Uh, the Huns. <laughs> razzed <laughs> ah. it? I'm sorry. I learned the word by <laughs> no, reading. No, no. I, I genuinely thought that Raz was like, you shouldn't have apologized because I thought that Raz right there is like what, that, I thought that was like a civ term. That people were like, oh, you're razzing me. You're razzing <laughs> my city. To the ground. I know the word, but I thought that that was like the game vernacular. Uh, like, ah, he's razzing all my cities or whatever. He's not even annexing them or something. There's you know? too nah. many words I've learned by reading. Hyperbole is one I consistently read to myself incorrectly. I'm like, ah, oh, it's hyperbole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good <laughs> <Nope>. old. <laughs> hyperbole. Yeah. yeah that one's Sound it there's, out. Yeah. There's another one I can't think of. I saw the other day and I was like, wow, do I ever read that word correctly? Because I know it, it's, it's, it's much like that. I know the word. I know it by sound. I know what it means. But wow, I just don't read that word ever, do I? I can't. I wish I could think of what it there was. There are some of those words, though, where like you write it out, and you're like, "Hmm, there is not a red line under that, but that does not look right at all." And I, you I have yeah. to go check. I worked at a boardwalk store, and we sold toothpicks or something for hors d'oeuvres. But the spelling of hors d'oeuvres is not what you'd guess. It's like hors d'oeuvres or something like that with yeah. an apostrophe <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is for hors d'oeuvres. This is so silly. Like, I'm making fun of our product. Those are the dinosaurs that only eat plants. Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and it, like, I, I think I was mocking the product. You're like, oh, hors d'oeuvres, it's so stupid. When someone had to point out that it was, in fact, me who was stupid. And <laughs> <laughs> That's so embarrassing. That's funny. Yeah, I saw um, the a Hoarders the other day. It was uh, Jim Norton and, uh, and and the guys making fun of an episode of Hoarders where the old woman had been shitting in bags for ten years. Her and her husband had been shitting in bags for ten years, and the upstairs was full of ba- of bags of shit because they'd been shitting in bags for ten <laughs> years. Now, was the <laughs> husband? It's rare to me that they're equally insane. Usually the one woman. person... The woman's has, insane. The husband oftentimes. is just allowing it to happen. Yeah. He's just the, allowing it to happen. Somehow insanity is not a showstopper for some people. You know, they're like, eh, yeah. you know what? Aside from the fact that we live in a, in a metal dumpster that needs to be tipped into the landfill, she's otherwise fine. And it's like, so no, they're, that's they're showstopper. Cleaning. They're cleaning this place. And like, I've seen horrors before, but this is the worst. There's dead cat bodies everywhere. They'll unzip a, a, a bag that she claims is full of treasures, and it's full of roach eggs and, like, larva squirming and stuff. Literal um, pieces of cats. I know the yeah, episode you're talking pieces about. Pieces of cats, bones, dead, full adult dead cats, um, bags what? of shit, as I said before. <laughs> and, and, so, and, and they're having they're, – it's like tooth and nail they're fighting her to, like, clean this place. It's not like she's like, yeah – Clean it fucking out. Right. She's like, well, what about that bag? I, that's got memories in it. And it's like, no, that's got maggots in it. And, and just, just thing after thing like that. And, and there's one point where they sit down with her and he's, he's like, you can either have that box or you can keep the house. And she's like, well, I want to keep the house, but I want the box too. Right. <laughs> and he's just like, no. Oh, they're the most. that box or you can keep the house. And she's like, well, I want them both. And in the end, the, the, they come to inspect. Uh, they come to inspect at the very end. But right before that happens, they look upstairs, and there's so much shit upstairs, so much trash, garbage, rotting material upstairs that it is unsafe for their teams to continue. Not only is it a hazard because the second floor co- could collapse, but some of the stuff up there is just so gross that they're just not prepared for it. And so, if I can interject, this is not a team. Because I know exactly the episode you're talking about. This is not a team that walked in and found the first bag of poop and went, all right, wrap it up. This is done. We're done here. They had found dozens of bags of poop and multiple dead cats on the ground level. And it wasn't until, like, day two when, like, the the happy-go-lucky guy 
who helps clear all the shit with his team of very unfortunate, probably ex felons <laughs> who are assigned to do this. He actually kept, comes out and like solemnly, because up until now, every com- communication with him and the Porter woman has been, do you, do you want this old, um, do you want this old platter that's shattered in two? Do you want this? Oh, yeah. I need that. My, my grandson made that for me. Well, it says William Sonoma on the back, so I doubt it. But, <laughs> but do you want it? Yes, I need that. And then eventually he starts, you see the camera, him walking like two steps up the stairs past the bags of shit like he's climbing Everest and he like peeks up and he just comes down and looks to the camera and is like we we have to stop I'm sorry for the safety of the people here cleaning your house I cannot put people up there it is too dangerous you have shit your home into a danger zone you have pooped yourself into a place, and you've, you've pooped yourself into a corner. We can't help you. I'm sorry, <laughs> dude. The, the, every time the city, there's a let me whore, tell you how it ends. The yeah. city comes and inspects, and they're like, uh, "Game over, bro. You live in a shithole." Uh, yeah. The neighbors are complaining of the smell, and now we know why. They fine her ten thousand dollars to tear her house down. Yes. <laughs> they're like, "We're gonna need ten thousand dollars in for you to get the fuck out of the way, because we're coming tomorrow to wreck this shit and burn How it." How many glass. old bags of cheese is that? I have six cat heads <laughs> and a lot of old tampons and a bag of feces. At this point, it's basically compost. <laughs> Jamie, you haven't used tampons since Eisenhower was in office. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, every time you see a hoarder house and they have pets, it's a shithole. Like, it, there, there is no way that, like, they keep cats and there's boxes to the ceiling and the cats aren't shitting in little crevices yeah. everywhere. It's totally animal abuse. Completely. Uh, who cares about them? Yeah. It's, it's, it's house like, abuse. It's, it's neighbor abuse. There what, do you remember her excuse? Floor. These Who's people have paid values. a lifetime to to like, like just it, money to the house, money to the house, money to the house, and they think there's value in this shit, so they don't realize what they're doing to themselves. The, now you have a home that needs to be torn down with an excavator, and and there's just like like everything about it is rotted through. Your drywall is not salvageable because your cats have pissed on it, and, and you're you know that's worse. It was so bad, dude. It was the worst they'd ever seen. Um, her daughter even gives up at one point. There are people crying. Oh my god! Yeah, her, her daughter walks up to go into the house, and it does like that little documentary, like fade to black, and then the text shows up, and then it fades back to the footage, and it just fades and says, uh, "Susan, Samantha's daughter, hasn't been inside the house in eleven years." And like then they do like the little pre walk in interview with the daughter and she's like, I grew up with this, I know what to expect. It's just so sad that it's come to this. She walks one step into the home after opening the door and crumbles, crumbles in despair in grief at the look of this home imagine someone (laughs) who is so upset by the way that you live your life that they are just they're tearing their clothes like a biblical prophet just just (laughs) wailing into the sky and that's what it was and then like the excuse they asked the lady they asked the lady (laughs) rubbing ash on their forehead oh then they ask her like how did this happen the the main woman who was the hoarder and her excuse was the same thing that i would say if i had like a week's worth of dishes in my sink, I would say, it just got away from me. <laughs> yeah. He goes, well, you know, one day you're, you're just working as hard as you can, and then it all gets away from you, and, and nobody helps. And it's like, whoa, first of all, you're not the fucking victim here. All these poor cats are the victim of your debauchery. I feel like the and cats didn't have let it this made. Get away from there was no way to, to get through the house. You had to actually step on garbage and That's meander like through garbage. Kill yeah. vermin. Right. Slapping at roaches, shitting where they please, fucking. <laughs> this is a yeah, cat dude. wonderland. Welcome to cat world. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, welcome well, to I cat mean, except world. for the whole thing where eventually they get like crushed, you know, by the by the refuse and like trapped in a corner under bags of shit. Like maybe that's. Then how are their whole skeletons of cats? If this was a wonderland, I, do you think that they were trying to jump off of, uh, I don't know, pizza all box and go to heaven, and man. collapsed and crushed them? <laughs> Eventually, all cats are going to die. I yeah. just assumed that along the way, she had so many wild cats living in her upstairs shit room that a few just succumbed to the fumes. <laughs> That's Lester. He died off of Pizza Hut Peak. 
when he crumbled and was tragically lost in the succumbing avalanche. <laughs> I Orders. tried to find it, but I was very quickly overcome by a need to poop in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Norton was like, can you imagine this bitch squatting over a trash bag, shitting every day for 10 years? And I'm just like, <laughs> 10 I wonder years. if that's how she did it. These like, people have the wrong mindset. They here's think- how you poop in a bag, all right? Let's think about how the mechanics of it are very important to me when I, when I see things like this go down. I have mm. to think, like, what was the actual mechanics of shitting in that bag every day? I hope, here's what I would picture an old woman doing. Maybe, like, getting in a half-squat kneeling position, sort of lean forward, and with a handful of tissue reaching back to her asshole and catching the poop, and then sort of making a fist, wiping and retrieving the poop all in one motion, and putting it in a bag. Why like, can't like, you just put way. the bag under your hiney? And poop in. Because you're an old lady who wasn't very spry and squatting spray. all the way down is going to be dangerous. Is there something wrong with the plumbing? How did we get to pooping in bags? Yes. The toilet that's broke. That's she she that po- oh, that. yeah. The, the plumbing bro- the, Yeah, we didn't explain this. I'm sorry. Basically, her explanation is the plumbing stopped working uh, years ago. And so we just started pooping in bags. We didn't call <laughs> someone. We didn't have someone come out. Well, how and could fix you get someone plumbing. out there? You just you just excise that portion of your life. No more pooping in water and flushing it away <laughs> to the sewer. We now do it in bags, I and we also don't like, take out the trash. Well, it's wasteful, you know. It uses a lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted her to take that route. They, at one point, she was. They were like, "Well, um, the upstairs. It seems that there's about eight feet of." animal shit and there appears to be a dead homeless man up there well he wasn't dead he's dead now um how do you explain that and she would be like well it does need a good cleaning that's what she would say like whenever they were like we went upstairs to room number three and there was nuclear waste there um that was meant for yucca mountain how did you get it and she said well it does need a good cleaning that's her answer to everything and each step of the way it was more and more putrid rotten and disgusting just the smells. I don't often know. they think it has value. Like, that's what happens. Like, if you see, oh. for example, like a broken broomstick handle in your garage, you say, ah, oh, I have to throw this out. It's taking space and it's, it has no value. But they're like, ah, oh, someday I'm going to find a use for that broken broomstick. You know, not right now, but I will need a very short windsock at some point, and that will be perfect for it. And, and they just save shit that is garbage. In some situations, it's literal garbage. It'll be like receipts for McDonald's. It'll be pizza boxes, that sort of thing. It's a it's a bizarre disorder. Mm-hmm. I'm a I'm a messy guy. I am. I mean, I, I got two, four, six. I got eight old doc diet Dr. Peppers around me right now. I just do. But there's a trash can right there. And when I get to twelve Dr. Peppers, I'll put them in the trash can and I'll take that one upstairs and it'll go in the dumpster. There will never be a dead animal in here. Not not. I mean. It just won't happen. There'll never be a stack of garbage. It just won't happen. That's outrageous. Mm-hmm. Outrageous. I, there I will can't... never even be a time where you walk downstairs and you're like, my God, there have to be 400 empty cans of soda down here. How did I let this happen? Like, I, no, you, that I, would never now, happen. I'll admit this. With the empty cans, I can get out of hand. I have before. Like, especially if I have a gaming area that, like, I'm going there gaming all night and then, oh, let's get to bed. Oh, to bed with us. It's way too late to be gaming. And then I leave that mess there, and a day or two might go by of that. Like, especially if I'm playing a lot of games or something, there could definitely be a situation where there's, like, two, two old McDonald bags and, like, 15 or 20 empty uh, soda cans, which is a huge mess, but there aren't any vermin living in it. And, and, you know where and I get that- out of hand? Cardboard boxes. Like, we buy a oh. lot of stuff from Amazon, and... Yeah. If you get a lot of your things from Amazon, it's not it doesn't take too long before you can fill an area the size of like a executive desk, you know, like like just a, a, a third of a small room. And uh, it just be like these boxes have taken over part of my garage and they don't fit in the recycling bin. Boxes every day. Every single day, three boxes at least. Yeah. There, there is a we have a dumpster, like like a big like rollback dumpster uh, that, that, that that like you would clean up a construction area with, uh-huh. to fill with boxes, and it's I, full right now. If full my, every month. if my boxes get to the point where like it's taking some volume, I burn that shit. I just yeah, did, toss it in there. I used to did, be in my vlogs a lot. Like you know what, the boxes got ahead of me. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna try to like work it out over the course of weeks in my recycling. I consider doing That's something. That's also like a fun way to get rid of trash. 
Like if you can just be like, oh, I get to burn all this trash. It's it's suddenly fun. You I usually think... shouldn't burn trash, people. But yeah, if it's just cardboard boxes, whatever. Eh, it's, it's fine. What it it, is. See, you see, you start with garbage and then you turn it into smoke and then it just goes away. Yeah, it's much better than it goes than... up into the atmosphere and then it makes stars. <laughs> That's how it works. It's the yeah, air. No, that is it's, how it works. It's, it's nature's dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how it works, but I don't know enough to, to dispute it. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it works. <laughs> Same with tires. Everybody wants to bury that. You burn your tires. Uh, they burn for a long time, I'm told. It's a Everybody lot was of... getting shit about pour, pouring oil in the uh, the storm drains. Like, I've seen all kinds of water go in that storm drain. If it, if if oil was going to cause a problem, then then we'd know about it by now. It goes right out to the sea. You know, I was right never, to the sea. <laughs> you're like 400 miles from the ocean. Are you worried about Aquaman? Like, <laughs> I don't no live in the way. sea. It's draining. No way that your storm drain, like uh, in like northern Georgia, goes to the yeah. ocean. <laughs> makes it to the sea. Yeah. No more than mine makes it to the sea. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, eventually, I guess. I guess Mississippi you know. eventually going to the sea. Actually, yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> once it enters, like, the water table and some uh, whatever. I don't know. But, yeah, I, I, I've earned some boxes sometimes, so it doesn't get ahead of me. I know it's bad for the environment, but it's good for the garage. I want to yeah, find sure. something cool to do with all the boxes. I, so I, I considered once making, like, putting them all on the floor uh, and attaching them to one another and making a tunnel through them all, like mm, cutting holes in do. about this big. And then our little dogs... You know, the weenies could go through these crazy adventures. Like, I'm picturing myself as a weenie, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, it'd be so cool to have all those chambers and boxes to search, and I could hide toys and treats all in them, and it'd just be a cool adventure for them, like make a whole maze out of them. Um, but re more, more, and a more fun thing to do, maybe, maybe like <coughs> stacking them to create a pyramid and having them all have holes in them so that you've created a large volume of uh, potentially explosive gases or something mm. so that and then you've got you know a pyramid as big as a house maybe of cardboard boxes that are filled with an explosive gas of some kind and then you know igniting them so they explode how would you ignite fireball. it i'm picturing an arrow with a uh, like roasted marshmallow on it and just yes yeah, <laughs> there's, there's like 10 ways to ignite it you know there, there are there's plenty of fun theatrical ways to do that dead um, cord yeah. ah, that, that that's like and it's off not like like enough. like your okay. idea is better. Like 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 a bow with a fiery arrow mm -hmm. is always really. Cool. It's just so hard to make work. Um, I've done it before. We did that thing for Far Cry where I shot the flaming arrow mm -hmm. and uh, and lit the stuff. That was so hard to make How work. How does it work? Because it seems because a bow really requires the feathers on the back to make it go straight. If you put something on the front, then it seemed like they would be the better feathers, and it would just fuck about. No. So, so on the front, you put, um, you know, uh, uh, an oil, whatever's burning. In our case, I don't know what's supposed to be used. I think they usually use, like, pitch or something on, an, on a rag and it's mm -hmm. attached. I don't know. Um, but what we used was, uh, was, like, oily rags or maybe gasoline and oil mixed. Or maybe gear oil mixed with gasoline to make a thick, flammable consistency. And then or a diesel. rag soaked in it and then, like, sort of secured to the end of the arrow by taking... Um, got an arrow. Is it hard to get diesel burning? It seemed like that'd be a good yeah, thing. Yeah, it's to really burn. hard to get diesel burning. Yeah, yeah. It's. Um, I know you can't you, drop a match in it, but I thought if you like held a blowtorch on it, you'd have what you want. No. Well, it's going to go right out though. It's not going to oh, keep burning. Because keep in it. mind, we've got to draw the bow, and then we've got to loose this arrow, and it's going to be traveling. Even if it's a shitty bow, like well, my, it's not a shitty bow. It's just not a compound competition bow. It's probably shooting two hundred feet per second. Mm -hmm. That's two hundred feet per second is like fucking two hundred miles an hour. It's it's pretty it's like 160 miles an hour or something like quick. that. You'll yeah. fucking fast. So it's going to go right out. You need something that that's burning hot and thick so that maybe on its journey there it's sort of blowing out, Napalm. but as soon as it stops it, it goes again. <sighs> we'll see it, as you loose the arrow, it's accelerating and you get like some of the material f comes off of it and mm. like my concern with napalm would be that I'm drawing it back, and there's a thing with napalm on it right above my hand, burning and dripping. Yeah, um, yes. that seems you know, like it's, uh, not a great idea. Practically speaking, it's hard. It's it's weird making shit like like, like I always thought the flaming arrow was like, oh, that's fucking easy as hell. On TV, so, it like, is. I bet there were a lot of blind archers before they figured that out. 
You know, when they first tried to make flame and arrows. <laughs> I've done a lot God. of stuff with arrows. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, God damn it! <laughs> I thought we had this. <laughs> we better figure well, it out next try. We're going back to the <laughs> <laughs> The salesman said there'd be no problem. Yeah. <laughs> he said this was the way of the future. Yeah. I like Some archery. I like gimmick. bows. Um, I told you guys about the air gun that shot the arrows, right? Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah, that thing's fucking cool. I want to get the, get a hold of that thing. That does sound cool. I'd never seen anything like that before. I really want to shoot something, but I want to shoot a pig with it. That's why whenever I go to a machine gun shoot or um, some sort of gun expo and I'm talking to manufacturers about whatever their individual product is, uh, I often come back to, um, to, to being like, I want to shoot a pig with that. Like they'll have some slug that like, you know, as it's flying through the air, wings open up around it or something or chains or, or, or it'll set its enemy on fire. Or it'll like liquefy their bones or whatever new cool bullet. Did you see the Luke with. Cage bullet where it goes and then it burrows and then it explodes later? That would yeah. fuck up a pig. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Every time I see something like that, I'm like, I want to shoot a pig with that. Because like, like I was telling, hates pigs apparently. I like, hate him. I was telling Woody this the other day. I yeah. Because because he's never killed anything, and I was like, if you ever want to actually, Henrietta would beg to differ. Well, if you they ever ruin actually ruin entire ecosystems and crops and everything, they're they're an invasive, gigantic, like 200 pound cockroach. You know, they're they're really terrible things. They breed incredibly fast. They're ravenous. They they destroy landscaping, livestock. They kill pets. They root up, um, uh, uh, um, we call it when farmers' lands, uh, doing you know tens of thousands of dollars of damage. And uh, and so Texas has, Texas has laws that allow you to really really do anything you want. Uh, as long as it involves a pig being dead at the end of that. You want to run them down with your car? Absolutely. Run them down with your car on purpose. You want to blow them up with explosives? High explosives? Sure. Dead cord? Missiles? You want to set them on fire? We don't care. Shoot them from a helicopter? Well, sure. That sounds like a good industry here in Houston. Let's get a few companies that shoot them from the air. You know, it's uh, they really hate those things. And so I have no remorse for them. Up, they're ugly animals up close. I'm sure they're highly intelligent, but they're also highly aggressive. Every time I get close to one, although I am in the act of fighting it, it's fought back. You know, I, I, I've, I've been in, like, the ring with, with bulls and calves and cows, and they just want to get out of there. They don't want to mess with me. They can get mm -hmm. aggressive, and I've had one hit a gate and send me flying through the air before, but with a pig, he's like, fuck you, human. <laughs> you know, he's like, he's like I'm going to fucking human. I'm going to gore you. And uh, they've always been really aggressive and mean in my experience. So what is the pig's I got no primary about weapon? Killing. They're, they're uh, tusks. tusks. They have They've tusks. Because the, the got, ones they, I, think, I know of don't have tusks. They just have soft, squishy noses. They Those have are the tasty too. kind. You can have both at the same time. They've got, um, they, they, I think they call them cutters. Uh, they're these Yikes. teeth that kind of jut out uh, to the side, and they rip left and right with them. They hook with them. Um, like, like imagine, it's, it's like mm -hmm. that dinosaur that, that does that thing where it like shakes its tail side to side. It, it hooks you, and the, the thing I always hear, but remember old Yeller. Uh, the movie Old Yeller, uh, Timmy or whatever the kid's name is, is up the tree. Old Yeller's fighting the pigs, and they disembowel Old Yeller. That's what they do. They go for your guts, your midsection, and like hook you, tear you open. Um, I was stupid enough to fight that one, that one at that time. I, I'm lucky he didn't castrate me or something, because that's right about where his head level was. Um, but yeah, they're dangerous to deal with. Yep. But fun to kill, because you can just you can use all the cool sh like like I, I have so much respect for a deer that I wouldn't shoot a deer with a 20 millimeter rifle or a 50 caliber rifle. It, it might be a little funny, but I'd feel bad about it afterwards because he was just trying to make a living out there and be a deer. <laughs> but the pig, I'm like, that's kind of an enemy. Like, fuck him. Yeah, shoot him with that 20 millimeter. Let's see what'll happen. Understandable. I have, a, I have sort of a last topic. It, my, um, so as you guys knew, I flew my paramotor out of the yard. But I did something I don't normally do and then I posted it to like my Facebook page. And... People have been contacting me who I haven't talked to for like 20 years. Like, you know, they're, they're interested in the hobby. Like, it's an interesting thing that you just don't see all they the time. They don't think you're going to be around much longer. So they're trying to like touch <laughs> base. T Mart and, and reached out to tie me. up any loose ends. T Mart just texted me. Like, I hadn't really talked to T Mart since, uh, since all that news about the thing broke. And uh, he's just like, dude, this is crazy. This is cool. And I'm like, yeah, I've been working it for what turns out he watches a lot of my vlogs. And, uh, um, I didn't ask any prying questions or anything, but he was excited about uh, my, my paramotoring. That's and, great. Yeah, I don't know. It's a neat thing. Like a, a guy named 
Tracy. I uh, the the one story I told about Tracy before. Uh, he's a he's a dude. He was on the football team. I liked him. He was my friend, and uh, he got invited to compete in like like whatever prelims there'd be to Miss America, like Miss New Jersey or something, because they just saw his name was Tracy and figured he was a chick. And <laughs> I thought that was great. <laughs> anyway, we let Tracy drive a motorcycle for like the first time in his life. And we we're like, all right, it's just like a bike. You know, you press this down, you let out the clutch and, and you go. And he immediately crashed that motorcycle. He went like a hundred <laughs> feet. The steering wheel got like super, super wobbly. And uh, I think he made his way and like found the only mailbox within a hundred yards and hit that and leaned over and fell. And, and he had, I don't know, this is probably went 75 feet and before he crashed it. And he said, I want to try on the paramotor. And I was like, I remember a long time ago, <laughs> you know, when you said that about the motorcycle and it didn't end well, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's neat to me. Cause I got people kind of like out of the woodwork, like, Oh yeah, how you doing? I you know, Woody, it's been forever. Cause I I'm on Facebook, but I don't really post to it or anything. And this is like the first thing I've posted in ages. So, I don't know. It's neat to me. It's good you're getting a good reception. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's like, oh, these people, they care. Or, or at least find it interesting. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. Kind of interesting hobby. Uh, this is my 1911. I, uh, I heard a loud noise earlier, and that, that's when I, I picked it up when I went to go check it out. Um, I, the other night, I woke up, and I could have sworn. Yeah. Um, the other night I woke up and I could have sworn that uh, someone was like picking the lock to my front door. They weren't. But I'm standing there at this corridor where I have a viewpoint of that lock. You know, it's got a gold like it's a deadbolt mm-hmm. and I'm staring at it. So it's like three in the morning. Right. I thought I heard something. I could have swore as I like looked at it for a moment. I saw it turn. And the only way it turns is if somebody's picking or turning a key from the outside. Ain't nobody got a key. So I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> they picked the wrong house. <laughs> like, I'm just waiting. So wrong. I'm just waiting for the guy to come in. So I'm gonna just be like, "Don't move." You know, like, I've already thought. I'm like, I'm like, just say, "Don't move." And if he raises a gun, shoot him. You know, yeah. and, and I'm just standing there. He's lucky so you're talking scared. to him first. You do like a Buffalo Bill thing. Yeah, I'm not gonna. It's all I would never shoot first. I would. I would always try to take a prisoner first because I, it, it, for a number of reasons. But it, it, I, take off your nothing. shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Squeal. <laughs> it rubs the lotion on the skin. Or it gets the hose again. Or yeah, Mike just the... fucking... yeah, Woody thinks I'm a nice guy because I'm not just shooting first. I'm taking the prisoner, Woody. We're going to put him <laughs> in the basement in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not calling the cops. You're coming with me. <laughs> no, but I stared at that lock and I was just like, after about, I'm not going to exaggerate, after three or four minutes of staring at it, I was like, all right, it's not turning. And I'm na- I, I, I don't, I, I, so get my flashlight and I, I go out there and look around. Sure, there's nothing. The like the lock hadn't turned a bit, but but I was fucking like I heard that noise and I was just like I could have swore that lock turned. I was so scared. Though. My, my heart was pounding. I, I thought someone was breaking in and I was staring at them with a gun. I thought that was happening right in front of me. Glad yeah. you're safe. I'm I'm glad that didn't happen. Uh, yes. I am I, I, there aren't many worse choices I can think of than to break into FPS Rush's house. Like, you, you, I, there were three guns to choose from. Like, <laughs> right? like when, I, when I freaked out and ran to grab the gun, there were three right there. One was I had my double barrel shotgun mm-hmm. handy and it was loaded and it had, it's got lights, which is the plus for it. Not, mm-hmm. it, you know, it's heavy and cumbersome and I don't need two barrels. Like, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a silly thing, but it's got real bright lights already on it. I got this always handy, and I'm so accurate with this that I would honestly feel comfortable shooting. Is that shooting a like, Yeah. I know I that. Feel, That's Kyle's first choice gun. Yeah, I would feel comfortable shooting a... Um, you That's know, what you'd like to use in the event of that situation, the Nighthawk. For me, I, I would, I, I think. I also have my AR-15, but the, 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 the battery on my little sight was dead, um, and I knew it was dead, so I, I grabbed this. I'm so accurate with this, it's... Um, it, it, it would be um, the way to go, I feel like, for an interior battle where I actually get to aim, um, which is kind of the situation I was in. Um, I, I feel like with this, it's not even about, like, like if there's a hostage taker situation, you know, the movies are like, oh, my God, he shot the hostage taker. Like, it would be, I could shoot the hostage taker in the eye. You know, it, it just wouldn't be a thing. This, this gun is so accurate. It's unloaded now. Um, it's so accurate. It's got such a good uh, trigger. Um, the sights are excellent, excellent sights. Um, 
I shoot match ammo. It shoots very, very small groups, even uh, you know, off a of bench rest. It's and I'm good with it in particular. So this is definitely the way to go for me anyway. I think you changed uh, the sight since I saw it in person. Painted, and I don't care for it. Um, um, I don't. I don't really care for the paint job in general. But you know, it is what it is. Um, but it's been painted red for every reason. Again, it's un. Again, it is unloaded. But um, the uh, the sights are kind of different sights because it's a. It's meant to be suppressed. Um, so it's dotted. It's like a dot over a dot. Uh, mm-hmm. You can see, instead of like two dots and then one in the center. And they're much taller sights to be able to look over a, uh, you know, a suppressor. Gotcha. Yeah, I think it was different when I saw it. Like I, more than just the paint, it, it wasn't suppressed at the time. Oh no. Well, I mean, you know, th- that's just screwing this thing on the end, right? Well, it's, 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 it, it, I, am I yeah. hearing that you changed the sights for the suppressor? Uh, negative. Uh, oh, okay. This guy. This, that's why I love this setup. That's why I find this to be something that I, I really love here. Is because this pistol is an AAC edition Nighthawk. Mm-hmm. AAC is Advanced Armament uh, Corporation. I, I don't know if the the guys are all gone now, but it's a it's it was a suppressor company here in Atlanta, and uh, so this pistol is made for this suppressor. Um, so it's 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 kind of it's 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 the way it's supposed to be exactly. The you know the suppressor is like a grand. The pistol's like three grand. And um, and I just really really love this. That's a big uh, suppressor. Um, this is a um, oh, what is this? I'm blanking. It's a Tyrant, right? Tyrant 45. So it's 445. I was going to ask if you could like put it on an A or AR15, for example, or something. Not an AR15, but you know I got a pile of suppressors upstairs that are 30 caliber down. Uh-huh. Um, on anything. Gotcha. Yeah, I. I, I talked to you the other day. I'm, I'm looking at a Sig Sauer P238. Uh, people probably don't know that gun, but it shoots a 380, which is like a, a shorter 9 millimeter. And um, I don't know. I, I, they just really caught my eye lately. I've been thinking about it for like six months. I'm not that impulsive uh, when it comes to bigger purchases. And I like that pistol. I like the look of it. Like I told you, I've never shot one. Um, but what I love about it is it, it's got enough grip for a man's hand. Um, it, I, did you see the, the gif of like, on Reddit, it was like the smallest gun in a game ever, or something. And the guy's running around with this little little pocket pistol in the game, and he's just like, "Do do 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 do," and then pick, 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 do 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 Like it's literally shooting it like that. Um, I, I just don't think that's real conducive to a good self-defense scenario. I carry the LCP, but I don't trust it all that much. I, my thought process is like. This is really just the most powerful punch in the world. Like, like, don't even think about this. Like, oh yeah, I'm a marksman with this. This is like, a, a like a uh, in Fallout, like the um, whatever that fist is that you like attached to your. I'm not gonna shoot anybody with this. I'm gonna fucking stick this in your stomach and pull the trigger because that's the, that's where we are if this is going down anyway. Yeah, I like, I don't know that I quite consider it like just a, a, a fist distance, but I picture it like <laughs> some guy accosting you at the at the. When you're filling your gas tank, right? Like he's like the elevator at the W, <laughs> right? Like like he's three steps from you, you know. Like that's the range in which I would most expect to use it. If he's you know on the other side of my house or something, then you know you're not ready. I would miss I'd scare the shit out of him. <laughs> I uh, yeah, and, and sometimes I'm like, you know, I'm not that bad of a shot with it, and then I put it to the test, and it's like, you know, like yeah, you get past like four or five yards and you, you can miss more than you might guess. I'm and- really bad with mine. Um, I, I, I try to be real honest about my marksmanship. Um, with that 1911, I, I really am something to be, that's impressive. Like, like I impress myself when I shoot it. I, I, hmm. the, I'll shoot the fingers off the mannequin on purpose, you know, oh, pinky now. But with that LCP, I have missed targets that are embarrassingly close. Um, and, and I'm not quite sure why there's a chance that I have the world's worst LCP and that like, there's no rifling in the barrel. Like, like, I don't know if I've ever opened it up and like looked and see if there's rifling in the barrel, but it operates like a smooth bore weapon. It really does. And I've shot some, you know, I've shot smooth bore pistols. It's about that fucking accurate for me. Um, I, I think in a self-defense scenario, it'll do the job just fine. It cycles fine. Yeah. Yeah, The bullets come out. And those 380, I've got RIP ammo in there just because they give me bags of it for free, or they have. But shit, man, you sh- it's going to do the job. It's just the, the question is, what is the job? And that's, that's, that's always the case with a gun. Sometimes I buy guns because, oh, man, it's cool, and I got one now. And it's just, 
there are guns like an AK or an AR-15 or a 44 Magnum caliber that it's just kind of nice to have in your collection or whatever because they're, you know, everybody wants one. They're, they're in all the movies. They're in all the games. They're novel. They're, they're novel. Thank you. Yeah. But that LCP, I kind of regret that purchase, or at least when I got it. I bet the newer versions of it um, are better. I know the triggers and sights have improved. Yeah. Uh, but, man, it is small. That's, that, that's its best quality. It's very compact. It's smooth on the outside. There's nothing yeah. on the outside of that gun that catches, like these sights or, or you know, the hammer or any of that stuff. There's no, uh, there's no real um, – it's not as three-dimensional as you might it's – not it's not very thick. It's all smooth so that you could stick this thing in a pocket, reach in, grab it, jerk it right out. And it's not going to hang, snag, do anything, and it's going to go pop, pop, pop. Yeah, and it seven. cycles. What was that last part? I think I talked to you. I was going to say it's going to go pop, pop, pop it's like seven times. I don't remember the magazine capacity. I think six it's six plus, plus one. one. Yep, yep. And yeah, uh, so, yeah, so it, 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 it's all those things. It's great for carrying. It's not that great for marksmanship. And I kind of, I, I know the real safeties between your ears, yada, yada, yada. I think I'd like a gun with a safety on it. I think I'd like the 911 like controls. And, and that's mm. how this. That's, I, 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 that's one thing about the 1911 is that it is. Most people, the, the way it's, uh, it's positioned right now is called locked and cocked, I believe. And a lot of people carry them that way if they carry them. The hammer's back. Uh, there's a round in the chamber. Um, the safety, uh, this one doesn't have an ambi safety, I forgot. You know, the, uh, the safety's on, but all I gotta do is flick the safety off, but it's still not ready to shoot. Um, I won't do it now because the gun's fucking loaded, but if I were to pull the trigger like that, if I were to do that, it wouldn't fire because I've got this safety back here. This has to be squeezed before the gun will go off, and I love that. I love that feature. Uh, it makes it so that it's real, it's a real weird bonkers scenario you gotta, like, imagine where this gun, like, falls through the air and the trigger gets hooked while this gets depressed... To, for an accidental discharge to go off. Um, that being said, it's still like a hundred and something year old design, and a Glock is going to function better. But um, but I just love this. This is this is my favorite. I love holding this gun. Like like, like I, I really love this gun. It's a very cool gun. <laughs> is that a show there? I, we're getting pretty deep in this thing. You're about to eat in on my sieve time, and I can't be allowing that. <laughs> no, we cannot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a show. I I enjoyed I the, the. I, I like Drifter. Um, uh, he, he was good. I, I liked him adding to 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 politics talk. Yeah. Uh, so that was a good show. That was very fun. Check his stuff out. Check out our sponsors mm -hmm. down below. That's always very important. And uh, PKA three hundred five. Good night, everyone. <laughs>